We are coming to you live from Barbados. Good night. Good night, everybody. Oh, wow. Good night. We're here, guys. We are here tonight. How are you doing? Oh, wow. We are here. We are here. We are here. And I'm hoping that everybody went and cast their vote. Um, we went um, about, Dave and I, we, we went about after 11 o'clock. And it was pretty, um, it was, it was, the line was very short. And um, you know, we moved, we moved, okay, it wasn't bad, you know, still had some weight, but it wasn't, it wasn't as bad as we thought it would be. Well, we know that um, the polls are closed at six and um, this evening, um, but we're told that, you know, once you were in the line before six, that they will allow you to vote. So um, we're just, um, we're hoping everything will, will you know, will run above board, etc. Um, what what was your voting experience um, today? Well, can you you know comment and and let me know what your voting experience was today? Good evening, good evening, and please share the live. Now we're going to be on with you um, right up until midnight, okay? <laughs> and so what we're going to do, we do have quite a, a, a lineup for you tonight. We have um, the Reverend Leacock is going to be on because you know we had there were so many um from the christian faith who were part of you know who are candidates in the election so we we do have um quite a number of of um uh, reverends coming on we have reverend leacock coming on reverend david durant coming on who is a spiritual advisor actually for the um the democratic labor party we also have maxine mclean who is coming on who is a former uh, member of parliament for um for the for the dlp and um so it's a quite a mix that is happening tonight i might have my hobby with me tonight i might have dave with me tonight i'm looking forward to that miss heather cole who remember heather cole and she broke down the blp uh, manifesto in such I mean, amazing way brilliant mind mm -hmm. um heather will be on um as well and um and some you know others as the night um moves on we're gonna we're gonna um we're gonna be adding people right and we have one of our candidates um uh, mr nigel newton from saint philip south saint philip north i'm sorry saint philip north and he will be on as well hi good night good night i can't even pronounce his name mikhaya yil um mikhaya yil um good night good night um are you from barbados mikhail janelle good night good night janelle um janelle have you um voted as, as yet it's gone the opportunity will be gone or you you know a couple months ago janelle i was saying that i wasn't going to vote but when i saw what was at stake i listened i put on my clothes this morning and i i went right out mikhail um uh hi mikhail you're from barbados did you vote <laughs> Nadia Mulchand, welcome, welcome. You know, tonight we want to give a, um, a very rounded perspective, a spiritual perspective. We want to look beyond the election because, you know, um, we, yes, the election is here. Um, today, the results are going to come. And, um, you know, we want to talk about Barbados beyond the election. So I want to hear some of your thoughts and, and so on. I mean, you know, it, it was a real, you know, bitter fight there. But the election is over and, um, you know, we have to think beyond and and what what is going to be our posture um, going forward, right? Mikhail said she voted. Nadia, Nadia, um, welcome, welcome, welcome. Guys, can you share the live we're not you know 
Um, I, I wasn't even sure that we were going to come on tonight, but I felt in my heart that we needed to come on and give a spiritual perspective, which I think is very, very important in this time. Yes. So please, please, please share and, um, and let others know that we are on. Please share, please share. We're going to intersperse um, our, our show tonight with some of the CBC commentary. We're going to pick up feed from different places so that you are able to hear what is happening and make your comments on what is happening um, and so on. Okay, Nadia says, I'm at work. Just got a little break. Okay, wonderful, Nadia. Well, Nadia, Nadia, are you in Barbados? Are you from Barbados, Nadia? Yes, Nadia. Thank you, Andrea Richards. Andrea Richards said shared, 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 shared. And, um, you know, uh, there's so many things that we see happening in, um, oh, Nadia, Nadia is at QEH. Oh, wow, that's one of our heroes there. Hi, Nadia. Um, welcome. We want to, um, we wanted, um, we wanted to, Nadia, we wanted to continue asks for donations um, for the nurses. And that's something that we, we want to keep asking for. And as I said, it's nothing that the nurses have asked me to do, but um, you know, it's mm -hmm. what we, it's what we are doing. And um, because this is important, Nadia, and we are in full support of you, full support of you. Janelle is saying um, only BLP and DLP down here. I wanted to vote for up. Wow. Well, yeah, because there were only 20 candidates. Um, next time, Janelle, you might have to throw your hat in. Okay, Nadia says um, she was in the band. It's funny that you mentioned the band because it's funny you mentioned the band because it it, it actually does does feel like you know um, when we were part of um, the the cultural the the cup over and so on just to see so many Christians involved. Anybody has ever? I mean, look at what's going on with with the, with the church at this time. There's so much um, involvement from 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 everyone you know i mean there is those that are praying those who are you know um working with candidates um you know i'm here doing an election express we don't as a church we don't normally get involved in these kinds of things we're seeing you know i, I mean people from all walks of life they're getting involved right so i'm actually i'm just waiting as well um for the others for others to join and um, as they come in, then we're going to chat. So with the lineup again that we have confirmed, Reverend David Durant um, is going to be on. And he is um, one of the spiritual advisors to the Democratic mm -hmm. Labour Party. Uh, Miss Maxine McLean um, is going to be on. And she, uh, Miss McLean, is a former, a former, um, a former senator, former senator of the um, Democratic Labour Party. There is Philip Springer, who's gonna be on a candidate for St. Thomas of BSP. I call I, I call him the, the people's hero. He was the one who mounted the the, the case for the injunction. Um, Heather Cole is going to be on and um and and some others that we're waiting to um, for them to confirm. So I'm gonna uh, hi D Marshall D are you from Barbados have you voted? And you don't have to tell me who you voted for. I just, I'm just, just checking if you voted. <laughs> yes, yes, yes. Blessings, 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 and we are sharing. So we have, we have a a, a very good night um, lined up for you. A good night lined up for you um, tonight. Now, um, uh, how many of you were saw the the picture um, this morning? Oh, D said she voted. Um, Andrea voted. Very good, very good, guys. Mm -hmm. Very good, very good. You know, what are your thoughts about? Um, I'm going to see if I can I can access my my Facebook page um, while we're on here. Um, if you've been watching, following my Facebook page this morning, um, you you would have seen, um, you know, that we had a, a situation. Um, there, um, you know, that um, that I was commenting on. And I'm just going to bring in my page at this time. 
and where where the, the the final seemed to be the final meeting at the at the for the Barbados Labour Party, where there was an actual party in the middle of town. And um, you know that that I mean, I want to hear your thoughts your thoughts about that. You know, want to want to hear your thoughts, um, hear your thoughts about that because um, I, I I just believe that we continue to perpetuate the two Barbadoses. You know, um, two two Barbados is it's like this is what we continue we're continuing to do that, right? And um and and that is that is very 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 bad very bad for the country. Um, our young people they're looking on they're seeing what's going on. And um and 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 that is very bad for this country. So let me let me just um you know my pages are as a running commentary on there. <laughs> so I'm I'm going to I'm I'm trying to get to that particular um that particular um one, and we're gonna go through go through some of the some of the others. Um, but um. So I want to hear I want to hear your 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 thoughts your thoughts on it and I will read from my page some of the things that so here here is the actual picture so here is the actual picture and um, and this 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 picture um, what would have been taken um, last night so believe it or not this is this is a this 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 is not something that happened. <laughs> you know, um, you know, in, in, in the last election, this is this election, right? And as my comment, as I commented on Facebook, I said, "Do as I say, not as I do." And you make you make up all these rules for everybody to follow, but not for you. I hope the rest of Barbados is seeing this. Will the organizers be charged for breaking the COVID nineteen rules, right? And I said, I called up Mr. Ronald Ch Chapman. We need to hear from you. And I said, I'm tired of the two Barbados. Are you tired of the two Barbados? Does this reflect two Barbados um, for you? And, um, you know, Linda Herbert, she wrote, if this was a church service, huh, what would have happened? How many of you remember what happened to, to um, um, Apostle Scanterbury? Right? And Winslow Graves says the pastor would be in jail, right? And this is this is this is just some of the things that's happening that people are just um, really fed up with. And we're talking about beyond the elections, Barbados beyond the beyond the elections, you know. And we we want to be able to 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 really um, really understand what what is what are we what's going to happen after the elections um, for Barbados. Right. So I want to hear your thoughts about this. Did anybody see this, this, um, this, this picture? And what are your thoughts about it? And do you all remember there was a, a shopkeeper who opened up his business um, on on um, during the during the during the the, the um, during the time um, during the pandemic pandemic. My losing my words tonight during the pandemic. And he was charged, and he was jailed, and this man died in jail. This man died in jail. So I, I, what I say to Barbadians is that we're not going to um, sit back and and just wait for um, wait for um, you know the, the, hoping that they respond. I believe we need to write them. If we could just start writing them and um, letting them know, you know what how you know how we feel about it and asking that they that these people be um be that they that they you know there's a fine and that they be taken care of i think it's very important we need to be fair across the board what are your thoughts about that anybody vo that voted today had any issues there was also a lady i'm going to go back to my page but um i there was there was a lady on um that um said that that she um you know what that that she couldn't vote because she had on bangles yeah that she had on bangles who 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 saw that let me let me try to find it um she says so i was disenfranchised because i refused to remove two silver bangles could not vote 
I, I didn't, I know I saw them asking people to remove their watches, um, you know, but I didn't know that they were asking them to remove their, their remove bangles and they would not let her go in to vote. And I guess she didn't remove her bangles. She decided to keep her bangles on. I, I didn't know. I didn't know. Anybody would know why that would be. Here's another man who is, who is saying these are just some the of the things that happen today. Areas. Um, Yes, I hear Donna Loivin because it was uh, fairly treated in some way. I don't know who else it happened into. But I've been living now in the consistency of St. Michael East for the last 46 years. I vote since I was out here for them years at QC1 Point Primary School. Only to find this morning I went to go on there, my name is not on the register to vote because they know they know who you're voting for. I use this to campaign with Congress or Trouble, so I ain't be here anymore. So he's trying his best that in any way possible he could hurt me or my candidate, Nicholas Allen. He's trying, in my opinion, I think that's what he's doing. And I go on this morning to vote. My name is not on the right. I went and check the um, master's list for the whole island. My name is nowhere at all on any electoral list in Barbados. And I don't think that that is right. And I know that I'm not the only person that is happening to, is happening to. And I would like you all to check and make sure that you know where you're all going to vote and go out and vote. And I'm telling you all straight, this is Richard. And I want you all to send a lesson that you should never have done this to me. So I would like all who hear my voice to please go and support Nicholas. Give Nicholas an extra 50 votes for what to do to me this morning. Thank you all. God bless. <laughs> ah, so th those are just some of the some of the things that were were happening happening to um today. And um, you know, as as um as as people went to vote, as I said, there was a woman who could not um said she was she she could not vote because here we have it because of her two single bangles she couldn't vote there were people um as the gentleman said whose names were not on the list at all i know there was someone else who said that her name she was told her name wasn't on the list but then she had her letter and because she had um because she had the letter then she was able to to vote um so um you know um there were there were some challenges there were some challenges there but um you know um I, I think overall it seemed like the day went the day went um, very peaceful and the usual you know usual for barbados you know we don't have we you know we're, we don't have i mean all of these um uh, we're not going to be, be having any kind of um you know riots and 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 issues we just hope that the results of this come back really quickly and we don't end up with anything that like what happened in Guyana, um, etc. You know. All right. So, um, guys, we have in our studio um, here. Um, we have in our studio uh, Mr. Nigel Newton. Mm -hmm. Mr. Nigel Newton um, is here with us in the studio, and he is a candidate for Saint Philip North. The, as he's an APP candidate, and he's on tonight. And um, we're going to hear from him. We also have. Um, the Reverend um, Paul Leacock, the Reverend Paul Leacock. I mean, I have easy here in the house. I, I am, I am ecstatic. I'm really ecstatic about that. And I have my own. My husband is here. Come on, come on, come on. Give him a hand. Give him a hand. Dave Weeks is on tonight. Listen, listen, listen. This is a special one. We are talking about Barbados beyond this election guys i'm excited about that i'm excited about that we're looking now we're talking about future and vision and so on so you know i i just wanna wanna um just chat a bit with with them tonight and um wayne wayne hoyt welcome and please share uh wayne hoyt is saying there's a need for election reform very much so, Mr. Hoyt, and you've been on for every night. So let, let's go right now to um, the guests that are with us.
Um, first of all, Mr. Uh, Mr. Knight, Mr. Nigel Newton is here. Um, um, the Reverend um, um, Leacock is here with us as well. Um, and there is my husband, Dave Weeks. Welcome, 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 everybody. Good night. Good night, good night. Good night, Mr. Mr. Leacock, let me help you to... Okay. You have to um okay, so you have to unmute. Okay, I I'm think unmuted you and I'm grateful to be here. Thank you very much for the invitation. Wonderful. And I love that flag behind you there, Barbados yeah. flag is right there, right there behind you, and that's wonderful. Yeah. Even though you're not in Barbados right now. <laughs> <laughs> well, thank God for the wonderful knowledge he has imparted and the technology that we have. Yes. be able to connect in the way that we can yes that's wonderful let me hear from mr newton mr newton good evening are you ready is your mic let me see okay you have to unmute your mic mr newton so while while he does that dave how are you this evening i am wonderful and <laughs> i had a good day today a, a very peaceful day today Sorry right can you i'm not hearing you very well can you speak up a little louder Sound like a bank holiday very well. It felt felt really, really well today. It was a good day today. Are you hearing me now? Yes, 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 much, much, much better. Much better. Much better. Okay, great, great, great. Yes, let me hear Mr. Newton. Can you hear me, uh, Mr. Newton? Okay, he's still um still still setting up there. Still setting up. I don't think he's hearing me. So we'll just we'll wait put him in the green room and we'll just wait um until he is sorted out so um it's election day we're here it is the 19th you know and we were told this 21 days ago and and we are here what are what's going through your mind uh, pastor paul well, I've been on uh, so, sort of watch all day, of course, uh, trying to see what unfolds given this unprecedented situation that we are experiencing in Barbados. That's the main thing that's going on, that it's so unpre unprecedented that you want to wait. I'm waiting with anticipation to see what God is going to do because there have been so many prayers that have gone up, prayer and fasting and work and a lot of investment of time and energy uh, into this particular campaign. And it is, uh, it is just amazing what has happened. And uh, I'm trusting and waiting on God. I'm like a watchman on the wall, <laughs> waiting for the report from the field to see what the Lord has done because the troops have gone forth. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And you know, I mean, Dave, I hear you saying that today it felt like a bank holiday to you. Yeah, yeah, there, there was a peacefulness about today. Um, we put in a lot of spiritual work. That's the truth. We put in a lot of spiritual work. We understood the spiritual dimension. We, we understood the arena in which we were playing or warring in. And a lot of spiritual work went in, a lot of prayers, a lot of intercession, a lot of worship. And I felt I felt at the end of last night as though, okay, we did we did what we had to do. We did our part. Let's let God take it from here, you know, and, and let's let's just as Pastor um, Pastor Paul said, um, let's wait and see what God is going to unfold. So it's yes. just a matter of seeing how God is gonna play his hand. He can play his hand in a myriad of ways. That's the truth about God. You know, you can't box God into any specific way. And the Bible says our way may not be his way, you know, and his his thoughts, not ours, you know. But also I know that he's a good father. <laughs> and he promised he wouldn't give you, you know, a big rock when you ask for a piece of bread. So <laughs> he, he knows what we want. He knows that we want righteousness in this nation he knows that we want barbados to be a righteous nation a righteous leader in the region so however he's swinging however he well whatever hand he plays we know it's gonna be a good hand so we yes. we, we believe amen. that god is going to swing something wonderful for this country barbados amen wonderful you know um camille aline is saying here 
Um, she says, good evening. Yes, I am anticipating God as well. So proud of the Christian's dedication oh, to boy. prayer in this season. And and mm -hmm. that that's a good um a good point there, um, Reverend Leacock. And and you know, I, I I know your church was praying, and you in fact, even way before this election, you had your finger on something. I, I mean, a, a, a while back. And there was a lot of praying and so on, but I think everything seemed to have intensified. Um, what what what's your thought on thoughts on that? Well, um, we can't always depend on foxhole praying. You know, something's happening, mm -hmm. and we jump into the mode of prayer. But I I think that ever since that we were looking at the advent of the republic um status that was being imposed um we began our praying and as you know uh as part of family fair freedom uh mm -hmm. we were praying for for quite a while because mm -hmm. we were seeing these events as they were unfolding and we were able to i mean for the last seven years we have been seeing the progression mm -hmm. of governments going in this particular direction they may not have always come out and publicly say what they're endorsing or about to implement, but we could have seen the policies that were slowly being implemented, we implemented in the various departments of government, the trainings that were being done and given, the signing on, onto various uh, uh, conventions like the Inter-American uh, Human Rights Court mm. and, and the conventions that that will impose on Barbados and the, and and so we have been for a long time monitoring the situation. But as you said, once that republic came into was coming into being, the other thing was there were some laws that government passed hmm. that uh, alert that brought the matter to the fore, mm -hmm. be it the welcome stamp visa or be it the uh, discrimination uh unemployment act the new unemployment act against discrimination uh we began to see government now more boldly inter interfacing and introducing those kinds of uh legislation and mm -hmm. so we began praying in earnest and we began putting together uh, mobilizing going from just praying to movement because mm -hmm. faith without works is certainly dead mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. but there have been an intensification of prayer and action over mm -hmm. the the last year yes 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 I, I mean you could feel it in the atmosphere and you know and the, and also unity there we saw we saw um unity coming you know people coming together i remember even on this show um dave that um there was a team of you that put together um you know when when the whole talk yeah. was about yeah. the charter and removing removing mm -hmm. god mm -hmm. from the constitution and, and 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 from the charter um we saw even rastafari people were you know it was it was interesting you know reverend leacock to see quick, that quick 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 quick, quick quick yes yes absolutely um you see because the 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 the, the, the truth of the matter is while some people will um tend to think that we were trying to Christianize things or baptize things, or in the words of a popular uh, talk show host, we are trying to uh, make Barbados a theocracy. Mm -hmm. uh, people miscalculate the fact uh, that this country, uh, its laws, its culture, its way of life is rooted in the Judeo-Christian ethic. Mm -hmm. uh, we draw heavily on the biblical standards and morals which is at the basis the foundation of our laws mm -hmm. so when when the uh when we saw the exclusion of the sovereignty of god in the charity some people thought that we just wanted god the word god put in there that's not the point this is not semantics mm -hmm. whenever you establish laws laws have a moral basis mm -hmm. there is no reason for a law if you don't have a moral basis Mm -hmm. if, if 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 it's wrong why is it wrong to steal it's wrong to steal because you're taking something from someone else that's rightfully theirs not rightfully yours and you don't have the right to infringe on their liberty and to take their possessions that's mm -hmm. a moral basis all mm -hmm. laws have a foundation and that foundation 
if you go back in antiquity, when you study legal precedent, all laws are based theologically. Mm -hmm. There is a respect for a, a, a entity, God, that is greater than yourself, or persons who are held in high esteem for their quality of wisdom and so on that you therefore borrow from because what they're espousing to you is absolutely right and makes sense. But even if you go to the Greeks and Roman law, they base their law on the gods and the will of the gods. Now mm -hmm. that's pagan, but it's not wrong in that sense. Mm -hmm. All the law that we know was based on God. It's right. wrong because it is against the will of the one who created you, fashioned you, and has the power and authority over you and to you, you and you have obligation to mm -hmm. that God. Then too, when we look at morality, morality is for the flourishing of the, of the society. Morality needs to exist if a country is going to grow, is going to develop, it's going to thrive. There must be morality. Mm -hmm. uh, we say a different way. We say you need a law-abiding society. Mm -hmm. Business cannot be done in lawlessness. Mm -hmm. You cannot have commerce and you cannot have trade and you cannot have growth and development. You can't have a stable society. You cannot have any stability in the face of chaos. Mm -hmm. And therefore... We, 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 we need to understand that the church, we were not asking the churches that came together. Yeah. We're not begging for God's, the word God to be put into the charter. But we were asking government the question, what is the basis of your laws? When you remove sovereignty of God, and we understand what the word sovereign is. The sovereign is the person to whom you owe obligation. The sovereign is the person who has ultimate authority and whose word represents objective truth. Mm -hmm. that you are to defer to, not your humanistic ways or not your own opinion. And therefore, we were asking government, why have you removed sovereignty, which was in the independence uh, uh, documents when we declared independence from England. And they were also, uh, it's in the preamble of the constitution. And even the Ford Commission that studied whether we should go republic long before uh, this administration sought to implement it or any other preceding it, he investigated that. Should we use the sovereignty of God? Since uh, maybe other religions don't co conform to that. And he concluded based on his research and study of people that it should be retained. So if against that background, why are you now removing the sovereignty of God? Because then what, are, what is the basis of our laws? There must be a philosophical base right. from which you draw. Mm -hmm. So we, the churches were alarmed at that only because they want to know on what basis then are you going to form this republic? Mm -hmm. We know what we have as a constitution. We know what we have as the laws that govern our society. But what then is going to be the philosophical, theological, sociological basis on which you will form this new constitution? Yes. So once that was explained, the Christian church mobilized. They came together and we were able to present uh, a united front um, to, to government and posted that uh, full page spread that asked those questions and challenged government and even said, don't implement the charter till you flesh these issues out. Mm -hmm. Because not only was the sovereignty of God removed, we now saw an inclusion of terms that were foreign to our legal system and to some degree foreign to our cultural practice mm -hmm. that can undermine our society. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. We saw no terms like gender and we know what gender meant 20 years ago. It don't right. mean the same thing now. Yeah. <laughs> and we also saw 
words like sexual orientation. Mm -hmm. Well, what does that mean? So again, you have to qualify those terms. You've removed what we know and you're including what we don't. And therefore we wanted clarification and the church is rightfully so because as I said, over the last seven years, we have been studying this not only as it crept into Barbados, but we have we have jurisdictions like Canada, mm -hmm. England, Europe, and the United States. And we can see the fallout when that sexual rights agenda is given legal status in mm -hmm. the country. And, and here's the point that you asked the question, you, were, you made the observation that it wasn't just Christians, it was Rastafari, it was Islam, it was mm -hmm. other faith groups, and it was ordinary citizens that respect our rule of law and the basis of our law. Mm -hmm. So people wanted to have clarification that was not forthcoming. So therefore, since that was not forthcoming, we had to come forward. Yes, yes. And I mean, I, I've been living here, Pastor Paul, you know, for um, almost 22 years. And I've never seen the level, we talk about the prayer that has occurred. Um, you know, as a result, you've given such a, a, a wonderful um, understanding of the foundation of it and where it started with the family faith freedom. I mean, they, they really laid the foundation, the family faith freedom with um, Dr. Veronica, Veronica Evelyn, um, who wanted to be here this evening, couldn't be because she's, she's working in the election. Yeah, she's <laughs> in the field. She's in the field. But that, that foundation was laid, and I had never seen that kind of unity. You know, we've been praying for unity. And then we started to see see you know um people who you know were in that corner and that corner over here and they started to kind of just come together um you know and and it just amazes me what do you see for the church after this regardless of the the the, the results um tonight what do you see for the church after well uh that's an excellent question because um I, I, I'm hoping that persons don't think that tonight is a fear they complete, even if all of the persons that we support, um, despite whatever party they're in, becomes the new government. Because becoming the government is an election process. Mm -hmm. Being the government is an execution process. The, gover the, the country needs to be governed it doesn't just need elected officials. We need persons who are gonna serve the interests of the people mm -hmm. and to bring this economy out of the debt trap that it's in and to see a productive, stable, viable economy that we can all live in peaceably. And that's what we're praying for. We're not mm -hmm. praying against people more than we're praying for what God commanded us to pray for. Mm -hmm, the mm -hmm. word of God says that we should pray for rulers. We yes. should pray for leaders. Mm -hmm. Because, uh, as his word says, that it is God's will that we live peaceable mm -hmm. and righteous lives. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Uh, God said to Jeremiah, for example, in 29, 11, we like to quote that a lot mm -hmm. when we uh, reflect on various difficulties we are in. Mm -hmm. The Jews were in exile in Babylon. That cannot be good. We are not in exile, even in our own country, but to some degree, we have some policies and procedures and some global uh, dictates that you, you make you feel you're in exile. Mm -hmm. But he said in Jeremiah 29, 11, uh, I know my plans concerning you. Yes. But prior to that, he said, prayer for the city. Mm hmm Pray for it, marry, b grow crops, do commerce, mm -hmm. live where you are, prosper. Because if the city prospers, you will prosper. Exactly, exactly. The Lord commanded his people to pray for the success of Babylon. Can you imagine? Mm. And we know that word Babylon, that sticks in the cross. Some religions, the, the system <laughs> is considered Babylon. Right. And yet God says, prayer for that city. 
And it wasn't me. He didn't mean to pray for the evil to prosper, pray for its evil regime to continue. But when God speaks of prosperity, he speaks of it in a healthy, righteous way because God loves justice and judgment. Mm -hmm. So as Christians, we want Barbados to prosper. Amen. It is mm -hmm. important that we apply ourselves as Christians in commerce, in culture, in, in the music and the arts, in, in every area of life of Barbados, we want to see sustainability, viability, mm -hmm. prosperity. Because if Barbados prospers, we prosper. Correct. I always say to my church, when people question whether we are getting very political or not, I always say to them, listen, Christians do not come from Mars on Saturday night, worship <laughs> in their churches, and go back on Sunday evening. We live here. We yes. pay taxes. We're raising our children here. We, we, we are neighbors. We are your neighbors. We are parents, and we are friends, and we are civil servants, and we are teachers mm -hmm. and doctors, nurses and lawyers. And I would love to say to politicians, servants yes. of the people, of the people. Mm -hmm. So, you know, it's important to recognize that no matter what happens tonight, the work would have just begun. And we mm -hmm. must not sleep. We must not go to sleep. We must not uh, think that we can, oh, praise the Lord and stop praying. We're going to mm -hmm. have to pray harder now mm -hmm. that the government that comes in fulfills the will of God. Mm -hmm. Fulfills the will of God. Now, that may sound theological as though I'm preaching, but that's not so. In Romans 13, the Bible tells us clearly that governments are the servant of God. Mm -hmm. Not just the people, but God give them power and authority so that they can govern well, rule well. Mm -hmm. And they, they are supposed to oppose evil and promote what is good. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So a, a government doesn't come in because of its excellent acumen and its expertise and education and, and to be able to implement its policies and its manifesto, the greatest manifesto that it needs to implement is the will of God. Yes. And therefore, we have to pray and be vigilant that whoever comes in mm -hmm. does the will of God for the good of the country and to prevent the flourishing of evil. Mm -hmm. Wow. Powerful. Well, I mean, this is, this is... Uh an exposition here tonight and giving us that understanding because a lot of times, you know, um, we are here, you hear people say, oh, you know, you can't be, um, too, in, you know, too political and you can't do this and, oh, don't be political, don't be, and but as you said, we don't drop from Mars, I love that, we don't drop from Mars on a Saturday night <laughs> and then we come to church and then, right. you know, and, and, and what I love is, it's, I mean, I don't know if you had seen that show that was done um, where, you know, we had all of these different persons who recognize God as, you know, as their deity. And as, in our, you know, as Christians, we know who we worship. But mm -hmm. they were, they too were, you know, they were, they were not happy and they were able to come together. And we've just seen, I believe, as you said, it's just the beginning. Absolutely. Yeah. What would you? What do you say to those candidates tonight? You know, to them and to their families that have offered themselves up. These are, you know, born again believers. Are people I know in church singing and worshiping. Where they they are serious about God. They've offered themselves up, and whether they um, receive the candidacy um, tonight to become the not the can be, become mm -hmm. the candidate become, I mean, the, the representative, I should say, mm -hmm. um, tonight, um, or not. What what would you say to these um, these Christians tonight? Well, we certainly have to commend them for their courage and for the, the, the effort that they have definitely put in and, and seeking to represent what is right and what is good. I, I think that we can say certainly without fear of contradiction that we have seen over the past 15 years a lot of misrepresentation. We can trace from our earliest beginnings where we have not seen righteousness permeating the land. 
And uh, it is commendable that persons from the various walks of life are being that is good there's some people that put their religion in their back pocket when they go into certain arenas they get the top job as an executive director or whatever and their christianity is suppressed they 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 don't want to bring religion into the situation so mm -hmm. it's to be highly commended that these persons unapologetically declared themselves to be Christians, mm -hmm. not so as to be ingratiated to somebody, not so much as to win the favor of someone, mm -hmm. because everybody wears a cross and everybody uh, tries to act very religious and say, God bless you, when they're canvassing mm -hmm. so as to appear to be noble. But these persons define themselves to be Christian, and mm -hmm. we know them. We know them. Yes. So this is not just a matter of doing some benevolent thing, a religious thing mm -hmm. to appear Christian, but we know them. Mm -hmm. um, this is not to say that uh, this is not to say that uh, that every one of them is perfect, but right. they're, they're willing to stand on the platform to say this is what we stand for. Right, uh, right. It means also that they are to be commended because when you give yourself such public exposure you mm -hmm. are opening yourself and your family mm -hmm. to all kinds of scrutiny and in some cases reprisals that's you it there, there's some people in this country that because of their stands have lost contracts have been blacklisted have mm -hmm. been have been pushed aside have been overlooked and oftentimes that happens when people take principal positions mm -hmm. and and therefore for that they're to be commended because if they expose themselves they expose their family they expose their children and they can mm -hmm. even suffer as a result uh because of the uh the exposure some people mm -hmm. may not may may lose their jobs or or, or may or may not be able to be given the contracts they're entitled to and so on. We've seen mm -hmm. all of that happen. Mm -hmm. They are to be commended. And they are to be commended for answering the call, not just as Christians, but as servants of the people. This country needs people who will go into office and with the intent to serve and not to be served. Mm -hmm. We mm -hmm. have a culture that has emerged in this country that is stifling growth, development, progress, and prosperity. Mm -hmm. It is a self-serving culture that people think that when they become politicians, they are entitled to the public purse or right. they're entitled to build their own lives uh, at the expense of others and cease to be servants of the people and the people are to serve them. Mm -hmm. Government talks about its money as though it's its money. Mm -hmm. Government doesn't have any money. All mm -hmm. the money that government expends is the money contributed by the people. It's the people's money. Mm -hmm. And the government speaks of it as though it's doing you a favor when they build a road or when mm -hmm. they repair something. Correct. You're doing what you're supposed to do. And you're using our money. And you need to recognize that. We need to recognize that uh, the leaders are the, the, the most highly paid part-time workers mm -hmm. in the country. Mm -hmm. You're given a five-year contract at best. Mm -hmm. And the benefits that they have passed for themselves are wonderfully uh, <laughs> exciting. Who, who gets pension after 10 years we have to wait the 67 and hope that there's still enough money in the nis that is being trashed mm -hmm. okay so therefore when you have people come forward willing to serve the people who have a a, a zeal to serve they are to be extremely commended and we are to continue to pray that they do not lose that zeal mm -hmm. and, and 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 continue to maintain mm -hmm. that integrity in office because that's what this country needs immediately.
Yes, yes. Oh, well said, well said. You know, and I, I, I want to, in terms of the church, you know, as you, can you speak to the church as it, as it relates to how they care for these people? Whether they, they, they win tonight, as we say, whether they become the representative or they, 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 they don't. I mean, these, these, um, these candidates would have been hitting the pavement 21 days. Their lives have turned upside down. And I've seen them. I've been close up to them and seen them. You know, um, how can the church care for them? I know you mentioned some things before, um, just a while ago, but what are some of the other ways that um, we could care for these people? Well, first of all, uh, they, they need to know that they are part of a community. Mm -hmm. They're not out there by themselves. Mm -hmm. They're part of a community mm -hmm. that have their best interests at heart. Mm -hmm. uh, we must not forget too, although we talked mm -hmm. about the exposure and all those other things, you should not forget too, that mm -hmm. running as a, as a candidate is extremely mm -hmm. expensive. Yes. Now there's yes. some people who, who when they're in the Huskins, they know which shops, which businesses, which influencers in the community to go to and get their buy-in and their sponsorship. Mm -hmm. There are others who have funds from very um, deep pockets in society. Mm -hmm. uh, clearly, businessmen and people who have interest mm -hmm. support those who are going to feather their nests, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. who are going to implement policies that would prosper their businesses and cause them to, uh, in some cases, pay less taxes or mm -hmm. no taxes, or to give them, as 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 the prime minister to use the prime the word the prime minister a blow, you know, give them an opportunity, <laughs> allow them to be able to import what is not on the list to be imported, to allow yes. them to to get a contract, to mm. allow them to be able to build their business because government gives them some largesse or some. Mm -hmm. They obviously have an interest. In, in the candidates that will, when if if and when they come to power, will give them those opportunities. Mm -hmm. And then there's always external funds. Mm -hmm. It is no secret that people like George Soros has given money to mm -hmm. countries, especially, let's be relevant to the Caribbean, to implement policies that suits his particular agenda and those whom he represents. There mm -hmm. are millionaires and billionaires who will give money to Caribbean countries to put themselves in position and to open their small economies to their particular business interests. So mm -hmm. money can come externally so that those policies are implemented. Mm -hmm. And I must tell you, that we had a session, you were talking about the sessions of churches come together. We had a session mm -hmm. where Sister Corita D was able to inform us about the billions that 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 is uh, poured into the coffers of the sexual rights agenda to be able to make sure their policies and their mm -hmm. interests is, is, is furthered in any country around the world. And they knock on every door. Mm -hmm. So a politician that is willing to be a sycophant to them, they, they'll, 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 they'll fund it. They'll fund it. Coming, therefore, to these our brothers who we know don't have no deep pockets, <laughs> we, we, we should be prepared to help them in any way we can. Amen, yes. And, as, and, and I, I know I'm touching on something very uh, Barbadian here. We like to say, God bless you, thank you. But God bless you, thank you. The blessing is in our hands. Yes. The blessing is in our pockets. Mm -hmm. And we should be willing to assist in any mm -hmm. way that we can. Yes. So that if our brethren, as a result of their efforts, are mm -hmm. in need, we are step forward and help them. Mm -hmm. We have to support them. And we have to be prepared to do that. If other groups who are not Christian, don't have any moral basis, can mm -hmm. draw funds even from nefarious areas. Don't let's leave that out. 
yes. from nefarious activity. Mm -hmm. We, the Church of Jesus Christ, must be prepared to help our brothers and sisters who put themselves on the line for us, even if it means that we pass the collection plate. Now, we can't even pass the plate now, Sister Marcia, but we, we, <laughs> <laughs> we have to be able to support them. And support means in cash or kind, however we can, to make sure that those candidates, be they elected or, or not yet, mm -hmm. to be supported. And on that count, let me say this. Last election, 2018, last election, Solutions Barbados yes. offered itself with a full slate to this country and declared themselves Christian. I know because they came to our church and we snubbed them. Mm. But you know, guess what? Although they may not be a front running group now, I believe their candidacy their offering, their declaration in the field, their entry mm. provided the way for now. Wow, I love that. I was thinking about that today. And I, oh, Pastor Paul, man, you have us. I, I, I see, I don't know if Dave is in a position to come out, come back on at this moment. But, you know, let me tell you, I, I totally, totally understand. I mean, that I can understand because I, I was thinking that, you know, and I said it to Grenville um, Phillips today. They were they went ahead Correct. and laid a foundation. Continue Correct. on that. I, I cut you off, but continue. <laughs> yeah, that's okay because I mean this is a conversation. I'm enjoying it as yeah. much as you are, and <laughs> uh, and I really I want to commend you two for for the um, the the input that you have made in in this situation, having this show and having people able to gain access, a, a forum where they can discuss the issue, where mm -hmm. people that they would probably never get the chance to meet and listen to, you gave them a forum here, and a very creative one, I must add. And I've, I've <laughs> watched you. several of these shows, and they, they, they were very creative. They were very informative. I enjoyed particularly the, 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 the show with Bruce and with uh, Sean Tudor and Bruce Hennis. Yes. Very helpful. Uh, so that's the kind of support, but I, 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 to every, let me put it in short terms to every Christ uh, for Christ, there was a John the Baptist mm. <laughs> and I believe solutions Barbados cracked that, right. yes. uh, that, that ceiling mm -hmm. that, that, and, and blow away the taboo that you are a Christian. Just talk about Moses, just mm -hmm. talk about Elijah and Jesus and God is love, hallelujah, mm -hmm. praise yeah. his name. And don't <laughs> say nothing about what the people in front mm -hmm. of you are suffering mm -hmm. every day. Right. Right. And that's wrong. And trust me, if we got to part the Red Sea tonight, hallelujah, that's Moses too. Mm -hmm. So yeah. let, let the word of God come forth. Mm -hmm. and, and, you know, as a, as a child growing up, I only understood our deficiency in our faith when I went overseas. And mm -hmm. I'm sure you have spent time overseas. You look back at your cultural context and you realize, oh my God, you see spots and stains and wrinkles that you thought were part of your life and should mm -hmm. stay there forever. But you look back and you see the deficiencies in your own people and in your own self. Mm -hmm. And one of the things that I recognized when I went overseas, I joined a church that I never probably would have joined. I joined the, the, the African Methodist Episcopal Church. Mm -hmm. All right. Mm -hmm. uh, and let me tell you, that was a challenge because <laughs> from a Baptist perspective, you're supposed to be Baptist. You know the Jamaican Baptist I know, Sister, Sister Marcia. Yes, 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 yes. Right, straight down the line. Don't look left. Don't look right. Straight forward. Fundamental. And when I joined that church, I found that the pastor who became a congressman with the support of the congregation, mm. Mm -hmm. he became a congressman because of his congregation. Mm -hmm. I find that he's preaching and he's talking about black stuff and he's talking about uh, how they're suffering and what they need to advocate to do. Uh, and, and, 
I, I was like, gee, can we hear about the Bible, please? Let me hear about this political business. I mean, come on. I thought that he wasn't preaching. So, you know, you settle down, you shut up, and let the Holy Ghost talk to you. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I recognize, wait a minute, this pastor and many other black preachers like him were applying the scriptures to the sociological context of their people, to their reality. Exactly. Because if the Bible, Correct. with all of its power, is not applicable in my life so that I can apply it to the difficulties, the challenges that I'm facing, what's the good of it? What's the good of it? Just to mm -hmm. tell a nice story? Mm -hmm. And therefore, I recognize that in Barbados, we have never been accustomed to applying the word of God that we study to our lives, to our sociological context. Wow. We keep them compartmentalized. <laughs> this is about God, and this is about the world. Mm -hmm. We suck salt here, and we hope for honey, and uh, the land of milk and honey over here. Mm -hmm. That's nonsense. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. The word of God has to be applied mm -hmm. to the realities of mm -hmm. our lives. Mm -hmm. and, and therefore, it is important that we see that happening. And as Christians going forward now, we, we don't just want, oh, you ran and uh, you were a candidate, praise the Lord. No. How can we continue to allow the word of God to apply to the realities of our lives to the degree that we can see a tremendous change happening in the country because we are applying the principles of the word of God in our lives. So you were a candidate last year you, and you may not want, you're not washed up. You have a role to play. Mm -hmm. you, 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 you have now become a minister. Well, you don't abandon the, 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 the launching pad that got you there. You know, mm -hmm. you're going to do what you're supposed to do. Mm -hmm. And you know that you have a community. Just imagine that the ministers who are implementing change, and no change is ever easy and easily acceptable. But when you know you have a community of people mm -hmm. who are supporting you, you can have the courage to go forward and implement those changes. Mm -hmm. And there are some people who are not going to like you. And there's some people who are not going to be in favor. The newspaper is going to get busy. Brass stats going to heat up. And <laughs> you're going to get some insults and slurs while you're shopping in the supermarket with your children. But mm -hmm. so what? If you know that there is a group of people, good people, mm -hmm. godly people, who supporting you, you can say like Esther, prayer for me. Me and my maid is going fast. But you... Tell all the Jews, get busy. Mm -hmm. And she was able to say, I'm going in to see the king. And if I perish, I perish. perish. <laughs> awesome. Awesome. I mean, this I'm I'm loving this. I'm just I'm loving this, Dave. I'm I'm seeing Mr. Newton is still there. That we're gonna try. Uh, Mr. Newton, um, we are going to um gonna see if there uh, I don't know if you can hear us still. Uh, Mr. Newton, Nigel Newton. Um, to, he's a, was a candidate as well, and um, and uh, uh, as well born again, and um, and so I wanted to hear from um, where from hear from him. Aman Sirhin, just want to make something clear. Oh, he's something okay. You're saying he, he God that, that he's not a ghost. We don't say Holy Ghost. We say Holy Spirit only. I guess you know um, it's semantics, Mister Hin. Um, <laughs> what do you think? That's Mr. all right. Mister Newton, can you hear? Can you hear, Mister Newton? Wow, he's having problems. He's muted. Okay, you have to unmute yourself, Mr. Newton. You you have to do it. Yes, you you were unmuted. Just um, unmute yourself. It happened a while ago. Whatever you just did, it's it's what it is. Just unmute. Yeah, we are. You're still muted. I don't know if you can hear me. Okay. 
Okay. Something is. There you go. That's it. That's it. Now, oh, it, it's 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 a low. It's keep, it keeps um going um, back and forth. Yeah. Back and forth, Mr. Newton. Sometimes what you have to do, you have to leave and come back. So just try that. Marcio. Yes. Yeah, I, I just want to, while, while Mr. Newton gets started, I just want to, to um, say wow to what um, Reverend Leacock has, has put over. It's so pertinent and relevant in that the, the church, is, the church is, a, is, a, is an organism that is developing, always growing, always evolving, if you can use that term. And if you look through history, the church has always been updating itself and making itself more and more relevant. I mean, if you look back, one time, one time, you you we couldn't do drums in the church. One time, you couldn't dance in the church. One time, you know, you couldn't sing certain types of beats in the church. You know, and we've had to update ourselves and keep being relevant. In the society in which we exist and today none of us have backslidden none of us have gone to hell for beating drums in the church none of us we dance in the church and we we play reggae we play calypso in the church so we've upgraded we've upgraded our mentalities because none of these things are in the word of god that says you can't do this and you can't do that but it's just because of culture the culture from which we came we brought these things along without thinking we assume that because in that culture, in those times, those things weren't acceptable or, or pretty much those are things that the, the quote unquote world did. And therefore we took our standards from what the world said. But I think the church is coming into its own in these days and recognizing that we are supposed to be leading the world and not the world leading us. For too long, we have sat back and allowed the world to tell us, well, we you guys you can't play reggae you can't play calypso that's wrong you know and then we we we, we, we believe also that we shouldn't be in politics you know uh, be, just because the, the political arena has been dominated by people who are not of the church who have not been in the church it's been dominated by economists and doctors and lawyers and mm -hmm. these are the people who have dominated the political arena but in these times we are seeing and, and then when we go out the scripture, when we think of it and we look back at it, we say, but wait, but Joseph was was like a, a, prime, um, minister. a prime minister. He was like a, a, a Barack Obama. Yeah. Joseph was really the same thing as uh, Boris Johnson. He yeah. took care of the economy of Egypt. Yeah. Seven years, the Lord, God told him seven years, prepare and, and store up. It's no different than now. The yeah. economists do the same thing. When there's plenty, when tourism is booming, when agriculture is booming, you ought to have your treasury, um, your foreign reserves um, up in preparation for when things when there's a dunk swing, when there's a COVID. You know, it's the same thing. We look back and we see that David was the king. He was in charge. You know, if you go back through the whole biblical history, all the kings, all the kings were supposed to be godly men. Mm -hmm. And God became upset when they... They left God and did other things, served other gods. So mm -hmm. the expect the default expectation was that the rulers, the rulers were really the people of God, mm -hmm. and that was the default expectation. If we check the Bible, mm -hmm. you know, um, I think there was one king, and I can't remember if it was Agrippa or Festus. He told Paul, "I would almost be a Christian like you, my brother. A little bit more, and I would be a Christian like you." So it wasn't, you know, we we are really having to upgrade our our thinking and our perspective and 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 begin to tell the world what what it should be okay mm -hmm. because in terms of the social um development and the social underpinnings of humankind mankind it's really the kingdom of god that has those things under under their belt i mean these are things that that, that reverend leacock studied day and night he studied what the bible says about poverty he studies what it says about abuse. He studies what it says about sickness. He studied what it says about, about fairness, about justice. All this, this is the Bible. And these are men of God and women of God who have gone to theological mm -hmm. institutions to understand spirituality, to mm -hmm. understand what spiritual, um, what are relevant from spiritual perspective for the development of mankind. Mm -hmm. And therefore, 
the onus is really on those of us who focus because man is a spirit man is a spirit first and foremost mm -hmm. if you are spirit first and foremost then should the people who study spirituality who study how the spirit works who studies what what's the meaning of fasting i'm sure if you ask pastor pastor paul what what is the purpose of fasting he can speak to you about three hours on that because he knows he's studied it he's done he's a practitioner in fasting he knows its benefits okay and if you if you were to ask him you know the concept of of, of turn the other cheek what's the benefits of that i'm sure that there that he can tell you from experience the benefits of not taking an eye for an eye and that's what a lot of people do because they're not schooled in some of these intangible benefits which are the underpinnings of human of humanity these are the yeah, things that absolutely. run your the human life the, the the thing the intangibles mm -hmm. you know how you treat your brother the concept of justice you know the concept of paying a fair wage mm -hmm. the concept of the concept of of um of 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 of, of um um what's the word i'm looking for the not being not not stealing or not cheating or not taking money under the table corruption corruption you remember the story of ananias and sapphira mm -hmm. they came and said one thing but the holy spirit showed it what well, that wasn't what happened that was a form mm -hmm. of corruption they're saying something and it wasn't so you know mm -hmm. so we the church or we the people of god we really have a lot of knowledge that we can use and utilize to run the nation yeah. And we will do it fairly. You don't see us. Absolutely. You know, you, uh, you know, there are some unscrupulous pastors. Yes, they are. They're human beings. But the average pastor is not cheating and stealing from his congregation. The average yeah. Christian is not going around killing and shooting people and having sex with five and six women. The average Christian isn't doing that. The average Christian is not in jail. And these are things, these are common things that are in society, but we choose to ignore them. And they're ignored because... The system is not run by the church it's run by the world All and right. it's not that we want a theocracy no we're not looking for a theocracy but we're looking for the righteous and godly input of people whose jobs is to look after the people the interests of the people and not their own pockets so because you have people who are unrighteous by nature whose 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 whose, whose nature has not been reformed to that of christ then it's easy for them to take a fifty thousand dollar here and there it's easy because they haven't had that teaching they haven't been schooled in the word of god but when you've got a man who's been schooled in honesty who's been schooled in and do not steal do not kill do not do not who's been schooled in the word of god it's going to take a lot and i'm saying it's impossible but it's going to take a lot more to convince him to accept a bride it's going to take a lot to, to for him to to ignore totally ignore his constituents mm -hmm. So these are the things that that the church is has is having to radically adjust itself and to understand its purpose in the society to understand its purpose in the community to understand um its role in helping those in prison helping those in, in that are sick helping those who need a job the compassionate nature of jesus when jesus saw the woman as she was taking her son that was dead that had died he had compassion and he raised the, the he raised the woman's child back to life that's the compassion that we are taught to have. And we, we learn this every Sunday, every day. We are schooled in these things. So when we go in the community and we see someone living in a shack, that compassion of Christ is going to well up inside of us. And we are going to be compelled to do something about it. And that's, that's who we are. That's Wonderful. who we are by nature. And that's why you have this show, Marcia, because of the compassion. Because you don't want, you're doing this because you want to give the, the newer parties a chance. And Correct. Allow the world system. And may, 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 may I please yes. add to that, Sister Marcia? Mm -hmm. Your um, Dave has mentioned so many uh, very important things, but there are some misnomers that we need to dispel. Uh, some people okay. want the church to go into the sanctuary and stay there. Yes. <laughs> but however, what they do not know is many things that they have said. The church is the organization that started hospitals thank you and well, just look at the names <laughs> of the leading hospitals around the world and you will see what i'm saying the evidence is there yes because healthcare is a moral issue correct correct, correct. 
You don't take care of people's health because you're the minister of health. You take care of them because they're human beings that are in need and the compassion that they've talked about is necessary. The church started the theater. The church is the leading institution in education, theology. You know, you know, you're, I, um, Pastor Paul, I'm going to, because, you know, you mentioned the word theater, and you know what's uh, happening. <laughs> of course. I, want I purposely to, did that. We, we are, we're going to pick up on that, please, because I, I, I know I have you a little bit there. You know, I, I have some time with you. But uh, Mr. Newton uh, has been waiting, and I know he doesn't Absolutely. have Absolutely. I want to hear from him, yeah. But what I, what I want is I really want I really want to continue the conversation. So let me just have um, welcome Mr. Newton again. Mr. Newton, can you hear me now? Yes, I am hearing you quite clearly. All right. And you, and you are sounding really really fantastic too. Um, you know, Mr. Newton, you are a candidate, and you went down very early this morning. What time did you vote this morning? Oh, uh, I voted. Uh, around 12 o'clock because I left home at uh, 11 30 and there was quite a line there and uh, I waited my turn and I believe I got through somewhere around um, 12 o'clock uh, wow. somewhere around mm -hmm. wow and um and, and this you were at St. Mark's Church yes St. Mark's uh, Community Center Mm -hmm. Set that is great. So you can fill it or three, just by three, three houses hill. Yes, 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 yes. And this is your this is your second time as yes, a candidate. Yes, yes, please. Yes, and, yes. and what's the feeling like? No, I was trying to put myself in in the position of a candidate. You know, um, on the ninth year, you know, they let, they're counting. How do you? What's going on in your mind? Well. From yesterday evening, um, I became rather relaxed and confident because what I am doing in entering politics is not anything material or so it, what I'm doing is a spiritual journey. Mm -hmm. It's a spiritual journey because I, I and I think may I say that um, even though I was not part of the discussion i was listening intently and i thoroughly enjoyed all of the the discussion tonight because uh it is it has reminded me of uh some very significant moments in my life and i think that um yes the the discussion tonight for me is around 30 30 35 years uh late because mm. the church needed to hear this over 30 years ago. Yes. Right? And had the church heard what we heard tonight 30 years ago, I think we would have been in a better position. Mm -hmm. Yes. I so agree with you because it's the same thing with me in theater and film and all of that. You know, um, it's now that there you feel that legitimacy you know, and, and that authority in the area because there's more under, more understanding. Now, I know you don't have a lot of time with us um, this tonight, but um, I want to, as a candidate, um, you are a, a, a spiritual man, and I, I want to ask you, what, what do you see for Barbados beyond this election, regardless of what happened for you tonight? You know, how, what, what do you see for Barbados beyond we're looking beyond this election well that depends on the composition of the government the next government that is coming up because clearly we can see that uh, over the years the previous governments by both political parties in my estimation they have failed they have failed and Barbados, to me, is a failed state. It is just that we do not want to accept that. It is just that we do not want to recognize it. But Barbados is a failed state. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, and mm -hmm. unless we have the right kind of government, 
a government that is spiritually grounded, mm -hmm. a government that is not hostile to spirituality, mm -hmm. and a government that would listen and pay heed to concerns of people. I am not hopeful that we will have a good future. Because mm. oh, apart from a good government, and of course, the, the last three years, uh, the level of um, constitutional changes, uh, the implementation or the enactment of certain uh, of legislation, like uh, the domestic partnership bill, um, you know, what kind of future will we have when we? go down that road where we mm -hmm. want to throw God out. And what are we replacing that, replacing God with? You mm -hmm. see, and my concern is not so much the idea of mm -hmm. getting rid of God. My concern is the motive for doing that. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. My concern is what are you going to replace God with? Because nature does not exist in a vacuum. Mm -hmm. And if you take God out of the lives of people or spirituality, I prefer to use the term spirituality because, you know, um, God, the word God can be uh, an unpleasant word at times because it is used as an excuse for, for, for things, okay? Just like the devil, uh, the devil or devil is, uh, you know, that is used. The word devil is used also and misused. Okay. But mm -hmm. if we can have a country and a government that is grounded in spirituality, and if we can have ethical leadership, because I think the main reason or the major problem with Barbados today is that there is no ethical government. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. There is no morality in government. That's why we are where we are now in this catastrophe, mm -hmm. because of the absence of ethical leadership. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you know, and, 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 mm -hmm. I missed the last thing you said. Oh, plain and simple, plain and simple. Yes. Um, ethical leadership and morality in government. Mm -hmm. The only way we are going to save this country. Yes, yes, yes. Without yes. ethical leadership and without morality in government, we will continue to go downhill and I don't know where we will end. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, Mr. Newton, it's it's always always a, a pleasure, um, you know, speaking with you. Um, what 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 do you what has been your experience in app? Um, you you were with um, you were with you um, PDP before. Is that where you were? Right, and the then UPP. UPP. The UPP. UPP. Yes. Right. And so, what what is this merge? This merger and this coming together. What has been your experience? Sorry, I missed the last. What, what has been your experience with app, you know, this time around? I am enjoying it. Ah. it is, it's a beautiful experience because the leadership that we have, Bishop Joseph Averly, an honest man, a man of integrity, uh, Lynette Eastman, very capable, a woman of integrity, a woman who is committed to the welfare and the development of people. And I think the coming together of the UPP and the PDP, I don't think it is, I don't think that came about by accident. I don't think it came about by accident. And, um, as long and as long as we continue to stay focused and true to the um, to the destiny that we have been placed on, I think we will go far. Mm -hmm. And of course, I think 
the U the APP the APP is committed to leading this country with ethical leadership and morality mm -hmm. and that is what these are the things that have attracted me and keep me interested in um in politics in fact i <laughs> when the discussion tonight um it, as i said it reminded me of a phase in my life um i am a graduate of the Caribbean Theological Seminary in Trinidad. I am a gazetted minister of religion. But I decided to move out of Christ, well, church ministry onto the streets because at the time, I find that I was uh, ministering to the converted and the youngsters on the block, no one to speak with them, no one to care for them. Um, they were getting into drugs and all kinds of violence and so on. So I thought it would be an excellent thing to do for me to go to them and minister out there or to take care of them out there. Mm -hmm. So um and then of course uh having the experience out there on the block with the youngsters mm -hmm. and having the experience in the government service as a probation officer and seeing the suffering and the aches and pains of parents and people generally it suddenly dawned on me that I need to take my struggle for justice and equity and the respect for our dignity and humanity, it suddenly dawned on me that I need to take my struggle to the ultimate, mm -hmm. that is the House of Assembly of Barbados. Wow. That is, wow. That is, oh, that is why I offered myself as a candidate. In fact, in 2018, I began as an independent. Mm -hmm. But then some friends of mine, they were so captivated by what I had attempted. They urged me to join with a group, a party. Yeah. <laughs> and that individual took the phone up and called Miss Lynette is going to say, well, I have such and such a person here and he's about to do this and so on and so forth. And that's how I got into the mm -hmm. UPP. And I thoroughly uh, enjoyed my uh, time when I was with the UPP and what we had, we have accomplished. And now that I am in the APP, I think our hor horizon you know, has expanded. And I believe that we have a tremendous contribution to make to the development of Barbados. And we will do that through ethical leadership mm -hmm. and morality mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. as Ethics a foundation of yes. our government. Yes, wow. Awesome, thank you so much, Mr. Newton for coming on tonight. And it's great, you know, to, to hear your motivation, what's behind you. And I, you have this link and, you know, whenever that special time, you, you remember us tonight and jump right back on, okay? <laughs> when, when that announcement is made, you come right on. <laughs> I, will, okay. I, will. I, I must say thank you for the excellent job you are doing. Okay? You're welcome. Um, um, well, you know, the... The established media mm -hmm. does not pay us any attention mm -hmm. and they are very selective and may even be compromised. Yes. So what you are doing is very, very important and tremendously significant in bringing about a paradigm shift in Barbados. 
Thank you so much. And it's a gift. It is God's gift to the younger parties. It's not, it's not me. It's his gift to you. Okay. God bless you, sir. Thank you very much. Good night. Yes. Yes, God bless, God bless. You know, um, we we have so many these um, every night. You know, um, Pastor Paul, we have the third parties. Um, you know, uh, not, not the third parties. Apostle mm -hmm. Canterbury says I not to say third parties, and I've been doing that. And he's in the green room here, said so I better change my talk. The younger parties, the younger parties, and he's coming up. And you know, uh, Pastor Paul, you you'll be with us a little bit. So I'm just gonna chat with with them no a problem. bit, and, and then come right back. Because uh, I know okay. I can, you're itching to get into, into what he was saying there. So this whole you you have two things to, to talk to me about. All right, ethics and morality, and and the arts and media and so on. Right. So we're coming back to you. Give me a moment. But I have I have uh, Miss um, Apostle Linwar Scantlebury is in the house, and also Mr. Philip Springer um, is also here. These are candidates um, here. And Apostle Scantlebury from N NBKA, and I'm sure I got that right. NBKA and Philip Springer from BSP, right? And I'm going to um gonna gonna speak with um uh, uh, Reverend um, Apostle Scantlebury first because I know he um his schedule is a, is a little tight, um but he's he, he's able to drop in with us tonight. Apostle, how are you doing? He's not hearing me. Okay. Uh, Apostle Scantlebury, how are you? How about uh, Mr. Philip Springer? Can you hear me? I can hear you loud and clear, Marcia. I can hear you. Yes. Yes. Okay. Well, 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 well. I, I'm sure, you know, you, you went and you, you did, you cast your vote today, uh, Mr. Springer. Uh, Marcia, you... I wish I could tell you I did that. I tried. Somehow, strangely enough, I get to the polling station and my name is not on the list. It's what? the most amazing thing. Yes, I was on the list two weeks ago. I'm not on the list today. They, they no, issued new, no, they no, issued, no, they, no, no, Marcia, they issued new uh, lists uh, yesterday. I went and picked up. I didn't bother to check mine. I have them here. And when I get to the polling station today, they can't find me. They sent me to another section. Another, I went to three sections and they can't find me on the list. And yet I was on the list and I registered and I did all that stuff and had the checks done and da, da, da. And, and, and today I am no, I do not exist in Barbados. <laughs> Most no, amazing. Are you hearing this? Uh, Mr. Hinn, <laughs> Selma Gearwood, Wayne, Wayne Hoyt, Mr. Hoyt, did you hear what Philip Springer said a while ago um prophetess heather scantlebury welcome 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 did you hear what he just said that he was not he's not on the list i don't know if they're hearing you yes yeah, sorry we had a disturbance um outside no, okay. you were not on the list, guys. And, and I was you not allowed to vote today, Marcia. I did not get to vote. I did not get to vote. But people are voting for me because I I had a, a chat. At, I had I was at a number of polling stations, and I was able to ask people, and they do recognize my name, and they do recognize. I I didn't ask them who they voted for or anything, but. I, I, I recognize because I didn't get to see the ballots myself, but um, people have told me today that they voted for me, right? So, and so find, you're telling me you did not get to vote today? I did not get to cast a vote today. Um, um, so, someone is saying here, um, Mr. Hoyt, I, I like to bring them in, uh, my, my people. These are my people. These viewers, they're here every night. Uh, Mr. Hoyt is saying this is an issue for some people. I didn't realize that it was so, it's a widespread thing. Yeah, yeah. There are a lot of people that did not, that were turned away. Uh, those lists were supposed to, see, the, the problem with, and part of my application was not, that, you know, I'm hearing stuff that, oh, I'm trying to cancel the one. I never said that. I said, let's do it right. Let us not disenfranchise people. I got disenfranchised today. I was not allowed to vote, not with any reason of my own, but because the government and their 
uh, because they too were behind and they're trying to do two months work as the returning officer said to me just tonight at the at the county station before I left to come home to to do um, to do your show we had to do two months work in two weeks yes he said that to me I don't want to I don't want to 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 call her name but you know I've got all this stuff diarized Marcia wow wow when I ask them how come I, they put and they still have dead people on the roads even though they try to police they told they, I one person admitted to me they still have about a thousand dead people on the road oh my goodness let, let me bring in um Apostle Scantiberry in um you know because uh, I, I, I'm still reeling at that. You know, it's ironic. You are trying to ensure that people, everybody got the chat, the right to vote. This is Mr. Philip Springer who brought the injunction against um, the, the election. And he went and could not vote today because his name that was on the list two weeks ago is no, was no longer on the list today. And th this is the kind of things that we are dealing with here in Barbados. So let me see um, if Apostle Scantiber, who is part of your uh, part of the coalition, um, yes. he will be coming in um, at this moment. Good night, Apostle. Good night, ma'am. Ah, lovely, wonderful, wonderful. It's Hi, so good to have you again to see. I wish your lovely wife was able to come on as well. But we've gotten so many comments um, since you've been on. Um, you know, people have gone and watched and rewatched that show. And okay. so, it's so it's so good and, and um, to, to have you on tonight. How are you doing? I'm doing absolutely well, ma'am. And thank you so much. And uh, Reverend Spray, it's good to see you as well. Good to see you, my brother. Yes, sir. <laughs> and it's the first time we're sharing a screen together. So let's let's do it good. <laughs> okay. <laughs> well, I, I, you know, Apostle, I call Apostle Scantberg, I call, I call him the people's hero because he stood oh up for goodness. the people who could not vote uh, while he didn't get to vote today but he stood up for those people what are your thoughts uh, imagine that apostle i went to fight for the people i wasn't by the way let us get something straight because i'm getting a lot of calls from people who don't understand what happened yesterday and apostle uh you are part of the action i took yesterday because i canvass every the coalition as well as 11 uh civic groups were party to that action yesterday I'll explain right. that to you off the air and another time. But amazingly enough, Fossil, I went to fight for the disenfranchised, not knowing that I was being disenfranchised myself. <laughs> and today I go on to vote and can't vote. Can't find a returning officer until 6.30 tonight, which the, the polls are already closed at 6.30. When she finally got back to me. And I went okay. to the station, I was looking for her. I went to EBC, every EBC, looking for her. Can't find her, right? But they just want to bark rules at me, bark rules at my people. One of the things that they're very annoyed about is that they know who I am. So they assume that my people are radical people and they're coming into their polling stations to cause problems. And they're barking orders at my people. No cell phone. We don't want no cell phone. Very mild-mannered young people. We already know the rules. Thank you. You can tell it to us, but you don't have to talk down to us. Right? Yeah. They're, they're intimidated because I was organized. I have people, I, right now I have six people in the counting station over there behind my house, just there at um, Melrose, and with, uh, with Sharon, Moravian Church. Okay. And uh, when I'm finished, I have one more show to do after you, Marcia, and I'm going back there about 10 o'clock tonight to check on my folks, mm -hmm. you see? Because they don't want, let, let me tell you guys something, and I don't want to get to hog the show apostle. No, not at all, because I I, I know Mr. Um, apostle has a little bit of time. So give me one yeah. more minute and then I've yeah. got to go right over to him. Yeah, let me tell you guys something that I saw today. Not only saw, but I heard and I have it recorded. They were handing out money at these polling uh, to get people to the polling stations today. There were people walking around in various neighborhoods with those white sheets and knocking doors and they were calling taxis and putting them on. I saw it with my own eyes and I heard it with my own ears. Trust me. I have a lot of recordings that they don't know about that were done very secretively and and i have them that's all i will say mm -hmm. with Thank that. You. wow yeah there we go again <laughs> but um, uh, um apostle scantiberry um you you voted today did you vote yes ma'am i got i have unlike our uh, reverend spray i have the opportunity to vote today my wife and i we went over to the corrigan Parish school and uh i i put the x next to my own name so i'm excited about that <laughs> <laughs> oh, how did that feel? How did that feel to do uh, that? 
Well, you know, this is my third time here in St. Peter, mm-hmm. and uh, felt uh, uh, you know awesome each time that I've done it. You know, I know it was a vote for change, so uh, very very excited about you know being able to be a part of the process for change in Barbados going forward. Yes, right. yes, and you know, Apostle, I just you said it, this is your third time, and I just want yes, to um, want to commend you, Pastor Paul, and myself. You know, the, he brought it up was talking about those Christians who stepped out um, yes, before. Ma'am. So you you even stepped out before um, Solutions Be- Barbados. Yeah, before you know, anyone. T- tell before me about anyone that. Else. Tell uh, me well, about you know, that. As I shared with you about the vision that I had, so I was I was really. Uh, just obeying the Lord uh, going forward to begin the process of um, encouraging other believers to be a part of the process. And as the vision that I had said that a complete change in government was approaching and it was time for the church to be peer. Mm-hmm. So this really meant that God wanted this nation to come on a Christian government. And mm-hmm. so uh, I, I started the process and even here in St. Peter was going up against uh, Mr. Arthur, uh, you know, when he was around. Um, and you know, it was that first step, you know, to bring about the change, and then against Colin Jordan, who was obviously protege of um, Mr. Arthur, um, and then going up against what would what would have been titans, you know, political titans uh, yes. here in Saint Peter. Um, yes. But um, the the last election, which was 2018, to see so many uh, other parties and other believers stepped out to be a part of the process. Uh, the political process here in Barbados, um, that was a victory for me mm-hmm. um, to see so many of them say, listen, let's let's get up and do something. Let's stop the switching from B to D and D to B. Uh, let's, let's do something to bring that to an end. And mm-hmm. I'll tell you, the only way that Barbadians will actually get to see a future is when we actually bring that to a closure, when we've put both the Democratic Labour Party and the Barbados Labour Party behind us that's the only time that we're going to see what our future should really right. look like. Mm-hmm. Wow. And, you know, I, again, you know, sometimes we, we, we look at, you know, right now we had, I think probably about 30% of the, um, the total candidates, um, in, in, you know, were, were people of faith, you know, yes, and, and, and there was a time when, when it was, it wasn't a lot and you were there and, and the pastors were telling you, you should not be there. You shouldn't do yeah. this. You know, yes. as a uh, pastor Paul, which I'm going to bring him in back in here soon. Um, you know, he, he he was saying, you know, the church we we we, we shun you guys, we shun yeah. you guys, mm-hmm. didn't we? And and say, what yeah. are they doing in politics? You know, what they, yeah. what they, you know, what 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 is what is that all about? Well, what what I want to say here is that what the church in Barbados has done for a long time is that we we have this idea that if we support those who are in politics, they would help the church become mm-hmm. better you know they mm-hmm. but the reality for me is if god has given me a vision i don't need a government to help me fulfill god's vision mm-hmm. um if, if whatever god wants to do he was he will provide for it and what mm-hmm. we had is uh this this try to create this friendly relationship with the political element uh in our nation when in reality the church is supposed to be ruling the nation mm-hmm. um and so again as i said the whole concept of the word uh, politician comes from a Greek word politique and it means a chief citizen okay mm-hmm. and a lot of the people that we elect in government aren't chief citizens at all mm-hmm. uh, not, not many of them have done basically nothing to impact their own communities but mm-hmm. because we have the wrong picture of what the political process is all about and we don't read our bibles properly to see the men of god in the word of god that were politicians in their day mm-hmm. you know and so we have this evolution where we ended up having churches and church leaders that love certain parties and love certain leaders and love certain politicians more mm-hmm. than they love the word of god and love the kingdom of god that we mm-hmm. allowed ourselves to fall prey to the same old uh system of you know b and d and just hoping that they will do things to help the church i'm not a part of that i think the time has come for Barbados to have a Christian government. I think the time has come to literally put these two parties behind us. Uh, this last administration has shown that they're very serious about mo- removing God. They're, they're not interested in God. They're, they're, mm-hmm. they're not about the church for sure. You know, they give over 500 persons to be at a fete. Only 25 can be at a church. It's ridiculous. And so 
Uh, I think right now what we have done, especially in this election, is that, uh, and I know the people of Barbados are going to make a decisive decision. This last election here was about the battle between good and evil, and mm -hmm. uh, good has to win. And the, the body of Christ and men of God in our nation, the women of God in our nation, must stand up and begin to really talk to our people about the political process and and tell them get involved in it and, and not stay back and criticize those of us who are, are hearing from God and know what God wants for our nation. We've got to stop them from being so anti, um, you know, those of us who have stepped up uh, to become the forerunners of, of what's happening. And the reality is that uh, unless we have a nation that is here, a government rather, that's hearing from God, um, then our people are not going to hear from God unless we have a government mm -hmm. that is going to do what Barbados, uh, what needs to be done in Barbados as far as his will is concerned. We're never going to see God's will. doesn't matter how much we pray. doesn't matter how much we fast. We always need somebody to throw a stone at Goliath. That's how the system works. We need somebody mm -hmm. to go down into Egypt and tell Pharaoh, let my people go. All we, need right. somebody, yeah. we need somebody to speak a word over Jezebel, well, we need somebody that is going to go over the promise of uh, the Jordan to our people, to the promised land, and root the enemy out. That's what we need. And mm -hmm. until we get back to that type of Christianity, instead of just having this, this weak, feeble, shut up, you know, withdrawal, going to the corner, just talk, but not actually act. Until we get rid of that kind of Christianity in Barbados, we're not really going to see a lot happen within the kingdom of God and within the body of Christ. So, you know, I'm here to be a part of that process and um, I'm going to stand my ground. So I'm here the third time and, um, you know, uh, I, I, I'm not into failure. So, you know, that's why I'm here to make sure that the people have an alternative to what they've been custom doing. And even here in St. Peter, we had delays for over two hours. You know, people who went to the polling stations from six, uh, you know, six, six thirty and never left there until after eight, after nine, uh, close to 10, because these people are again interfering with our political process. They're tampering with things. They're sabotaging the whole uh, aspect of it. You saw it there with um, Reverend Springer. And, and this is not the type of system that we need after becoming a republic. They talked about the system being fear, and we realized that the system just is not fear. So the whole political process in Barbados needs to be revamped. We need to reassess it. And we need to make sure that we have free and fair elections in Barbados going forward. But the time has come to put these two parties behind us for good. And if uh, the church, the body of Christ came out and did what they had to do, we will see that. And great will be our rejoicing come the 20th of January. Mm, interesting, interesting. <laughs> um, you know, I, I I want to to ask you. I know you you have a, a, a lot going on. Well, all of you very busy, um, but I want to ask you this final question. And you can keep that link, sir. And as you you we're up until midnight, so I want you to you know come right back on the same thing with Philip. Okay. You can come right back on any Pastor Paul. Um, you can go off and come back on because we're here. Come and keep our company, <laughs> and let's talk. This is our place. Yes, we can. We can. We can have a good, um, yes, good chat. Yes, so let me let me ask you something. Um, and I I know give me the short version because I know when you come back you're gonna give me a long version. Bring your wife for me when you're coming back. Listen, you. Okay, you, we'll do. We, <laughs> we want to talk. I, I want to ask you about Barbados. Barbados yes, beyond this election. Barbados beyond okay. this election. Um, just give me the short version and let me go to uh, Reverend Springer um, afterwards. So okay. Barbados short, beyond this uh, election. Let me, let me, Reverend Paul, it's good to see you, sir. Same here, my brother. <laughs> okay. All right. Um, here's the reality. If what I've prayed and asked the Lord for happens, we're going to see a new government in Barbados come tonight into tomorrow. Yes. That means we're going to have more individuals that are going to be more open to what God wants to do, which means that we're going to see a different kind of government. We're going to see more changes taking place in our nation that really needs to take place. 
if the people do what they did in 2018 and put uh, the Barbados Labour Party back into office, we're going to see more austere measures. We're going to see more attempts on the church. We're going to see uh, the process of COVID being maintained. We're going to see more lack, more poverty, more hurt, more disrespect. Okay. Yeah. We're going to see a, a country that is going to lose tremendous divine presence because we have to understand that in a nation, God looks at two people. He looks at the leader of the nation and he looks at his man or woman in that nation. Or if there's not a leading man or woman in that nation, he looks at the church. Mm -hmm, now, mm -hmm. if the leader of that nation does something that God does not want, it is the church's responsibility to go and warn that person and let mm -hmm. them know that it was God that put them there and God can remove them. God mm -hmm. intervenes in the affairs of men. Okay. Mm -hmm. Now, the other element is that if the leader does something and the church does not respond in the realm of the demonic, that is a yes to that person and they will go a step further. What mm -hmm. we have to present in Barbados is that movement forward, that progression to make in Barbados a godless society. And I'm hoping that come tomorrow, we have a different kind of government that can move these people out of their place so that we can have the right men and the right women of God in position to block what the satanic realm wants to do with this nation. So long story short, if we have a change in our governmental process on tomorrow, then the supernatural realm over this island will change and God will get to do what he has to do. If we go back to the same regime, we go back to the same old, same old, we're going to get the same results. Is what the old folk used to say. Um, you cannot plant the same seed and expect to get a different crop so mm -hmm. this is what uh we have to look forward to we have a major change in government which we've prayed for and we've asked god for across these 30 constituencies we're going to see god at his best to bring our nation out of all the holes that we found ourselves in but if we go back to the same system it's going to be harder so that's the position we're in but we're believing for god's man god's women in this election to come out on top so that we can move forward with the, the plan of the kingdom of God for Barbados. Mm, awesome, 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 um, Apostle. And I know I, I just, I just, we, we, you pop in and you, you, you pop in, popping out and, and you'll be back. I'm hope, hoping you'll be back and, you know, we can, we can chat um, much yes, longer. Yes, but thank you. Thank you so much for coming on tonight. Yes, ma'am. Look forward um, to that. God bless you. And, and we're looking, we're looking forward to hearing hearing when when we're hearing from you later <laughs> all right yep St. Nice. peter's a place where everybody has their eyes on this is a place yeah. where everybody everybody's watching st peter is the hot spot in this election it is <laughs> it is it is it is it is it is it's the hot spot let, yes ma'am <laughs> yes let me hear from uh mr springer um so mr springer um yes. you know, what 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 i know you're rushing to another program as well Sorry, right. no, you can always pop back in here, of course. Of course, <laughs> but yes. tell me, tell me um, again the short version of Barbados beyond this election. Uh, I, it's I, think the process, I, I would have to pick his words because he speaks exactly what I see and what I feel. And we don't compare those, we, we don't even communicate, we've communicated only once before this. But when I see him speak, and I've watched him before. He, he says what is in my spirit, and I see it, and I know what he's saying. This is the time that the change has to be made. If it is not made, the pain and suffering that we're in for is going to be over the top. You know, today they actually, um, today they made 5G official in the world. Everywhere in the world, 5G is now legally official as of noon today. These are some inferior people trying to lord over other people. They're not gods. And because they're not gods, we've already had 5G. We got probably 100G through the almighty God. Mm -hmm. It's called the tentacles on your, on your body and the hair on your head. Even the little fibers in your ear can be sensitive sometimes. Think about that. You don't need no 
5G for that. But you got a bunch of men who <clears throat> think they belong to some old boys club and they um, want to have this superior power over the rest of us. So they have to in, in, invent these little machines <laughs> and use them to exploit people. They have to come and give you a job to tell you that uh, it, it's going to cure some disease that they created, some sickness that they, in order to put it in you when they're hiding the ult, the ultimate uh, reasoning for doing what they're doing. Now, I'm not I'm, I'm not going to get a, the, the COVID conspiracy thing of this stuff. But we must be honest and we must speak truth to fact. And the fact is, this is created. COVID has been around longer than I've been alive. All of us on this show, right? It's nothing new. I have enough history and enough research on this thing uh, that I, I, I'm very well aware, but it's been tampered with and it has been deliberately tampered with to cause the effect of what we're going through today. These little weak people are scared and so therefore they have to create an inferior circumstance in order for them to feel superior. And that is exactly what's going on. And the longer we give them the power over us, the more damage they will do to, to the kingdom of God. And we need to stop that. We need to, to remind and, them. And that so we are as, as it relates to Barbados, um, you know, beyond the election, you're, you're saying that we're going to have to be dealing with um, all of these um, these things that we were, we were, you know, encroaching on on the nation, for example, the Absolutely. 5G and and okay, the technology, um, etc. But it's not just technology, morality. Mm -hmm. That's the biggest. That's the biggest issue that that we're gonna have to face. Mm -hmm. You know, corruption. You know, uh, the corruption of the church, the corruption of society, mm -hmm. right? You know, our children's minds. They've sent the children home for the last two years. Why? The children are no longer interacting with each other. If you read my lawsuit yesterday, you'll see that we put in there the issue of the children, the interruption in the, in the educational system, the economic um, uh, interruption or disadvantage, which is going to make people vulnerable because if you have no income, you have no job, you have to bend to their will. To, to achieve and that's how they're applying this thing and we have a bunch of people who are godless running this place and we have too long stepped away i'm tired of hearing christian people say that oh um i'm in the world but i'm not of the world and i'm i, I don't vote because i don't belong in it no that's nonsense mm -hmm. when, when i pinch you if you if you if you hurt you're in the world and you are of the world we are in this world. Stop mm -hmm. abdicating. Stop giving away your rights. Let mm -hmm. us take it back. As Apostle said earlier, the man and woman of God were the representatives and God appoints a king or a queen or, or, or a prime minister for that matter of fact. Mm -hmm. However, we sit back and we say it's okay. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And we almost want to support those people who do not have the same agenda, but yet when we know see our own what well, the first thing we want to do is cut that person down and tell them they're no good and da, 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 da. Mm -hmm. the apostle is 100 percent correct mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. wow you know um mr springer i just want to want to say to you that you you um you are such a uh you're you're a fighter you're a fighter I am. I am. And, you have and, to. yes you have to and, I know. from birth i had yes. to my yes. mother was 15 years old when she became pregnant for my father. Yes. So I was taken to the abortionist three times. My mother was taken three times to have me aborted and it never worked. Mm -hmm. It didn't work then and it ain't going to work now. It doesn't matter what anybody tried to do to me. I've had more situations thrown at me in this lifetime than most people will ever think like. Up to two days ago when I smacked that, I should have, from all indication, I'm going to send you pictures. I haven't even sent you the pictures yet of that accident. Mm -hmm. well, let, me, let me just tell the people what what happened um you know uh, pastor paul um, yes, yes um uh, philip springer um is the the candidate who brought the injunction um you know against the, the, this election okay. and actually when he picked up the papers and was on the way to the high court to deliver the paper to present the papers 
um, he met in a, in a in a head-on collision. Wow! You know, and his his BMW was was written off, and the co other car was written off. The good thing about it, show them your hand. Um, all he had was the, the hand. Um, his hand um, is now bandaged, yeah. and you know, so that that is what happened. And Mr. Springer. Um, that's I got this bling here, but I took it off because I, I, I didn't want to impose on the show, but, but my arm is feeling much better today, Marcia. Yes, I can that's see you. Sure. You're, three days you're I'm it. And you know yeah. what? The thing about it is that he left from the the accident scene and went straight um to the to the to the high court. He did, Wow, he that's goes, awesome. Yeah, that's so awesome. determined, so determined yeah. to do that. Then to turn up today to vote, having seen and known his his name was on the list. Two weeks ago, he went to vote today, and his name was not on the list today. That's and just so ironic. Isn't it ironic? What, what are your make, thoughts on that, Pastor Paul? I cannot, I cannot make that stuff up. Trust me. I could not make that up if, if I was the best liar on the earth. But I had yeah. witnesses to prove that I was not. Well, I, I'm, I'm, very, I'm, I'm very curious about that, as well as the amount of people who we have heard that have fallen into similar circumstances of not being able to vote because yeah. their names were on the list. Yes, um, I think that is extremely unfortunate. Of course, we are aware that this was sudden, unexpected, and rushed in terms of the calling of this election, and yes. no consideration was given to the Electoral and Boundaries Commission to be able to get itself together. Now, if you have a government that is confident, having been in office nearly three years, and have another 18 months or so to to rally out you have the cover of a, a pandemic you can excuse anything under the pandemic you have the cover of the last administration which most Barbados believe failed given the way they voted you, you have two excellent means of covering any uh shortfalls in your programming and governance what was the need to then put the country into an election in three weeks? Mm -hmm. Something is terribly wrong. Mm -hmm. That does not exude confidence whatsoever. Mm -hmm. And we, we smell a rat because you're also seeing that there has been some significant defections from, from the party. Mm -hmm. uh, when, when five of your important ministers here they will not run for election again. Mm -hmm. and then some of your critical people who were uh, instrumental in getting you into governance defects to the other side. It's not a matter of just resigning, but defect to the other side Yes. to help the other side defeat you. That is a, those are telling, telling signs. So I, I think that Mr. Springer's situation needs to be investigated the high court may not have countenance his suit and given any um any, any any ventilation to the issue however i think that as we are talking about beyond the election these mm -hmm. things need to be investigated mm -hmm. because it can happen again mm -hmm. I, I like what the app proposed that there will be a fixed date for yeah. election absolutely correct so that there, it's not at the whim and fancy of a government and we are not tossed about like rag dolls here in the mm -hmm. middle of christmas celebration that people were glad to be able to get some reprieve mm -hmm. the economy is opening up because we have granted uh, uh the tourists to arrive again visitors to the island mm -hmm. businesses are trying to to, to recover in the best season of, of, of the economic uh, um, operations. Mm -hmm. And then in the midst of that, you throw the country into elections. And all of us know that January is the recovery period in Barbados. Everybody's trying to recover for one reason or another. Mm -hmm. And to do that, with no consideration to the the people no consideration to the 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 possibility of infection 
no poss possible no consideration to uh your own candidates your own candidates mm -hmm. because they're scram they were scrambling too mm -hmm. uh no manifesto the manifesto wasn't ready on the announcement uh so for all of those reasons there is need at least for some review of what happened why it happened how it happened mm -hmm. there are outstanding um issues with the electoral and boundaries commission there are some constituencies that are have gone beyond the political mandate yes that needs to be properly realigned that has been outstanding for years particularly in saint philip mm. because you have a massive movement of people because of the housing uh development in saint philip yes. and when you have people moving uh, uh in, in that respect you can have more constituents in that community than is allowed mm -hmm. by law Correct. so uh, mm -hmm. all of these uh the, the way how constituencies have been uh drawn up the way how the boundaries have been set mm -hmm. there may be need for readjustment given the development of the past 20 25 years so mm -hmm. if the, the, the electoral boundaries commission has not even sorted out their own stuff and then you go and throw this into the pot you are certainly giving a recipe for disaster and mm -hmm. mr philip springer is a classic uh symbol right now of, mm -hmm. of, of what has happened and i think we can it's only fair that the matter is investigated and looked into without Correct. presupposing that there was any malfeasance or any mal intent towards him particularly mm -hmm. but the fact that a person who was on the list and brought suit to represent people mm -hmm. is suddenly not on the list that that doesn't uh that doesn't have a good picture of fairness it it, it, it it smacks of of retaliatory uh behavior mm -hmm. uh I, I mean that how do you feel that you're trying to represent the entire nation like you said earlier mr springer and then you're not even being representing yourself i <laughs> want to make one more one more observation I, not to cut you but i want to add one more thing uh, in the accounting office when i attended the accounting office to have my uh my uh, scrutineers uh assigned tonight i noticed that this misspelled my last name again they actually put an i in my last name C A I T L Y N, and that's not my, my last name. C A T L Y N. Mm -hmm. And yeah. did you had correct it before? How? Listen, when they do that, they have you have to bring your documents in. Ah. Yes? So the documents they had in their hands. How did they get an I in there all of a sudden? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Notice another strange thing was pointed out to me. They have never published a picture of my face. There's certain candidates that they've never published their face. They always put a black a black a picture a completely blacked out picture of certain candidates and i'm one of those i was in the electoral and boundaries commission this afternoon and i saw them with the map and my face is blacked out and i said how come that up to this day i've brought pictures i've had pictures taken professionally i brought pictures you guys have taken tons of pictures. i never ever had my picture published on any of the, the, mm -hmm. the public mm -hmm. how is that it's always a black spot black spot you know, oh, Mr. Yeah. Mr. Springer, I call you, I call you the people's hero. You <laughs> were fighting for those um, COVID-19 infected persons who could not vote. Um, you know, ironically, yeah. you didn't get the chance to vote today. But I just want to say to you on behalf of Barbadians, thank you, sir. Thank you. And I wish you all the success tonight. Um, I really do. And, um, you know, I'm, uh, we're here. You have the link. This is home. You know, when you're finished yes. the other show, yes. you can always jump on here. This is home. All right. Absolutely. So we will do just that. Yes. Thank Pastor you so much Paul, for being it's a here. Pleasure to, to meet you. I've seen you before as well, but we've not had an opportunity to. Well, exchange. my picture wasn't was blacked out. You were able to see me. No, it was not. That's how <laughs> come I'm going to leave. <laughs> well, anyway. You know, you know the, but look at it. We're, this is our place. We come together. Now oh, I yeah. have I have in the studio um, with me, and the Pastor Paul is staying with me. But I know Philip is going and coming back. 
Um, but um, so thank you so much, Philip, for uh, being here. Um, but I also have with me um, Miss Maxine McLean. Oh dear. And yes, Miss Max Maxine McLean, a, a very good friend of ours, and um, you know, um, from the Democratic Labour Party. She is, uh, um, you know, a former Minister of Government, Miss Minister of Foreign Affairs, and also um, a, a um, Senator. And so we are we are very very grateful that she's here. She too has a a short time with us. And after coming up after her is Miss um, Heather Cole, um, who also served um, in government um, as well, um, is going to be with us um, here um, in the studio. So you know, um, a pass the ball. You know, you know this is a long one, so you you can you can let me know if you want to come and go. <laughs> I'm good so far. Okay, wonderful. It's a joy. It, it's a pleasure having you here, and you have so much to say. So Thank I'm you. I'm really happy that you're here. And um, Dave, I know is working on you know making sure that we have the, that link with CBC and and Starcom. He told me so. He's watching. We haven't had any movement with the any boxes yet. So guys, know that we're going to be giving you some feed from CBC and Starcom as well as the night goes on so um you know but there's not much but I, I know counting agents i'm getting getting information that some of them haven't even gone into the building yet so um in at this particular constituency um so i i don't know i don't know when when it's going to happen but i'm sure it will happen tonight so let me just without any further ado welcome my very good friend <laughs> <laughs> Uh, Maxine McLean, Miss Maxine McLean, it's good to have you here tonight. Thank you, my friend. How are you doing? And Pastor Paul, how are you? Oh, I'm very well, ma'am. How are you? I'm doing well, thanks. Excellent. Um. <laughs> good, good to see you. You look lovely. You look lovely as usual. Glasses. Yeah, yeah. I love the glasses. <laughs> Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. And you have a big smile on your face. And what what's what what's going on in your? You, you went to vote today, I'm sure. Of course, of course. I will never miss an opportunity to vote. You know the whole history of of de developing or uh, securing the right to vote for our people over, you know, decades ago. So I think it's an important exercise that we all should participate in. So I did. Mm -hmm. Yes, yes. And and how was that experience for you at the polling station? Uh, it took me about an hour and a half. I went to, I went to, I had to vote at Queen's College and I, for some reason, well, I guess it's the number of um, names allocated to the box. Um, I had about an hour and a half wait from a brown just after nine o'clock, mm -hmm. uh, you know, but I waited patiently. It wasn't, you know, you wait an hour and a half for other things and in other places. So, um, you know. Uh, you you take that, this right to vote like, very very seriously, right? Yes, I, I very much so, very much so. Mm -hmm. If you if you don't vote, then you you have I think you've surrendered your right to comment on what happens after. After there you go. Can yeah. you say that one more time? <laughs> I say if you don't vote, you almost you you basically surrender your right to comment after because even though you may vote and what you want may not materialize, you have participated. Um, mm -hmm. In in the in uh, in what is a very serious exercise for any country. If you, mm -hmm. um, I, I am only today. I after I I came home and I I had to do a program um, with some folks in the African diaspora this evening. And after that, I contacted a friend to discover that he. I'm not sure what the situation is with his wife. He was unable to vote because he contracted COVID, and and clearly he was very disappointed. Mm -hmm. You know, so I think I think people um, see it as as an important aspect of of our lives and 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 the government of our country. So, you know, it it was devastating for some people. I must say. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, I'm I'm hearing here um uh, in the comment section that they have just started um, counting. Um, mm -hmm. They've just started the counting, um, but Miss McLean, what before we go into um, go a little deeper, I wanna I want you to tell me your thoughts on the thousands of people who could not vote today. 
Um, do you think that um, preparations could be made as was done in the Bahamas and Jamaica and in mm -hmm. some of the other um, countries in the world? Um, you know, do you think that preparations should have been made for those who could not, um, those who contracted the virus? Certainly, and I, as as you pointed out, and I, I will I will start from where where you you pretty much left off the point that we don't have to go very far to see that people in um, in the region and very recently were able to to participate in in elections in their countries Jamaica and so on, and preparations were made. The decision mm -hmm. to have an election in Barbados, and I think. Um, while I was listening to you, I was also listening to one of the, the, um, the co CBC coverage mm -hmm. and people, people expected an early election in Barbados. There, there was talk for the last, since last year that, that we would have elections prior to the, the, you know, the, the time 2023. Mm -hmm. um, so in essence, people anticipated an early election. Mm -hmm. Now, if people are anticipating that, and, and even if even if you, you did not have plans for an early election and they were going to be scheduled at the time, there is a process of preparation that takes place. Mm -hmm. um, and I, I remember I was I was on a, on, a, on a radio program on Sunday and I made this point that I have been around long enough to know and hear what um, Prime Ministers, and I say Prime Ministers because the decision to have an election is the, the decision of the Prime Minister of the country. We do not have fixed dates, clearly, if we have, as you would see in our situation right now. Mm -hmm. And that decision is usually um, that of the Prime Minister. I remember making the point that I, I once heard a Prime Minister say that he will have a conversation with himself as mm -hmm. to when we would have the election. But I can yeah. tell you that prior or while he was having that conversation and his his colleagues um, either before or after him, they would they would basically engage um, in in a dialogue with the mm -hmm. um, the electoral and boundaries commission to establish the extent of readiness. So, in other words, they you the prime minister would not say to the ECB. Let me use the abbreviation. Mm -hmm. um, that you know a, a particular day, but they will ascertain the readiness, mm -hmm. and therefore um, there are two things there that that concern me. One, the extent to which it was established that the 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 electoral and boundaries commission um, and its staff were in a position to conduct the election, and mm -hmm. two, in in looking at a date, was there any consideration given by the prime minister when she made a decision about the, the, the handling of persons um, who were COVID positive because it is it is a we're in a pandemic we're in an unusual situation. The second element of that as well, I would have anticipated that in terms of of proper preparation uh, because as we can see this pandemic is going nowhere quickly so in, in any hurry. You are being told that we have to we're going to have to live with it, and so. I would have expected that the commission um, would have engaged in a discussion with its staff as to how do we prepare for such an eventuality mm. that given the fact that elections are due the outer limit in 2023 mm. and this pandemic has gone from 2000 at the end of 2000 2001 and we are into 2002 now um the, the likelihood of us having to deal with an election during, um, you know, some serious outbreak of COVID is real, and how do we manage that? So, and the, all that I've said, I'm, I am expect, I would have expected the two parties, the commission and the prime minister, as she spoke to herself, um, that that be factored in. Of course, I will, I will end with this point that perhaps the question that has not been answered, certainly for me, was why an election with basically three weeks notice because it's 22, 23 days or whatever it was. We were told on the 27th of December, um, you know, other than some people saying the notion of surprise, well, for, for the Democratic Labour Party, it was not a surprise in terms of gotcha, you're not ready. Um, so there were other suggestions that perhaps um, circumstances required the Prime Minister to call elections, and I can expand on that if you want me to expand on 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 that mm -hmm. notion that was out there in the mm -hmm. public space.
that why, why you think that why you think that that it was called um i'm seeing here um that um alex mitchell is saying that the cuthbert pilgrim memorial hall that they're doing their the, um, the, the the count there and that he's saying he's hearing that the first box has only 52 votes um you know uh, i i, I want to talk about the, the voter turnout um our our um our polling station, you know, it was really not a lot of people were there. I don't know if they went early. You know, I went like after 11 o'clock, you know. Uh, but you had a lot of people at your polling station there at Queen's College, right? Well, I, I wouldn't say, I would say we had a line for the box I was in at the time I was there. Mm -hmm. um, but at the end of, of polling this evening, I was listening to the 7 o'clock news on CBC and Mr. Peter Wickham, who obviously is a, a you know a, a consultant in 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 this area, um, he is often called upon to comment, and he was commenting about a projected low turnout. I, I heard him on multiple occasions speak mm -hmm. to the possibility of a low turnout, so that may very well have been the case. There was a news item which I caught the tail end of on on CBC News this afternoon about one. And they were interviewing the prime minister as she exited. The, she was, you know, in the, the precincts of the of the polling station, having having gone to cast her vote. And mm -hmm. while I I didn't quite hear all, I got the impression that there was some concern about turnout. Um, so, I, the, you mentioned a box. I I you you need to know what was the size of that box, which constituency it was in, because mm -hmm. the fifty two votes by itself. That you just referred to, I think Mr. Mitchell, I think was the person mm -hmm. who shared that. The 52 votes by themselves don't tell you too much because it may be a small box. In box. I, I, exactly. so you know yeah. Well, we're going, to, we're going to wait to get it. We're going to bring in that um, kind of information, that right? Mm -hmm. and Starcom and get some more um, right. information mm -hmm. um, uh, uh, about that. But um, you know, uh, can you talk to us about? You said the Democratic Party. Labour Party that they were not um, they were they were they weren't caught off guard in, in your in your mind you believe that they were they were prepared well they were preparing um, for some time I can tell you that for the last two years at the level of um, policy making which would inform a manifesto the president would have had her advisory team normally having having participated in an, an exercise like that on two occasions in for the 2008 election and the 2013 where i was involved in preparations which would have fed into the manifesto mm -hmm. um you quietly establish a team um in this in this barbados <laughs> mm -hmm. you you have to you have to keep things confidential and so on you, you know you in barbados um, as a small society, you, you get ahead, you have your advisors um, mm -hmm. for all kinds of reasons. Some persons, based on their position of employment, people may be working in the private sector, mm -hmm. they may be running their own businesses. And some, you know, some people, because we're the smallest of it, if you, if you quote unquote declare your hand as in such a position, it can be mm -hmm. problematic. But beyond that, it's a confidential process. So mm -hmm. I can tell you that for some time, um, they would have been, the team would have been working. Um, I know that candidates declared and not declared in the sense that because there's a very structured process through which the Democratic Labour Party goes about selecting candidates. Um, people would have been in the field. Some people would not have been able to state early um, that they were they, they were intending to run because given the nature of their jobs, they either would have had to resign or whatever the case may be. So it isn't a case of, uh, well, I think the, the shortness of time is, and, and, and the environment in which it was called mm -hmm. would have been a bit of a surprise mm -hmm. to the extent that you would not, you would have thought that given all the, the um, information available on the, the trends in relation to the pandemic, et cetera, mm -hmm. that that might have influenced the decision. Mm -hmm. But I, I wouldn't say that, I mean, there was a notion that parties were caught off guard. That certainly did not apply to the Democratic Labour Party. In fact, quite ironically, um, as you, I reflect and, and as you would reflect probably on the timing of the announcement and the actions that flowed from that in relation to the party in power at the time, the, um, the, the Barbados Labour Party, the government, 
uh, they did not seem to have all their candidates in place either. I think a decision was made on who would run in the city, for example, hmm. after the announcement was made. So, so it makes me, it takes me back to the question of what propelled the prime minister to call the election when she mm -hmm. did. Now, there are two things there. What, what, what do you think? What do you think that um, is okay. the reason for okay. that? And I'm gonna, I'm gonna bring Miss Miss. Um, Heather Cole in, um, in, into the studio as well, and she can um, also jump in uh, on that. Um, okay. Yes. Okay, if you want me, I'll, I'll continue. Um, yes. You ask me what do I think. There, there, yes. there are a couple of signs that make me wonder. One, um, we were not given, we, we heard some kinds of explanations which really and truly um, did not give us a, a, a solid explanation. Now, the second thing is, the, the 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 timing of it, um, the, you know, having called the election on the twenty seventh. Um, now there were rumors, of, um, you know, around the country that there seemed to have been some dissent in the in the prime minister's camp. Mm -hmm. Now that I remember that discussion, and when the election was called, it sent me to my constitution, mm -hmm. um, and the constitution speaks to the issue of a, a situation where a majority of the government signals to, in the constitution, Governor Jaron, but now we have a president. Um, so to the president, mm -hmm. we have no confidence um, in the sitting prime minister. And if that is the case, the prime minister would be notified of that uh, that concern, that that communication and according to the constitution within three days the prime minister has to make a decision and that decision would be to resign and be replaced or to dissolve parliament and call an election now so that is one scenario that the, the suddenness <coughs> on quote of it was a reflection of maybe something like that the actual date of calling because even though you have if that were the case, and as I said, I'm just basing that on a supposition, um, looking at the facts that unfolded, um, mm -hmm. number 27, particularly after you heard the, the, the Christmas message of the prime minister, um, mm -hmm. which did not give any such signal. Um, so if, if that is what happened on the 27th, no, she, she would have been required within three days to act, mm -hmm. but it, she has the, 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 within her purview, to determine how much time you have before an election. So it mm -hmm. could have been three weeks, a month, 90 days, you know, or whatever. Um, but it was very short. It clearly was a snap election. Mm -hmm. um, the question is, what was the trigger and what flexibility did the prime minister have? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Interesting. Uh, Miss Cole, well, um, welcome, welcome, welcome. And Ms. Thank Cole you. Yes, is a senior um, budget um, um, analyst, um, and she works in New York, and was on our show um, and did a, a brilliant job of breaking down the the Barbados Labour Party's um, manifesto. And we've gotten so many um, responses about that, Miss Cole. So I'm really, really happy to to have you here um, with um, Maxine McLean from the the DLP Democratic Labour Party. So. Um, what are your what are your thoughts about um, you know this this um, the the calling of the election so sudden here we are having people's names not on the list and a lot of things are happening. What what are your thoughts about that? You heard Miss McLean. Do you agree? <laughs> I agree with Miss McLean that something had to have happened around Christmas Day, for example, because the Prime Minister seemed very pleasant in her message, and then. The next few days, she was all off, looking erratic, not sounding normal. So something had to have happened after that elect that Christmas message. Um, but my thoughts on the election, um, number one, the issue of this enfranchisement has me really bothered. I would never have imagined that something like this would unfold in Barbados. And as far as I'm aware, it has never happened before. Yes, I can see that there may be issues where person's name are not on the list, but usually there is time that is given for these minor errors to be corrected. 
but mm -hmm. since that everything had been has been in a rush mm -hmm. it has led to a lot of discrepancies and no time to fix them and you and the electoral and boundaries commission said that the list was fixed mm -hmm. and it was published and if it had been fixed and errors corrected nobody's name should have been left out so i do not know what has happened what is going on there but what it now leads me to conclude is that we need a complete review of the functions of the electoral boundaries commission that what happens with regards to different disenfranchising persons and then persons names not being on the list or having to go to multiple locations to find out where they are is that what happened in the, the um the their operations or their manual of operations in the past is no longer well it is no longer reflective of what we need for the present or going forward for the future so there must be some changes and we must also revisit the legislation to make provisions for things unseen we are in a modern era and there are probably still somewhere in the past so that can no longer be um we can no longer let that happen and mm -hmm. also i had made another note yes we do need fix we need a fixed date for an election so that no surprises are sprung on anybody in the future given one party any advantage over the other parties mm -hmm. and uh, recently i noticed uh, actually i was informed that the opposition did not get the subvention that they well that they should have had and what i would long now like to happen is that all participating parties in the election as long as they have a specific number of candidates that they mm -hmm. must share whatever subvention should be given to to the opposition so uh, so they will get funds from the pool the pool will divided we will be divided up among and if there are three or four of them or whatever because okay, you so must let, have let, let, let me interject there because i don't know if miss uh, mclean um uh, um was aware of that um i was also made aware of that that you know the the three hundred thousand okay. dollars um that was allocated as a subvention for the ruling party and for the um the opposition party that it was not it wasn't um shared it wasn't shared and that the all of it went to to the to the ruling party that's what that's what i um what i what i what i was used to understand from reliable sources well um were you privy to that information and what are your thoughts about it i i don't know if all went i know that the portion that would go to an opposition party did not happen now in in the case of of um bishop Atherley, he had made a case as as the person who ended up creating an opposition they should have received it now i can tell you that you have as it currently stands you have to have a seat in parliament now the the challenge with that though because what we saw happen in the in the last election was an anomaly but you end because we have a first past the post system you can actually find a situation where a party may end up getting more votes than the winner and maybe even not have a seat because you win by one vote you can win by one vote so you may you may have a situation for example earlier you had a, a comment about the size of some of the the constituencies in st philip one of them is about ten thousand, which is over um the a, a figure that is usually used to to realign boundaries etc so you may find yourself losing um marginally in in a in a major and a, a large constituency and maybe winning by a very small vote in a smaller one so when you add up all the votes you may find yourself still not getting but you you actually would have received the votes of a significant percentage of the voting population Mm -hmm. um, as a political party, you're still doing the, the kinds of things that you, you do. So I believe that the, the suggestion that Ms. Cole made is one that can be contemplated and, and considered, that you have active political parties and you may set certain criteria. Um, but at the end of the day, those, those parties continue to function, um, mm -hmm. you know, and, and, and if they are taxpayers' funds, because that's what it is, yes, being used yes. to support political parties 
I do not know. Um, <coughs> and, and you mentioned that all might have gone. Now, if that is the case, on what basis was that happening? Mm -hmm. Because, you mm -hmm. know, um, so, so that is an issue because what you're really saying that there's scenarios which occurred, which probably were not contemplated when you were looking at exactly. the rules to mm -hmm. govern right. um, the distribution of those funds. Mm -hmm. And yeah, I think right. that, that is something that, and, and, and I emphasize that this is public funds. And it so, is public yeah. funds, yes. yeah. And it's, it's, um, mm -hmm. it was, uh, when I, I was told by reliable sources that um, it wasn't even left back in the, in the treasury, it was all of it. Um, I was told was was used on one party. So um, hence, I mean, there is a tremendous advantage that that particular party will have over every any other party um, in Barbados, if that is really the case. If that is the case, that would be a tremendous, uh, it's like you're starting the race and you start way in the middle and everybody else at the line. Mm -hmm. Because then, you know, all you're going to be able to, and in, in, it's a pandemic, and so it's so difficult to even raise money, you know, um, at this time. So, so you know, but uh, Miss McLean, um, you, you, you guys obviously would not even qualify for any of the, um, you know, of the funds. You weren't in in the opposition. But what Mister, um, what what Miss Cole is suggesting is that. You know, it is something that is shared across across um, the board. Now, mm -hmm. um, but we saw there was something when I looked at your campaign, though, it would look as though you had a lot of money. That's what it looked on the, like on the outside. But when you say it looked like a lot of money, but <laughs> look, uh, it, it, that is relative. What I can tell you, though, is that um, some of us, for example, while while we were in office and and some of us continue on a monthly basis members of parliament when we were in office made contributions and we continue some of us continue to do that and we do get funds from companies and so i have no idea i can tell you that there would have been nothing like it but we really and truly if you look at the campaign it was not the kind <laughs> of i i would suggest you contrast the two let me put it that way yes. um because at the end of the day, we had a lot of spot meetings because there were constraints. Um, and a spot meeting just needs a microphone and the back of a truck. Mm -hmm. So you need a vehicle, you need, um, you know, um, something to amplify the sound and, and, and so on. Um, but, but if you look on the other hand, and, and yes, well, they're t-shirts, etc. cetera. Um, if, you, if you look on the other hand, you would see that there was a level of, expenditure that mm -hmm. was very very different but it's a common funding funding a campaign is a combination of, of of contributions um from from the members each each what i can tell you on an ongoing basis um especially in the case of what we were dealing with for the last three and a half years mm -hmm. it was recognized that there had to be an ongoing effort at fundraising if you were to go to a branch meeting for example of any one of our constituencies there's a there is a, 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 I would call it a, a, a routine collection of contributions. So members at meetings would, would simply make contributions to, to, to various constituencies. The constituencies in turn make some contributions to, to, to party central. Um, I think I'd use that, you know, party headquarters, et cetera. Uh, what I also would tell you that some of the changes that we would have had because of the subvention, we, we in the past would have used some of that money to pay a small staff. We mm -hmm. relied a lot on volunteers, et cetera. So I don't know that, it, well, as I said, looking at it from what occurred in the past when you had more money and, and when um, corporate Barbados was in a better position to provide support. Um, and, 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 and let me say that companies support both political parties. Uh, and, and, and well, we have multiple parties now, but traditionally both um, parties are supported by some. You may find that a company may give substantially more to one than the other um you know but but generally that is the case but i would say that in terms of the last three and a half years we have and and the use of social media yeah, yeah. Um, reduces costs significantly because if you would notice for example we had several meetings um where candidates actually sat behind a desk at headquarters mm -hmm. and would have been you know um presenting their, their, their message to the world, basically, because Barbadians mm -hmm. across the diaspora and whoever else wanted to join would have been able to do so. So the technology, in some respects, 
would have allowed for some creative kinds of ways, which may make the campaign look, in terms of the costing of, of those activities, you know, significantly more than it might have been. And volunteerism, as I said, is, is a big part of that too, given, mm -hmm. given of your time. A lot of people were, a lot, a lot of people were volu volunteering. Um, and I, I know I know that um, both of you are gonna have to gonna be out of here very, very soon. But um let me let me just ask Miss McLean, um um, you know, you are you what 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 are you expecting tonight? As um you've been in the Democratic Labour Party from oh my goodness, how many years now? Well, I, I have been a formal member since two thousand and eight. I've I grew up in a in a democratic um party household, so to speak. My dad, um, as as people say, let me say a blessed memory. My yeah. father would have been um I remember him introducing where the constituencies were less, but I remember him introducing no Sir Philip Graves to, to the constituency in Black Rock when I was a child. Um, and I, that's the household I grew up in. My brother Wendell was a member of the Democratic Labour Party and he would have left at some point and formed the NDP. So I, I grew up in a family where political involvement was real. Um, and so, you know, I've been, around, I've been around politics for decades and decades. <laughs> And and then I say around politics, and I, let me say I have followed politics. Because, followed politics, but you became but a member my, of the um, yes. 2008. So yes. you are now, you're waiting for the results um, yes. of the election, mm -hmm. um, and of this snap election. And what's what's going in your mind? Do you think that um, mm -hmm. that that we're going to, we, you know, the nation is going to be, you know, um, be surprised by some of your candidates and and how well they'll do what what are your what's going in your mind well let me let me let me say that five years not five years sorry three and a half years ago i sat in another chair representing officially representing the party and and um we saw the stunning results and i think because of that experience um not only me but people generally have been reluctant to call but in addition to that and i <coughs> i listened carefully to um persons who are very much more involved in this, you know, political scientists, um, pollsters, like I, I made mention of Peter Wickham earlier, who who does a lot of the polling. I remember my dear brother Wendell used to do a lot of that some years ago when when he was when he was alive. Um, but I noticed a reluctance to to call and I listened and I observed um, even even within before I before I, I I you know when I was preparing to come online with you. I had a chat with a couple of my colleagues and they themselves are uncertain how to to read things because recognize a couple of things. Polar turnout would have been reduced by the absence of persons who tested um, COVID positive. And let me let me say this because we have talked about the persons who tested positive, but I've been trying to get, get some sense of the extent to which other people might have been affected because recognize that if you were a primary yes. contact, you yes. would also have been put into isolation or quarantine. And Correct. if you're in quarantine, you, you cannot, and, and Heather, Heather agrees with me, you, you yes. cannot, but you, you should not, let me put it that way, have participated. So mm -hmm. while we were talking about maybe five or so mm -hmm. thousand, just imagine a scenario where for every person who tested positive, he or she came out of a household with two or three or four persons. Mm -hmm. And all of those yes. persons had to be quarantined. So we can be talking about 15,000. No. 15,000, yes. 15, it's people. about that. And if you if you look at 15,000 as a percentage of the total voter population where a, a constituency can be won or la lost by 10 votes or five or two or 20 or 100. Um, and the other question is, are they spread randomly across the the 30 constituencies or were there clusters in particular constituencies. So I think, and nobody knows who right. an individual votes for. Mm -hmm. So, so we can't say, we can't say that party A, B or, or, you know, um, or C would be affected. We mm -hmm. have to wait and see. The other thing is on top of the absence of those persons who, because of, of those constraints cannot vote, could not vote. Mm -hmm. How, willing were other persons to vote because remember there's another consideration because i remember talking to a couple of people who were 
kind of reluctant, but then, you know, they said, look, maybe I will go and I, I have to check back and see if they went or not. Mm -hmm, but mm -hmm. there was also the need to recognize that for every person who tested positive and he or she knows his or her status in talking. And I remember making this point on Sunday in, a, in another program in talking to people in the medical profession. For every person who tests positive, there may be five to ten people who do not know the status and may, may very well be COVID positive and asymptomatic. So some mm -hmm. people were saying, look, because of that possibility, I don't know if I should go and vote. Mm -hmm. um, but I, I mean, my counter to that was you, you don't know, uh, you go about your daily business and you don't know. The mm -hmm. critical thing is because you do not know, there is a need to exercise, you know, proper hygiene protocol and, and follow hygiene protocols and so mm -hmm. on, which, which I think was one of the things that had to be done. Um, so I, I, the long and short of it, and back to your question, with all of those variables, when you, when you throw all of those into the equation, it is a hard one to call. Um, it's hard to call. Top of that, our first past the post, um, you know, you can lose... Um, when Arthur once won, won, a, won an election or lost it, I, I cut, there was a back and forth by one one vote. You know, mm -hmm. um, Sybil Leacock would have won, but I think one and then they had. So, uh, uh, you know, I, that takes me back in time a little bit. But it is a difficult one. Um, mm -hmm. And so, like other people, I wait. I anticipate that we will um, see some persons elected for the first time. Mm -hmm. or return because we do have a small number of our older um former members of parliament right, returning yeah. and i must say um that i was very pleased with the with the team of young people um you know that 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 have um who have identified themselves as candidate and they have represented themselves quite well and i mm -hmm. i wish them well and i also will say to them um the many of well all of them that i saw have a good future in politics mm -hmm. and if they are serious about representing people they stay the course even if they don't win first time out first time mm -hmm. around you know and i'm glad that you mentioned the young people you know um because heather um i don't know if you're aware but um you know i saw a post um going around mm -hmm. um you know saying that the 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 um the leader of the Barbados Labour Party was, was you know poking fun at these these young people and trying to you know saying she, she can't imagine that they see them walking up the steps you know and 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 so on of um, some of the young people in the Democratic um, Labour Party and I I saw a lot of people online making comments about that did you did you see that no I didn't see it however. It is not how you look or how you feel or anything like that. It is a contribution that you can make to Barbados. And yeah. everybody can make a contribution. You don't have to be flamboyant, the best speaker, or anything like that. It is what you can do. I find that that is where we have fallen down. People who can speak seem to draw in a crowd. They are attractive but when it comes to performance, they are actually failing to perform. Mm -hmm. And you know, there is something that I wanted to add that we spoke about a while ago when Ms. McLean was speaking about more people in St. Philip in some constituencies. And my other point, um, along with what I had mentioned at first, was that we should be know that we have become a republic. We should be moving to a stage of proportional representation and with that, the campaign financing for parties will be linked. So they will go hand in hand. If you have proportional representation, all of the parties who represent should be able to get campaign funding, campaign mm -hmm. financing mm -hmm. from that pool. Mm -hmm. And let me see. Oh, polling, very important. Ms. McLean mentioned polling. And as far as I'm aware, there was no poll, no scientific poll that was done for this election, and yet people are making predictions. And I don't know how that is possible. So <laughs> there is no concrete evidence. Nobody knows what will happen unless they have information that they are not making public. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. <laughs> so I, it puts me at a loss because I can't say that X or Y did his research and poll people 
and that he has statistical evidence to prove that this can happen or this cannot happen. Mm -hmm. So it puts me at a disadvantage of trying to agree with a person or disagree with them. Mm -hmm. So polling has been a big, I know the time was short, but however, something, there must have been some sort of concrete evidence that somebody would use to predict how they will be doing in the election. All right. I haven't seen it. Right, we didn't have any I polls. Have isn't, that, isn't that interesting, Ms. McLean, that well, uh, no polls? No, I, I, I don't know if I can say we didn't have any polls because the, the reality is, I, as I said, I listened to one of the, the well-known pollsters. Um, mm -hmm. We did not have any public polls because public some, years polls, ago, right. some years ago, um, the nation newspaper would run polls. Um, mm -hmm. <laughs> I believe very strongly that um, the Barbados Labour Party did conduct several, um, some polls, at least very recently, um, because based on some, some actions that we would have seen, picked up, uh, would suggest that they were trying to remedy some of the things they found. But I want to go what back to some of those actions that you give me. Give no, no, I think I think you you for example, I, I was hearing of um the need to shore probably people campaigning in a particular area in certain mm -hmm. constituencies mm -hmm. or certain parts of constituencies because the candidate might not have been um deemed favorable. I I, mm -hmm. I also heard um and these this is just rumors so as I said um, that that in terms of the candidates, the the the, the continue continuation of some of their older candidates, there was an expectation and and discussion in in public spaces that there would have been changes, mm -hmm. um, and it either suggested that they, who was contemplated, they might have tested the waters to see the reaction, um, and in some cases they may not have had time. But I I want to go back very quickly to a point you made about. Um, the, I think you mentioned the Prime Minister ridiculing um, the younger people. My first question to the Prime Minister of Barbados was how old was she when she became a parliamentarian? Mm -hmm. um, because I suspect she would have been in her 20s. She probably was not 30 years old. Um, but that is, and, 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 and beyond that, what was her experience when she came into to politics? I mean, if you want to talk about a young politician, David Thompson as Prime Minister died at 40 years, years old having been in parliament for 20 something years, mm. you know? And so, so, and, and, and the thing is you, you talk about fostering the interests of young people and then you dismiss it. And, and what I found kind of ironic, I mean, that's, that's why when it comes to things political, I, I have a way of looking at the world that sometimes causes me to be dismayed by, by the mouthings of, of people. Um, when there was a criticism of the Democratic Labour Party, the, the Prime Minister and company and other detractors of the Democratic Labour Party suggested that the, the, the party um, leader and, you know, and, and, and the younger members of the party distanced themselves from the pre previous administration, you know, the members of the previous parliamentary group, etc. Then we, we went about, I mean, obviously some people would have would have reached the age where they decided that, you know, even before the election, that that would have been their last election and so on or whatever. But you went about identifying and bringing into to the fold a number of young people and, and actively preparing them to, to run. When they were announced, and I remember hearing individuals, who are these people? We don't know them. Where to get these young people from? And I, I think it is it is unfortunate that people are comfortable playing what I call political games. I'm not a game player. I, I take, I, I, as I say, I take what I do seriously. I may not take myself too seriously, um, you know, but I take what I do seriously. And and for me, where you are seeking to encourage young Barbadians in all walks of life to get out there and demonstrate competence and confidence um, and, and policy makers and people who sit in this serious decision-making um, positions, whether in government, the private sector, non-governmental organizations, to talk to young people like that. Mm -hmm. I find it highly disrespectful and disingenuous, mm -hmm. you know, and, 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 and inappropriate because, as I said, when I, I, I sat, I mean, I, I knew some of the young people. I worked with them in the party. Some of them were newer. I knew them. In mm -hmm. fact, it was ironic. There was one candidate when I first heard his name. I asked, who is he? And then I discovered that he was in every one of my best friends, you know. And I, I didn't remember, I didn't remember him because of the name, but I knew him. And to listen to these young people 
based um, on, you know, not only their presentation, but their actual experience, yes. work, education, participation in community. Some of them have stellar records, you know, and 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 so I I I I, I say the future of the of the Democratic Labour Party is good. The future of politics in Barbados mm -hmm. is good because you would notice that because we have two major parties, and as much as we we would like to see um, greater <coughs> emphasis of, of multiple parties, maybe given the size of the country, it has not materialized in that way. But you will see that there's that movement across what I call the, the political landscape. Mm -hmm. And at the end of the day, what it says to me as a person who is now a retiree, as far as I'm concerned, to do the things that I enjoy, like making films in Marcia, <laughs> <laughs> um, is, is, is to, be, to, to feel happy that there's, there's succession and mm -hmm. there's continuity. And, and there are young people who have decided that they will leave the, the bright lights and the, and the, and the lots of money because people don't understand until they get in it the kind of sacrifices you make um, to, to come and make contributions to running the country that gave them so much. Mm -hmm. it's a, it, is a, it is indeed a sacrifice. I know mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. that um, you only have four more minutes I don't know or because you have another function and um, mm -hmm. um, and Heather told me it was a strict it's strict 10 o'clock um, I can Heather. stay a little longer I can Long, stay a little let, longer let me, let me give Miss McLean the, the next four minutes and then I'm, I'm seeing there there and I would love for Pastor Paul to come back in um, uh, um, okay. you know after Miss McLean is gone but let, let me just ask Miss McLean you know Looking at your campaign, there was a time there that there was there seemed to have been you 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 had a bump in the road with one of your young ladies, one of the young ones. There was something that that she said, and I don't know why the name her name is is slipping me right now. Don Marie Armstrong, Don a Marie powerful Armstrong. young woman, power mm -hmm. really really very powerful. I have to I have to say because I, I'm like wow wow what a powerful woman. And um, and how old is she? Do we? Is this? We uh, she she is probably about thirty in her early thirties, I believe. Early thirties. I thought I heard the first time I the first like time that. I heard her speak. She was eight months pregnant in the in the St George by election last year. Um, and 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 you you mentioned her, and let me let me say that it was on. I, I think basically she attempted to make some statements, and I thought in her. In her enthusiasm, she got carried away. Mm -hmm. And my words to Dawn Marie after was, sometimes you fall, you stumble and fall, but you get back up. And she did the right thing. She apologized immediately. Yeah. Um, because if you listen to what she said, it, it was, it, and, and I don't, you know, I don't want to go back into repeating it, but uh, I yeah. think she, yeah. her intent, she was trying to make some comparisons, but at the end of the day, there are some things, and, and you see, it was probably an unscripted kind of comment, but mm -hmm. I, as I said, that perhaps is part of the test of what happens when you're in a public space. Mm -hmm. um, and so I, I was very pleased to see her, um, as I said, first of all, apologize, but get up and dust herself off. I heard her. I mean, she she is she is a, a psychologist um, working on a on a PhD. Um, and I think she was able to bring some of her training to dealing with the bruising, um, okay. you know, and, and also be, to be able to sufficiently humble herself to apologize because yes. I, I think that is excellent. And I think a lot more people need to do that. Um, the, the reality is in, in this political game, we have to try to avoid partisan positions. In other words, some, I would, I would hate to see people on my side say, okay, what's the problem? Mm -hmm. and let it go and uh, people on the other side attack her full force mm -hmm. um, and that's part of what happens but i think what it is you made an error yeah that you made an error apologize for any damage done because you yourself don't have to to get up and face the music mm -hmm. and i think it, it, it for that's a, a learning and growing experience and i yes. think and one of the things that i, I believe that um we saw, and I, I felt a lot of young people who were able to speak in a very serious way to the issues facing the country, 
to, mm -hmm. to, to, to interrogate those issues and to offer suggested approaches. For example, in her case, um, last the last night when she spoke, I think it was last night when she spoke, uh, she spoke of her her vision for sports because she's an athlete. She was an athlete. She was a cricketer. Uh, um, you yes. know, who, who who got to do her academic studies on a, on an athletic scholarship, I believe, and and as part of one part of you know at some stage along her academic career, um, mm -hmm. but she also was able to share a very comprehensive vision. And my thing is, those things must not fall by the wayside. If, as I said, you don't succeed the first time, there mm -hmm. are things that you need to embrace, and. And beyond embracing them as, as an individual in a community and part of a party, they are things which hopefully government, however it is constituted, would seek to embrace some of those things. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So thank you so much, Mr. I, I thank you for having me. Um, I, 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 I opted to, to, to go up more than an hour late where I'm going. Um, <laughs> but I think this is more important. Um, listen, yeah. listen, uh, listen, you have to give me one prediction. Just one. Give me one. Give me something, man. Get out of the 30. One prediction? Even if the prediction is wrong, I predict that my MP will be my choice, Dr. Ronnie Yearwood. Okay. And that is who I want to see. <laughs> You know, I, I leave the others. I I have them written down on a piece of paper. Uh huh. So, but I yeah. that is that is that is. I that know is you. You know. I know. I know, I know you wish. have that. I know you have that piece of paper, and you are ready to work it up. But you don't want it. To I'm looking for it, but I will show you the back, the back side of it, not the front. Yeah, not the front. <laughs> I know you got that. I know you have it written down. Well, all the best to the Democratic. All Democratic. the best to you. Look at here. <laughs> Yes, yes, let me see those names. Let me see those names. No, 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 no. <laughs> I didn't realize I had some on the back as well. I was showing you, I was showing you this, this thing side, but that, that but is listen, we, I'm here until about midnight, whenever they're finished. So if you finish your meeting and you want to jump back on because your your what you had on the paper was right, you're free to come back on. I'll send you a WhatsApp message because... Um, I'm not sure that we'll be done by bit that, but it depends on how the results go and whatever. Oh, else. I know, I know, <laughs> I know. But listen, with all those, all the party, don't let us see no pictures that came out like the others, and mm. and 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 you know, no, the, you know, all this the, the place. I, I I have been observed. Actually, I participated in the entire campaign in front of this computer. Mm. I did not go to any meetings physically or anything so yeah so be careful out there be careful all right god bless you, Thank you nice all the you best truly thank you all right nice to meet you all the best thank, thank you very you. much okay <laughs> bye bye take care yeah, bye, bye bye um i'm sure um pastor paul you know heather has been listening um to to all that is happening dave is still there um i'm gonna see if dave can can come in um at this time and we would have heard, um, you know, listen to Ms. McLean from the Democratic um, Labour Party, unwilling to give me her predictions. And Dave and I know her. She had something on in papers, but she don't want to tell me anything, <laughs> you know, but it, it's good to, to hear her. Um, you know, um, Heather, um, you were talking about some of the reforms, some of the things that you want to see change. And yes, um, yes. you know, and mm -hmm. and I don't know if Pastor Paul has anything to 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 uh, any comments about that because she was speaking about even the you know the 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 um the, the money the, the the election um what is it called again the, the subvention the subvention that it should be something that is shared um among all of the parties once they have a certain number of of persons which is what hap that's what happened in Kapova with the bands. Um, you know, you know, we do the Walk Holy Band, um, of which Kathy Weeks is the band leader now. Uh, but what normally happens is that you have to have a certain number um, of, of persons that you get in a certain amount of money that you get. You know, so that we don't have a situation, you know, like what happened where the, the ruling party hugged the whole purse. You know, and you were also suggesting as APP, APP is suggesting about a fixed date, right, Miss Cole? Yes, also, fixed yeah. date for elections. Yeah. Is there anything else that you are suggesting? Yes. Then we'll have Pastor Paul and Dave comment on those. Well, and I, then I, proportional I, I, representation as well. Mm -hmm. Proportional representation. 
Yes, and those were the three things you were coming. You were you were yeah. suggesting. Um, yes. So mm -hmm. let me hear out of Pastor Paul. I think or uh, Dave. I thought I heard Pastor Paul um, first uh, started to comment. Yeah, I think those are very good suggestions um, because you want to reduce one of the biggest problems in Barbados and um, Barbadian politics and politics worldwide is that issue of corruption. Mm -hmm. And therefore, if you if you have a better spread and you have a control and manage uh, release of subventions, it will help to cut down on some of that because when you have to rely on people to finance your campaign, it creates an obligation on the part of that party to, to give back or to do something. And uh, we know if you look at the United States, the, we, we know the issue of lobbyists. And, and when people are able to lobby you <coughs> and when people are able to finance your campaign, it creates an obligation to give back. The other thing I think that we should add to this discussion is that of integrity legislation. Uh, it has been talked about, it has been bandied about, and this particular administration uh, promised fervently, solemnly, that they would have integrity legislation in place that would help to mitigate against that. I think that would be another excellent uh, step forward because when candidates uh, have to declare their assets prior to going into office and then on leaving office, it at least puts the spotlight on them. Um, so that the people can have a sense of who they're electing and uh, they can hold them accountable to a large degree. Um, I think that would be very helpful. Let's be clear. You are not going to be able to stop corruption as long as human beings are human beings. They're going to find ways to get around laws. And the interesting thing is that the people who pass the laws are the same ones that the same ones who want to be governed by the laws are the ones who are passing the laws. So the the, the fox is is guarding the hen house, and and, and therefore it it, it it leaves they always leave loopholes for themselves. But those <laughs> those of of, of uh, pieces of, of those types of measures and pieces of legislation would help to level the playing field and help to reduce unfair advantage. And it's a step forward. We are an educated people. We, we now have a population that we've educated, that has grown up, that has matured. That's why many of the young people you're talking about are able to step forward because they've grown up from primary school to, to, to higher education, better than our parents and grandparents. And therefore, uh, we, we, we need to treat to, to uh, the way how we govern and the way how uh, we conduct our elections differently. Differently. It widens the participation. Uh, I can tell you that people, before they go into the field, they are taught to identify who are the influential persons in the community, mm -hmm. not only from a perspective of the respect that they get, but also from the fact that they are the ones who people in the community look up to because they have money. And those are the ones you're told, go talk to them, go get their endorsement, go and speak to them because if they're buying to you, in the old, old days, long before I was able to articulate anything like this, you go to the ram shop. The shop was the shopkeeper, was the person in the neighborhood that sold you the groceries. The shopkeeper was the person that your mother sent you with the list to get items on credit. And therefore, when you're in the shop was the, uh, the, the community center. So if you get the shopkeeper, mm -hmm. you get people. And when mm -hmm. you come and buy rounds of drinks and corned beef and biscuits, as we used to say, that's a person that if you say, Molly voted for him, he influences. That is still happening. Mm -hmm. We are still identifying the person in the community that have the money that we mm -hmm. want on our side. Unfortunately, we are also identifying the person who is conducting the illegal pharmaceuticals in the community that is that that is uh, now uh, helping us 
to secure the vote, particularly of the very young and not engage in politics, but engage with the political largesse. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Interesting, very, very, very interesting. Um, Dave, um, what are your thoughts on um, the suggestions that Ms. Cole is, is making? Very good, very good. Um, the idea of equity or, or, or trying to achieve equity may not always be 100% possible, but if you can have that purse split between the contestants, then it gives everyone an equal, well, not necessarily equal, but a better chance at an equal footing. So mm -hmm. that's, and, and, and if you're really interested in the country, if mm -hmm. you're really interested in the betterment of what's best for the people, mm -hmm. then everyone who is making a, an attempt to represent mm -hmm. the people should be given as best, as good an opportunity as they can. So when you have a case where, you know, because of, because you're the ruling party, you know, you get the majority or you get all of the money and, mm -hmm. and those who are new are just trying to start out who really need more money than you because they don't have, they don't have the inroads as the ruling party or, 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 or established parties would have, and they need more help. Um, if you're really interested in the welfare of the country, then you would look to put measures in place that would help new players to come into the market. How else mm -hmm. are you going to get improvement unless you, you continue to, Im to breed new talent and to encourage new, new um, perspectives and new ideas and new solutions, unless you really don't, unless you're really happy with the status quo. And then mm -hmm. there's that. There are those who are happy with the status quo. I'm in. And um, I, I have all the power I need. I have everything I need. I have the power. And therefore, there's no interest in, in broadening the playing field or encouraging new ideas and new concepts. And therefore, that, that, that concept remains. But if we're going to move forward as a country, we have to look at proper representation and what is it, what does it call for, what's required to have the proper kind of representation we need. And financing is obviously one of those areas. The other area that um, I think Ms. Cole spoke about last night and I think it's in the manifesto as well, is in the APP manifesto, is the area of um, specificity of edu educational institutions where we have, instead of today, now we have educational institutions that are top notch and then you have those that don't have any notches at all. And that's how society, our society is structured. And therefore, that's why you have many young people will we say falling through the cracks because they don't have the academic ability to get to the top flying schools and they have to go to the school that doesn't have any notches and they're immediately relegated to the to the bottom and the, 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 the <coughs> belly of society and they live their lives as though they are at the bottom of society and then you have the crime you have the drugs because they have no aspirations however if we can transform some of these schools into specialized schools. For example, if the Springer Memorial School could be renamed the College of, of, of Sports College, where if you, if, if you want to excel, excel um, in sports, the funding is there, all the facilities is there at, at the, that, that particular institution, um, and therefore is renamed and rebranded as the Sports College of Barbados and then and you can even expand it the sports college of the Caribbean then when persons who, who do not necessarily um, excel in maths and English and and those things and but they are very good athletes when they go to that college at Government Hill then and they're going to the, the, the college for, of sports then their whole perception of themselves changes and it therefore lends to to, 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 to developing an individual who believes they can contribute to society as a sports person. And the same thing for agriculture. I know the Princess Margaret School has an agricultural program, but it's, it's one of the schools that's on the, the bottom ladder or no notches. If, that the, if the Princess Margaret School could be, could be geared towards agriculture, where if you want to study agriculture, I know, let's like St. Augustine's is known for engineering or, or Barbados, K. Phil is known for law. And um, Jamaica is known for uh, Mona for medicine. We have those special specializations, 
and therefore you have the opportunity of going to a college or institution that 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 takes care of your specialty and therefore it removes the stigma all those schools can be transformed from being you know because they don't have students that that will get a grades in math and a grades in chemistry and physics and biology because it doesn't have those students it therefore is relegated to the bottom of the ladder in society if you change that and be able to route students and route young people into an institution that specializes in their and the, and what they are good at then you have a whole different individual and 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 these are the directions that that whoever wins this election clearly the current administration is not interested in that kind of thing it's not interested in that it's obvious it's clear um we're more they're more interested in borrowing from the chinese and the imf and and and, and that's where their head is but if if there's a new administration and that can be the direction where the individual um is considered in other words a microeconomic position is adopted that filters up to the macro <clears throat> then you will see a difference in society because once a man or a woman is happy with themselves and they feel fulfilled then they will contribute to society and then they will earn money and that money will go into the economy and they will gain foreign exchange and they will be able to contribute and you see the economy will grow but if you if you keep them at the bottom of the ladder they get disenfranchised they get angry they get upset they beat the, they beat the, the wives they beat the children they go take drugs. They kill one another because they have no hope. But if you put hope in those people, you will see this, this society transform. And we would not need to go to the IMF. We would not need to go to the Chinese. We would not need because the people themselves will be the ones who lift the ship up. They will they'll be the ones who, who make the ship to flow on water. And that's, I think, that, I think, is the approach that any coming government should adopt. We are to put the people first and the representation for people it becomes a priority and therefore to flow back up to the question the the funding to allow new representatives with these ideas is there so they can get a chance to implement some of these ideas and i've heard those ideas it's in the manifesto so these are things that we need to really grab hold of and and try to 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 ensure that 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 this kind of thinking is there to transform transform barbados as a, as a nation Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Sister Marcy, uh, what Dave is, 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 is saying uh, relates to the uh, relates to statesmanship and that is what mm -hmm. is missing from our politics of late mm -hmm. we don't have persons who are willing to be statesmen or stateswomen persons who have the, the, the interests at heart of the nation rather than your party or your policies or your personal interests correct um mm -hmm. if you look at it historically the barbados labor party was the party of the status quo so to speak mm -hmm. and represented more persons from the panther class than the ordinary class mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. correct correct who came out of that the democratic labor party <clears throat> came out of the blp prime minister barrow was part and parcel of the BLP. The DLP emerged out of that. Mm -hmm. He, among who was called the Young Turks, who wanted change, who wanted mm -hmm. development mm -hmm. in the 60s, who wanted to see greater representation for the people, and they were tired of, uh, of the underprivileged uh, class mm -hmm. not getting what they want. Labor was the, the, the push the unionization, collective bargaining, bringing the people together, out of that came the DLP. Mm -hmm. Look at all the other parties that have come out. The NDP that doesn't exist anymore came out of the DLP. And if you look at every person in the other parties that are attempting to be formed, perhaps with the exception of Solutions Barbados, you will see that they had an affiliation or they were part and parcel of other Correct. parties. Correct. And, they, and, and this is part of the evolution. Uh, so therefore, if you can look at two established parties, they weren't there from the beginning, but they mm -hmm. evolved. Mm -hmm. They came about and they had to be nurtured. They, 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 they had to grow from something within some structure. And when we, when we get back leaders who are willing to look at the overall growth of the country, the overall development of the country, legacy, and where, where, we, where we plan. We talk a lot about the Chinese, Dave mentioned it just now. 
But Xi Jinping and his administration has made plans for 2063. Not 2023, 2063. Those governments that are planning for the generation are planning when they're not here. Mm -hmm. He's mm -hmm. most likely not going to be around in 2063. Mm -hmm. But as a result of the long vision and development of the country, they put policies in place that will carry the next generation forward. We mm -hmm. need statesmanship. So mm -hmm. the next party that comes in needs to focus on legacy, on the next generation, Correct. not burdening them with debt, <laughs> but endowing them with the possibilities of the, the skills and the competencies that they will be able to grow. And therefore, even when you call election, even though it may be your interest to do so, even though it may allow you, your party, to have an advantage, you should still be concerned about the other parties because they are part and parcel of the governance of the country. And therefore, it, it is only uh, uh, it's a, it's, it's an act of statementship that they are given consideration mm -hmm. as well. Mm -hmm. My mic is muted. Very well said. I mean, I, I tell people all the time, these shows, you know, Heather, there's just so much that you hear on here and you're saying, my goodness, you know, um, we even in the comment section, uh, um, you know, people are commenting some great ideas, great thoughts, and I'm and, and, and saying we have what it takes to turn this country around. Is what is what I'm saying because you hear, you know. So um, Heather, I know you're. I know we've gone way over your time. So can what what are what are some of the other things on your on your mind as we sit here wait on waiting on these results? Tell us before you um, go. Um, I think that we must move away from mm -hmm. governments who make promises, and we have two things to focus on for Barbados. Are there two things that we must? focus on one is the is representation of the people of barbados because as you know and i keep saying this that 30 people went to the house of parliament the 30 people who were elected by the people went to hold to the house of parliament and they voted for a republic and never went to ask the people if they wanted a republic or not. And that was not representation. That is where the discussion for the republic should have started with the people. So we need politicians who actually find out what it is that persons want, who actually live in the communities. And so, because you need to be there on the ground to be finding out what people want in every aspect of their lives. And yes, people have suggestions and ideas and so on. So that is one thing that Barbados needs, adequate representation for its um, electorate. Not, it doesn't need people that you see once every five years or once in a blue moon or who just turn up for a funeral. That is not representation. Mm -hmm. And also what we need to do is to get back to development. Mm -hmm. And by development, I do not mean building hotels. We don't need any more hotels in Barbados. We need schools. We need a proper hospital. Mm -hmm. We need everything that a country needs for development to be able to look after our workforce properly. So many things are required that are not even being thought of. We need to develop the place that we live because we, the Prime Minister loves to say that the country is punching above its weight. Uh, but that is just the same because if you are a tourist and you come to Barbados, everything is nice. You stay in a nice hotel and the beach is pretty. You get nice food and whatever. But if you pull apart the curtain and look at the real Barbados, you will see that they are actually two. And all that is needed is to make the two one in terms of development, in terms of social justice, criminal justice, 
every other thing that is lacking. So we need to develop where we live, where Barbadians live or call home, and we need proper representation. And when we get those two achieved, we would have broken the cycle of political parties doing nothing, five years on, five years off. And then when you look back, you don't know, you can't see what it is that they have done. So we need to get back to these two things development of our country and representation mm -hmm. in every sector transportation everything mm -hmm, mm -hmm. and that is my little speech <laughs> <laughs> well you know it's not a little speech at all this is really um um really very very um very important and there's a point there that you made um about the representative living in the constituency and we're going to, I, I see um, Sean Carter is here um, as well, and um, we're going to bring him in very, very soon in the studio to discuss um, some of those issues, you know, um, you know, that some of those recommendations that you, that you're making. Uh, but before you go, Miss Cole, can you tell us what are you expecting tonight? Did you, did you create a little list like Miss McLean? You know, do you have your 30 there? <laughs> No, I did not. I am just waiting to see what happened. Yes. Yes. Because, well, um, because it is as though, well, if the party, if the, there is no change, it means that there is a serious syndrome, a serious Stockholm syndrome process that we have in Barbados. You treat wow. people bad and no matter what you do, they'll read that cue and that doesn't make any sense. Wow. So we, if the, that is if the party retains power. I'm serious. We need to. We need some psychologists in Barbados if that happens. Mm -hmm. We need the country needs change, and some people are blinded to that fact. Mm -hmm. So I, I will just wait. I'll wait and see what happens. Mm -hmm. yeah, really, I've been really. praying and praying and praying, <laughs> but I will just wait. Really interesting, very interesting. We haven't had any any res no results have come out um, as yet. They're still counting, still counting um, at at this point. So you're going to um, you're going to wait uh, and see. Uh, Wayne Hoyt is here saying hi. Wayne, agree with Heather with so many ministers and ministers. Why is development so lacking, and why are the people not prospering? And Andrea Critchlow is saying we have great talent here and it's a shame that only a chosen few get to excel. If more is done to encourage and push our local creativity, there can be numerous avenues to create wealth. And um, we are going to talk, I see Mr. as I said, Sean Carter is in the green room and we're gonna talk about that arts and culture that um, Pastor Paul mentioned. So we, I haven't forgotten. We're gonna, we're gonna, um, gonna also talk about that when we, when we come back together. Um, thank you so much, uh, Miss Cole. Always a pleasure. Oh, one more thing, Marcia. One more thing. Even one more thing. Even if the the newer parties do not make it, it does not mean that there has to be a break within a five-year period and come back. There has to be continu continuity. But it, and it doesn't even have to be political. I have some ideas that I will share with App, but mm. there's no need for a break. We can do other things mm. to bring the people on board. That. Other things. I love, that. I love that because you know that is that I think is important. I know you have to go. We are going to yes. continue that conversation. You know about yes. that that five year. Um, you know that we we don't we don't close on shop. And then, right, yes. Mr. Mr. Hoyt is saying, I agree with, he agrees with Heather. Um, you know, we're not going to close on shop and then we get up and we are, you know, mm -hmm. election, oh, we're going to know, but it's to, you know, and I right. think that, that, is, that is important. That is important. Any final words you have to, this, to our younger parties tonight before you go? Be hopeful. Be hopeful. Be hopeful. Okay. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Thank you so much, Miss Cole. It's a pleasure having you. You're full of ideas, I tell you. It's a real All pleasure. right. It's Thank you honor. very much. Everyone have a good night. Good night. Thank God you. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.
Right. Oh my! This is this is so um, isn't this this so awesome? All of this is like a think tank, you know, here and so many ideas. Um, yeah, you know that that we have here, and I'm and I'm pausing because I'm I'm trying to read the chat as well, that the, the comment section because the people are commenting, right? Yes, and um, Mr. Carter is is um, is in. Good night, sir. How are you? Hey, good evening, Marcia. I am very tired, but well. <laughs> <laughs> and you, you have been doing a lot of work um, with APP, um, you know, and, um, and and just a lot in all different areas, right? Yes, yes. I've been a, a, a utility worker. <laughs> <laughs> um, I've, I've been working directly with Sean Tudor in Christchurch East Central. Mm -hmm. um, I was Sean's personal assistant, and I was also leading the media team for for App. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, sounds Wonderful. sounds simple, but it was it was a lot of work. Getting <laughs> 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 the ground every day. Um, I mean, the highlights the highlights of it for me was was um, being on the campaign trail with Sean, going out every day. Um, sometimes all day because you know you only had three weeks. Usually, you would have two years to actually go into the community, get to know the people, get to know their concerns. They get to know you. Um, so now you are you're campaigning and canvassing at the same time, and to do that in three weeks is is impossible. But that was that was the highlight for me. Um, actually, hearing from the people, interacting with the people, engaging the people. Um, I mean, we we spoke to several people. Um, there was there was a, a particular community that we went in in Vauxhall, and they said, you know, they have never seen any politician in their area, Yeesh. and some some persons have been there for over thirty years. Sure. They've never seen a politician, furthermore, a, a, a representative, an MP. Um, so they were they were just in awe of the fact that we actually came through mm -hmm. that rocky road um, to see who actually lived up there and to actually engage them and to hear what their concerns were. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, so like I said, that, that was the, it, it did a lot for me. Um, before this year, I, I had absolutely nothing to do with politics except going on election day and putting my X on, on that ballot paper. Um, mm -hmm. But I can tell you after my interaction and engagement with the people on the ground, um, this is something that I will be part of going forward. You can't, you cannot hear what I've heard and just go on living life as normal. <clears throat> you, mm -hmm. you just can't do it. It's impossible. Yeah, it's 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 life changing. Everybody who comes on here, you know, talk, they talk about um, that the, the contact that they've had with the people in the constituencies, you know. Right. Um, you know, but um, which leads me to this, the, the question here, um, uh, you know, about um, the question here um, that, that, well, the idea or the suggestion mm -hmm. that was made by, um, by Heather, that the, the representative should live in the constituency. Um, you know, and I wanted to, to pass the call to jump in, but I think um, he's going to be back on um, in, a, in a minute um right. to jump in uh, on that because um I, I i was really interested in his thoughts um ab ab about that um I, you know we are waiting also um to see when it's time to hook up with cbc and starcom uh because right. i know that i know that the counting has started right sean yes it has um for i can speak specifically to christchurch east central Mm -hmm. um i know it was delayed we our, our our accounting agents were there from about 20 past seven and around 20 past nine they haven't started as yet but they've, they've now started um so that that process has been has been delayed um we were the, the last report i got is that um, some of the boxes had reached location they were awaiting a couple others but the, the counting has begun the counting has begun and yeah. um and what any um we are waiting i know that counting has begun in some of the other places as well 
So we are probably in the next um, two hours, we might be able to get some results um, um, coming in. Um, what yeah. are your thoughts about the third parties and how, how do you think they've done? We, I know we're all waiting to the third and the younger parties. What are your yeah. thoughts? Um, just today, I was I was saying to a member of APP that I think that the party did extremely well, um, given the limited resources, um, mm -hmm. people resources, as well as financial resources. Mm -hmm. um, it is, it, it, when you think about it, you, you can tell, any logical thinking person can tell three weeks to, to, to really effectively pull off an election campaign is an mm -hmm. uphill battle. Um, but when you're involved in it, you realize how mammoth of a task it really is. Mm -hmm. um, it's been crazy. It's been absolutely crazy. And mm -hmm. I think that we didn't we didn't hit all the targets that we wanted to hit. We didn't achieve necessarily everything that we wanted to um, achieve. But but just I hold think a minute. That... I'm hearing that some results have come in, um, Dave, from St. John. Um, and so if somebody can let me know what's happening over there, whether we need to switch to CBC, um, no, um, some results. There are no official, not official. I'm just seeing comments on the CBC mm -hmm. chat on the CBC, um, Facebook page comments from individuals, mm -hmm. but they're just comments. Nothing, nothing is confirmed or anything. Nothing confirmed. So well, as soon as we get it, it's confirmed, we will switch over and, um, you know, um, um, so, but, but you're right. Um, we're seeing, um, we're seeing, uh, uh, when we looked at, at APP and I had a chance to, to interact with some of the other younger parties and I saw, right. I mean, they worked hard. These these third part these younger parties they work really really hard. I, I think Pastor Paul is is ready to to come back in um, there. And um, we were talking Pastor Paul about the younger parties and looking at you know how I mean um, Sean would have been in the inner workings of the APP and to see how they struggled and worked so hard. And in Jamaica we say take your hand and make fashion. You know with um the little bit that they had or the nothing that they had as you heard they got none yes. of the subvention you know right, right. Um, but but exactly. you see how they they worked um you know worked very very hard and um have you have you been watching the app um um uh, pastor um, yeah absolutely and they many of them they benefited from the volunteerism of of of, of several persons sean yeah. they will confirm that people went around and checked to see if names were on ballots to make sure that, they, that things were in place. There was a lot of persons who volunteered and contributed, uh, if not in cash, in kind, so that yeah. work was done. And as you know, there's no way you can run a campaign strictly on money. You need boots on the ground. You need people mm -hmm. like Sean walking around, talking, speaking, setting up, mm -hmm. breaking down. Uh, handling logistics we need people yeah. and uh a lot of the app candidates uh had a lot of that support from the uh, christian community i must say and um and that's good he also mentioned something that i wanted to piggyback on and then he talked about hearing the plight and the cries of people seeing them in their in, in their context and hearing their complaints he said that he could not go back to live in the same mm -hmm. way mm -hmm. and is now motivated to himself become involved in the political process mm -hmm. i smiled at that because that is the exact reality of pastors constantly constantly <laughs> and this is why it's such an easy fit for a pastor to to, to to go to address the needs of a nation because you face it every day Right. There are people come into the church for food. There are mm -hmm. people come into the church to help with their school. There are people who mm -hmm. fall back in their rent or even their mortgage. There are people that, yes, they have a BMW, but so what? They're middle class, so what? So they live in a house in the mm -hmm. heights and the terraces. But guess yeah. what? After they've spent all of their money 
and they reduce your salary. Some people have had 20% cuts in their salary or one yeah. of the, the, the earning parties of the partner is no longer earning, they're no longer working. They've gone mm -hmm. from a two family, two income household, a two income household in a one family to one income. And, mm -hmm. and, and even them, they need help. You can't look at the clothes or you can't look at what they drive if you mm -hmm. really get into this situation, you will see some of them are suffering worse than the people who are catching the bus. Mm -hmm. and pastors face these realities constantly, daily. Mm -hmm. And therefore, when you go into the Huskins and you are talking to people, it resonates with you because mm -hmm. you know yeah. you know that reality. And yeah. therefore, you are able to identify with it and to some degree, shoulder it better so you don't come just with empty promises mm -hmm. but you have some compassion and you remember those that you're going to have to address when god blesses you to have the means to do so mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. thank you so much thank you so much I, that comment when he made that comment i said wow this is this is just just like um, those who have decided to serve to serve the lord in his in ministry um, I'm, I'm getting um, getting some results here that um, so St. Michael Southeast, um, as of um, four minutes past 10, um, Sancha Bradshaw uh, from the BLP, 754, Pedro Shepherd from the DLP, 170, and Patrick Tannis from APP, 37. Wow. So that's what I'm, what I'm hearing um, so far. Um, that this is this is what's coming from um, Starcom and Nation News um, is what um, the, 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 those are the results that I am getting so far, right? Um, and this is as of ten o four, as of ten o four, this is what what we're yeah, yeah yeah yeah. They're still counting though, still counting. So as we hear, we and the, I'm hearing Pat Hercules is saying they gave a few boxes just now. And BLP is leading so far. Um, that's what we're that's what we're being um, told um, at at this um, this particular time. But um, you know, um, uh, Heather spoke about the, um, the 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 representative living among the people because we're going through this tonight, and and we're um, you know there's so okay who's the winner. In the constituency and um, etc., the, the challenge is is that these um, a lot of these constituents they don't see the representatives at all, yeah. you know. And and so, Dave, what are your thoughts about the the, the representatives living in the constituency? Do you think that that would make a difference, you know? Um, I'm neither here nor there about it. It is it, not a bad idea. It would be good in that accessibility. Uh, they would be more familiar with what's happening to their constituents. Um, but it could be complicated unless you're going to provide a home for them. You know, unless there's a constituency home that they can move into housing and, you know, being able, being able to, to actually live in the constituency may be a challenge for some people, you know. Um, there may not be any person that grew up in the constituency that wants to run there. There may be somebody else mm -hmm. in another constituency. So I wouldn't limit it. While it's not a bad idea, it's done that we them to say no to. Mm -hmm. It's a great thing. But I think that you can broaden. The key thing is 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 to have persons who care about people, mm -hmm. um, yeah. who are interested in Agreed. representing people, regardless of constituency. It's a national thing. And once you have an individual who has the nation at heart, they'll find themselves into the constituency which they represent. And once they meet two or three people in the constituency, that's how human nature is. Once you once you see a cause and a need and you connect to that cause and that need, you'll drive yourself there. I mean we do it all the time. You know, where 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 businesses operate, the, the the CEO of the business doesn't live in the where the business is located. But he has an interest. He has he has value and where the business is located and that's where he operates from he doesn't live there so i don't know if it's necessary to live in the constituency it's an advantage obviously it's an advantage um but the key ingredient is 
the intent, the intention to represent the people. And Barbadians are Barbadians. No matter if you're from St. Philip or St. Lucie, um, if you're a Barbadian and you need shelter, you need a home, you need your child to go to school, you need, you need a scholarship for your child to go overseas because he's a really good football player, that's what it is about. And those are the things that we have to drive towards, um, being able to take care of the needs of the people. And once you do that, then they will take care of you. You don't have to worry about your seat. Your seat will be automatic. It's like Jesus. I mean, if Jesus was a politician, he would be elected over and over. <laughs> because once you raise my son that was dead, you, you, I would vote for you forever. You know? <laughs> you, there's nothing you can do that was stop me from voting for you. You know, if I was hungry and, and the guy, the lady who, 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 who keep, the oil keep coming up, keep coming up all the time. I mean, Elijah, Elijah could be a politician. He would win his seat every time. It will fail. You know what I'm saying? So once you benefit a person, once you benefit a society, a community, you don't have to worry about your seat. Mm -hmm. You know, the other guy has to benefit them more than you. And if the other guy comes and benefits his society more than you, then, whoa, the island going to lift off. The island is really going to go be a, a going to climb. And that's what mm -hmm. we're looking at. That's what we're looking for. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yes, 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 yes. Uh, um, somebody here is saying blind loyalty and... Um, <laughs> And with Mr. Hoyt, to please expand on what and on that statement. Just, expand on that. I think it's about results. <laughs> I think it's referring to the results so far. So far, so far, so far. Yes, 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 yes. Um, you know, <laughs> I'm waiting on on him. Don't forget, Mr. Hoyt, ex expand, expand, um, expand on on that. Now, earlier in the program, you know, uh, Pastor Paul, and I, you, you started to talk about arts. I hope you remember what you were saying, arts and, and culture, and, you know, that I, it's, it's getting so late, but I don't know if we can, you let me know when it's time, when you need to go. <laughs> but um, you, you were talking about arts and, and, and media and those areas, you know, um, that we need to get involved in. And um, I, I said we will wait a, a, little, a little later in the program. We have with us Sean Carter, and he is um, the, the president of BACA, mm -hmm. and Barbados Association of Calypsonians and Artists. Did I get it right? Creatives and Artists. Creatives. I keep using that. <laughs> Calypsonian Creatives and Artists. Yeah. Creatives. That includes me. So, um, Pastor yes. Paul, um, what are your what you know what can you share what you were what what was on your heart? Yeah, well, earlier we were uh, David brought up. Uh, we were discussing the people uh, question of whether the church should be involved in politics, and some people think that that's not the case. I even saw some comments on the show tonight that the church should has its own place and it should stay there and shouldn't even be involved in politics. And I was making the point that the church has always been involved in all aspects of society and right. some aspects of society only came about because of the church. Mm -hmm. uh, and I mentioned, I mentioned the hospitals. I mentioned, you can, you can talk about uh, orphanages. You can talk about the educational sector. All those were built out from the church. And I also mentioned theater. Mm -hmm. um, uh, that, those things came out of church, came out of demonstrating the, 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 the stories of the word of God. How they were dem how they were dramatized, mm -hmm. and uh, if you want me to make the point, you can even look at Hollywood. Hollywood mm -hmm. became established on biblical stories. Cecil DeMille was yeah. the first blockbuster producer. The the um, the Ten Commandments, Ben Hur, Samson and Delilah, The Robe, and we can continue. Those were the blockbusters of its day. And some, and, and the first uh, cinematography that showed excellence in terms of using all the, the, the competence within the art to show the person of the Red Sea and that kind of thing. That all came about because, uh, so Hollywood cut its teeth on biblical stories. And to this day, if you look at the matrix, you see the same theme coming through. If you look at the Terminator, the same theme comes true, where mm -hmm. there is a savior that comes to rescue. And there's yeah. always this special child 
that that it rises to be the hero to rescue. There's only one story in the world. <laughs> yeah. Uh, if, if you if you go to music, well, it's a no-brainer. Most of the music that all the, the genres of music came straight out of the church. Yeah. And many of the established artists that we still hail today went to the church and borrowed heavily from it. And many of the musicians that excel in their in their various genres came from the church and brought that soul, brought that rhythm, brought that groove, brought that sense of spirituality, which they poured into music, came from the church. And every film that is going to have any value, you're, you're the filmmaker here, you know it has to have that spiritual on the root on, on the painting it got to have the tragedy you have to have the the, the the villain and you have to have uh the hero in the story all of those are spiritual on the paintings uh, that the church gave I'll I'll, I'll 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 say one more thing and that is all the, the all the world has because secular but secular is the same thing that you took the sacred out of it. What is left then is secular. All you're doing is taking out the sacred component of it. And what is left is called secular. So therefore, we, we to think that the church somehow is uh, com can be compartmentalized into society, and the rest of the world can go on and live is nonsense because we are involved in every area of life and where we are not involved you can you can always see the difference because it lacks the moral turpitude it lacks the vitality of it it lacks that that on the pinning that makes it have value value is missing when righteousness and morality is not involved. So church is involved in every area of life and we have contributed to every area of life. So the, the, to say that we're not, we're still the salt of the earth and we're still the light of the world. So let's go. No, and, and that is, I mean, we, I think, I think for, for, um, for the most part, mm -hmm. the involvement of the church in arts and and in culture, we I think we we are getting there. You know um, where we're still at a, at a back foot on is the politics, yeah. right? <laughs> and you know, Sean, during this whole time of being involved, um, you know, I'm I'm sure you must be, you must have been thinking about your involvement in 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 in, in the crop over because you have been a Calypsonian. Yeah. You know, you're also a singer. You're also one of those um, the, the artists who, who's on the truck, the walk holy truck. So you have mm -hmm. you have always you know been involved um, in, in these kinds of well, what some people think you know they're controversial, mm -hmm. <laughs> you know. But and here you are involved in politics. You're more than candidate at this time, you know. Mm -hmm. uh, did you see yeah. any similarities there? Yeah, definitely. Um even when, when you look back at mm -hmm. 2004 when what holy band started 2005 when the experience tank started um we the the, the calypsonians of the experience tank would have received a lot of backlash from the existing calypsonians mm -hmm. um we also receive a yeah. lot of links from but there's a bigger point here that i i keep Hinting at, and I'll bring yes, it on. Yes, just hang on. Um, some results are coming in. Um, Dave, we you want us to go straight to, um, um, okay. So just if you want us to see those results, um, just we can go ahead. Just pause there, Sean. Um, mm -hmm. can we? Um, go ahead. Okay, so we're we're waiting we're waiting on that. Continue, um, Sean. Yeah, so I was saying back then we would receive a lot of licks from the existing Calypsonians who said, "Well, you know, the church only coming in here to get the money," and 
that was just a publicity stunt because the, the Calypsonians who are involved already know that unless you place in the top three positions in any of the competitions, you really don't make by your money. Mm -hmm. um, so it was just an excuse to, to keep us out. Mm -hmm. um, we move on to right and articulate and quick on his feet was made a captured sacrificial captured lamb vote, in St. Michael uh, Mr. They Griffith did not even have captured 12 votes mm -hmm. and Peter Phillips a whopping 186 votes out of a total of 266 votes tabulated. And then we move to LA2 at the H where Mr. Pisa got 50 votes. Mr. Griffith got 12 votes and Mr. Peter Phillips again a whopping 163 votes. Uh, and the final one will have been LA2 ICC where captured 68 votes. Mr. Wayne Griffith captured nine votes and Mr. Peter Phillips captured 189 votes where there were 267 votes in total with one foil. So an interesting picture being painted. We spoke about whether the, the winds of change perhaps may be blowing across St. Lucie and it, for the time being, it does not appear that that is the case. And so I'll give you those totals. Uh, I've just tabulated them. Verla de Pisa has captured a total of 224 votes. Uh, Mr. Wayne Griffith has captured 35 votes. And Mr. Peter Phillips capturing 602 votes with two foil votes uh, being recorded. So essentially, you, you see that uh, Mr. Peter Phillips is has a, a a fairly commanding lead where he's leading by well over 300 votes in relation to uh, Verla de Pisa. Of course, there's still quite a number of boxes to be counted, and but in the meantime, it, it is all uh, Peter Phillips and the Barbados Labour Party here in St. Lucie. So, Kareem, once again, just so for lots of our sports fans who are jotting things down with uh, pen and pad and so on on their scorecards, let's go through the votes thus far in aggregate terms, when you add the A to Z and the A to H and the I to Z and so on, what have we got, yeah. once again, the aggregates for St. Lucie for the candidates? One more time. Okay. So, Verla de Pisa, uh, the Democratic Labour Party president, has captured a total of 224 votes. Mr. Peter Phillips, the incumbent Barbados Labour Party candidate, has captured 602 votes. And Mr. Wayne Griffith, has captured 35 votes with two poll votes being recorded. And that's two two polling districts so far? Yes, two, two polling districts. Not the entire district, but certainly a significant portion of both of those districts. Indeed. But again, it, it looks like a, a day of, of low uh, turnout across the board so far. We're not seeing you know, any sort of uh, change from that trend of uh, 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 a low voter turnout across the board thus far tonight. Kareem Smith there at uh, Daryl Jordan Secondary School. Many thanks for reporting to us from St. Lucie. So uh, it's pretty chilly up there, up north, uh, Kareem. Uh, last time I did. Okay, so we're we're getting getting those results. What are your, I mean, you know, we, let's just kind of switch to that. Yeah. <laughs> what, what are your thoughts about what you're hearing, um, Pastor Paul? Well, I'm going to go on a limb and say that I think we are going to see dramatic results that will turn the tide of this uh, election. And even if this government retains a majority, I still do not see that it may hold on to power. It is very possible that persons who have been elected under the banner of the governing party may defect to another party and we can see a coalition government in this country mm. that will be made up of persons from different parties that come together and govern. So I don't think we should be daunted by the early results mm -hmm. because God does some strange things. <laughs> and he always comes from directions that we do not expect. Mm -hmm. I, 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 I believe in my heart that we're going to see 
a dramatic result, a result that the people can't say we did that, mm -hmm. that the party can't say we were effective. Our manifesto was great. We had the right colors. We had the best campaign song. And by mm -hmm. the way, let me put in a plug here, Sean. Mm -hmm. I think if we had a vote for the best campaign, so the APP coming up strong. Correct. I believe so too. Okay. <laughs> I fully agreed. <laughs> the other week, man, <laughs> that, that, that was that song slamming. It is memorable. Agreed. It is catchy. Yeah. You know? yeah. But I think God is going to do something I dramatic that we will know it is him. Okay, so we have, we have some more things, oh, some more coming us, in here. We expect to get within the next... Oh, that should have been run about 10 minutes ago. We should have had the first uh, boxes uh, to be announced for St. Michael Northwest. Uh, lots of anticipation for there. Uh, we will get back to you with that. And uh, we're still uh, looking at uh, anything from St. Michael East and the Barbados Community College. Uh, I see on the screen, um, uh, not a, a declaration, but some returns coming in. On the box, GE188, Carol 55, Moore 129, Nichols 10, 8, 1, GE1, Isaac, Carol 56, Moore 115, Nichols 3, 8, 2. For a total of Carol 111, Moore 244, Nichols 13, 8, 3. Box GE2, A3, G, Hunsford, Carol 44, more 214, Nichols 11, Kate 3. GE2, HZ, 2 score, 74, Carol 205 for more, Nichols 14, Kate 5. So I'm still in that box. Carol 118, more 119, Nichols 24, Kate 8. Box GF180, 1 score, Carol 53. More 120, Nichols 6, Kate 3, GF1, F to M, 1 squared, Kate 182, more 151, Nichols 7, Kate 1, GF1, N to Z, 1 squared, Kate 174, more 145, Nichols 9, Kate 3. Bring in for that box, and for what? That for the district, Kate 109. More 416, Nichols 22, Kate 7, 6 part. The total at the end of the E1, the E2, GF1, Kate 438, more 1079, Nichols 60, Kate 18, with 6 part. The uh, jubilation, uh, not yet a result, but jubilation there at the, the law school uh, for uh, Charles Griffith of the uh, Barbados Labour Party. Now, let me just go back to what you saw before uh, the chair leading squad, and that was uh, the returning officer for St. George North. And the picture, again, very comfortable for the incumbent and the Barbados Labour Party, with Tony Moore getting 83 votes against Herbert Herewood's 282 for the Democratic Labour Party, Ferdinand Nichols of the Alliance Party for Progress with 36 votes, and the independent candidate, Melissa Tate, getting 14 votes. In St. George South, uh, Dwight Sutherland, is uh, looking also very comfortable, well ahead of Don Marie Armstrong with Sutherland getting 792 votes in aggregate thus far against 179 votes for Don Marie Armstrong. And with uh, just Solutions Barbados' candidate, Alison Weeks getting 17 votes. So comfortable leads in the St. George uh, North and St. George South uh, constituencies. In St. James North, uh, Edmund Hinkson, well ahead of Charles Worrell. Edmund Hinkson, the incumbent, with 1,034 votes now against just 184 for Charles Worrell. We're pretty close to calling that for the Barbados Labour Party, St. George, St. James North. In St. Lucie, you heard Kareem Smith, 
788 votes for Peter Phillips, the incumbent, Willard Pisa with two, uh, too great a, a challenge right now for her to get over. Uh, but again, we are still talking about just two boxes thus far. Mm -hmm. So we'll have to see uh, what the picture is there, but it is not looking good for the challenger in the person of Verla de Pisa of the uh, Democratic Labour Party and Wayne Griffith of the Alliance Party for Progress getting 44 votes. Over in St. John, uh, Charles Griffith, no major change there. Charles Griffith well ahead of Andre World, uh, world with 498 votes as against uh, Griffith's 775, with Philippe Amy of the Alliance Party for Progress uh, with 38 votes. Now, to the St. Michael corridor now. In St. Michael Northeast, the incumbent, Juan Mia Amor Motley, is polling 2,239 votes against Damian Griffith of uh, the Democratic Labour Party with 318 votes, and Roy Turney of the Bajan Free Party uh, getting 27 votes. Uh, we can call that for Mia Motley and the, and the bees in St. Michael Northeast. In St. Michael Southeast, also a very comfortable lead thus far with 1,837 votes. 1,837 votes for Santia Bradshaw, the incumbent, the education minister, up against Pedro Shepard of the Democratic Labour Party with 451 votes, and Patrick Tannis of the Alliance Party for Progress with 115 votes. Best showing so far that I can see for the Alliance Party and the United Progressive Party. Patrick Tannis, 115 against uh, Shepard's 451. A lot of work to do if they're going to challenge uh, Sandy Bradshaw's 1,837. So nothing thus far from St. Michael Central. We hope to get something soon. St. Michael North and Northwest, St. Michael East, St. Michael South Central, where all eyes will be looking on that particular battleground constituency. Uh, no returns just yet, but we're keeping our eyes open. Over now to Christchurch. In Christchurch, West Central, Adrian Medic Ford, the incumbent, well ahead of Renette Dimmott of the Democratic Labour Party. With 698 votes going so far to Ford and 169 votes going to the uh, DLP challenger. With 47 votes for the Alliance Party for Progress, uh, represented by Belfield Belgrave and uh, the Solutions Barbados candidate, Kenneth Lewis, getting 24. In Christ Church South, the attorney, Ralph Thorne, the incumbent, well ahead with 544 votes against uh, 130 for Mark Laurent, the closest challenger, with 130 votes for the Democratic Labour Party, 23 votes for Buddy Larrier, the independent, and the other independent, uh, Don Leacock, getting 33 votes. So that's the picture in Christ Church with two constituencies, but the Barbados Labour Party very, very much ahead in uh, all the constituencies. The tightest margin I can see so far uh, is uh, St. John, but again, uh, not close enough if uh, the challenger uh, is going to unseat the incumbent and return uh, St. John to uh, the uh, Democratic Labour Party and the challenger in St. Lucie, hoping to win her seat as the leader of the Democratic Labour Party against uh, the incumbent uh, there and who is doing very well so far. And there's the map with the red not a, uh, a result, but where we are leading so far uh, with uh, the Barbados Labour Party in the red. But that means that they're in the black, electorally speaking, this night. Mm. Wow. So we're looking there at 10, 10 um, constituencies. We have, we have 30 to go, right? And um, right. of the 10, they are, as far as what we just heard, they, they're actually leading you know, um, there, um, Miss Cole said, you know, she's waiting to see these results. And if it is a case where, <laughs> um, you know, the BLP has all the seats again, then it is saying that there's some, some psychological, um, analysis needs to be done on the, on, on the electorate. <laughs> what, what are your thoughts about what you're hearing and, and about that comment? Um, first of all, you were going first. Now let Sean go this day. Go ahead, Sean. Okay. <laughs> um, like we said, the whenever there is a low voters turnout, the, the incumbent party tends to 
get the the it tends to be favored mm -hmm. um that's the first thing that that i i would have noticed the the low i think this voter turnout is even lower than 2018 2018 was low and now it's even lower now that is very consistent with what we have been hearing on the ground mm -hmm. um people have become disillusioned with politics and politicians um you you ask many people if they're satisfied with the representation that they would have been receiving for the last three and a half years and they say no but what we could do now that i mean those exact words you hear from hundreds of people mm -hmm. you know they're not satisfied with the representation that they've been receiving but they they feel helpless they feel hopeless um and and they're just at that point where they say you know it doesn't make any sense voting because um you know this party that party is all the same which is a clear indication that there's a need for change mm -hmm. you you can't keep doing the same thing over and over and expect a different result so it ties mm -hmm. very closely into what Heather would have been saying because we all know the definition of insanity doing mm -hmm. the same thing over and over and expecting a different result it just it just mm -hmm. doesn't happen um so i think that's that from from the results that we've heard um so far still have a long way to go but from the results that we've heard so far um that seems to be the the, the, the consistency low voter turnout is very consistent okay. with what the people have been saying on the ground and it usually favors the incumbent party mm -hmm, mm -hmm. you know uh, I, I sometimes you know um we we interpret we interpret um okay you know god is going to do something and it's going to move and we expect him to move in this particular way you know and he he just does something totally different you know pastor paul i see you there um i know we've had you on for so long and, and i don't want to over over extend my no that's my okay uh, i mean hey this is we've been praying about this for weeks and months so months. there's no room for fainting at this point <laughs> we, we gotta see we gotta see it through yes. you know the, the the scripture that says if you faint in adversity your strength is small yes <laughs> uh you know, um, I I am uh, being educated as well from this show. I'm being I'm I'm getting the chance to hear from persons that I I would never have been able to converse with at this this level, and to hear a young man like Sean in the field, and and and, and throwing his weight behind another young man, Sean Trudor, who we heard uh, before and um to to hear from seasoned uh persons and persons who are professionals mm -hmm. is helpful this is all part of the educational process mm -hmm. and, and and informs us that's the other thing that 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 the church needs to, to do and that is to inform itself on yes. issues yes you cannot be aware of what is happening and so prayer for change and work on change if you are in the ivory tower mm -hmm. and yeah. unaware of what is happening, happening to the people yeah if you are cloistered in your ecclesiastical uh environment you're like a cloistered nun you don't know what's going on you're in there praying but what are you praying about mm -hmm. you know jesus's first sermon was healing the brokenhearted mm -hmm. setting captives free mm -hmm. dealing with the, the crushing burdens of his day and he didn't start preaching at 12 he started preaching at 30. Mm -hmm. he saw the plight of his people mm -hmm. he heard their cries he was aware of the sociological milieu around him and therefore he was able to function Mm -hmm. he was accused of hanging out with the sinners mm -hmm. the drinkers he was accused the what the, the, the pharisees and others couldn't understand what kind of rabbi are you and you're <laughs> the rubble you know 
You're with the rabble. You're supposed to be aloof from this. You're supposed to be away from this. But he said to them, a uh, the scripture that we know quite well, it's not the sick, it's not the well that needs the physician, but the sick. Mm -hmm. I didn't come to be served. I came to serve. To serve. Right. Yeah. You can't serve unless you know what is the need. And one of the things that the church has been again lacks in mm -hmm. is on aware of the issues. And okay. and, and, and we, we hear the, the, the uh pasted over issues on television mm -hmm. and the news, but the church has to be able to talk to people who can take them behind the scenes and know what is really going on. Mm -hmm. Yeah. The, the need of Bruce Hennis that can break down the central bank's governor's uh, statement mm -hmm. so that the church is informed as to what's the true complexion of debt in the country. Right. Mm -hmm. If you do not know, uh, you, you need a Christian woman like the president of BAM that will be able to say to prime minister, this is the, this is the reality and these are the policies you should consider. Mm -hmm. I will be able to speak in forums as to what is happening so that we have someone that can give us a, 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 a true picture of what is going on so mm -hmm. that we are not reacting, but we are responding responsibly. Mm -hmm. The church has to be resourced and researched. We are living in the air, Sister Marcia. I'm preaching, and, and I got young people down there who are checking out on Google to see if what I'm saying is true. <laughs> yes, yes, yes. Before a pastor was the uh, one of the brightest bulbs in the chandelier. <laughs> That's no longer necessarily the case. Right. You preach it to people who have higher degrees than you, who have competencies in areas that you better be careful when you touch on them, that you are talking sensibly and you're not giving some spurious opinion because mm. that could upend your whole sermon. Mm. Yeah. You know, if you yeah. don't know the difference between a heart and a kidney and you're up there talking nonsense, you are <laughs> in trouble. So we, we need we need as a church, as pastors and leaders, we need to be educated mm -hmm. on the issues. And you need to be aware of what's going on. God says, I hear the cry of my people. Moses, I need you to go. Mm -hmm. Moses didn't wait to deliver the people because you know it's unfair. He he went because the cry of the people in Egypt had grown to to crisis proportions mm -hmm, mm -hmm. at first they were living well with the egyptians but mm -hmm. there was a pharaoh that they know joseph yes and that yes. Has happened even mm -hmm. even when there's decadence and decay god said i am going he told abraham i'm going down there to sodom and gomorrah the angels mm -hmm. he said his angels i'm going to see if the report of heaven matches the reality on the ground mm -hmm. how awesome god is he knows already but god gives us a fair chance god gives us an opportunity to repent and to turn away from our situation but the cry of the people in sodom and gomorrah is what caused him to want to uh to, to, to investigate it mm -hmm, mm -hmm. and he did because correct it, it wasn't just the carnal behavior of those that we know obviously living in sin but it seemed because of that carnal behavior the society was suffering and people were crying out for relief mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. and he had an abraham on the hill crying out as an intercessor on their behalf mm -hmm. so if mm -hmm. you don't know what is happening how can you function as a church? Right. The, the young woman that is sitting in your church may have had an abortion. How do you minister to her through that pain? Or, or, or this person may have been molested. Or this mother don't know how she's going to pay uh, rent. And this father don't know, now that he lost his job, how am I going to keep my children in school? Mm -hmm. It's all right to say, how you doing, brother? Oh, man, I'm blessed, man. Too blessed to be stressed, man. <laughs> blessed and highly favored and blessed and highly flavored. 
you know, <laughs> those are wonderful greetings. But underneath that, underneath that beige and pride, mm -hmm. there are some seething problems. Correct. We, we are too, we may be too ashamed to, to say because we don't want to lose face. And, mm -hmm. and, and, and too many, too many um, ministries have preached the gospel of prosperity. Mm -hmm. So if you if you don't got money to feed your children, something wrong. <laughs> no, no, it may be because of the policies of the uh, of the company that he's working for. Mm -hmm. It may be because there, there's a break in the marriage and the family has broken down. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. If you don't know the issues of the day, if you don't know what is going on in your country, how do you? not address that issue when one of your good tithing members tell you pastor mm -hmm. don't look for what i gave you before because i mm -hmm. just got a 20 percent cut mm. and i have barely enough to pay bills right you can tell them give it give till it hurt or are you going to address that sister sit with them look uh, at this the picture for the constituencies, constituencies, where it's a much tighter margin uh, for Sandra uh, Husbands and uh, Ronnie Yearwood, as while well, Edmund Hinkson has pulled away uh, quite significantly from uh, Charles Rural over in St. James uh, North. So that's a, a very tight picture. That's really been the, the tightest uh, margin so far that it's been in St. James South. Let's just uh, give you some other uh, results that have uh, returns that have started to come in. For St. Michael North, Davis and Ishmael, the newcomer uh, there for the Barbados Labour Party, is comfortably ahead with 421 votes against Burton O'Hara's 117 votes, all aggregate, for the Democratic Labour Party. Uh, Maria Phillips of the Alliance uh, Party for Progress has pulled thus far 46 votes. So once again, to Michael North, 421 for Davidson Ishmael for the Bs, Burton o Harrison, 117, 117 for the Dabbers, and for the APP, Maria Phillips with 46. To Michael Northeast, we have uh, uh, had no further result from there, except that uh, that's a runaway victory for the incumbent, the prime minister, Mia Motley with 2,239 votes against 318 uh, by Damien Griffith of the Democratic Party and Roy Turney's 27 for the Bajan Free Party. In St. Michael Southeast, another good looking picture for the Bs as the Education Minister, Santia Bradshaw, has pulled 2,082 votes as far against Pedro Shepard's 525 votes. I'm speaking in aggregate terms, and 130 two votes for Patrick Tannis of the APP. Now, let's look back at Christchurch and the Christchurch corridor. Nothing yet from Christchurch East or uh, from Christchurch West, where William Duguid is uh, up against Andrew Cave. And in Christchurch East, Wilfred Abrams will be hoping uh, to hold on, and Dennis Lowe will be hoping to regain uh, the seat he lost last time around with uh, three other candidates. Uh, the prominent surfer Brian Talma as an independent, Victor Knight of the Alliance Party for Progress, uh, a builder uh, challenging uh, the Abrams uh, incumbency, and Solutions Barbados with Pauline Corbett. Nothing there so far. But in Christchurch East Central, Ryan Strong running away with 1,597 votes in aggregate against Rashid Belgrave's 512 votes. So uh, that's a three to one uh, margin there for uh, Strawn over Belgrave of the DLP and the Bajan Free Party, 55 votes for Jeanette Eiffel and Sean Tudor with 76 votes for the APP. In Christchurch West Central, Adrian Medic Ford still at 698 votes, but very far ahead of uh, Renette Demont of the DLP with 169 votes and 47 votes for the APP's Belfield Belgrave and Solutions Barbados Kenneth Lewis with 24 votes. In Christchurch South, Ralph Thorne 
the attorney, the incumbent for the Barbados Labour Party, 807 votes so far. Mark Laurent, the challenger for the Democratic Labour Party, 192 votes in aggregate. John Leacock of the, Indi uh, the independent candidate with uh, 57 votes now. And uh, just <laughs> got updated there. And uh, Buddy Larrier, uh, the other independent candidate with 35, there you see the picture uh, uh, now for Christchurch East Central, where uh, Ryan Strong is uh, very comfortably ahead. And so the defense minister will feel uh, that he will be uh, returned comfortably there. Now let's move across to uh, the St. Michael Corridor uh, once again. Uh, St. Michael North, Burton L. Harrison of the Democratic Labour Party, only polling so far 117 votes against Davidson Ishmael, the Battle of the Newcomers, Davidson Ishmael, 421 in St. Michael North, and Maria Phillips of the APP uh, with uh, just uh, 46 votes, yes, for the APP and Maria Phillips. Uh, in St. James, we've uh, seen Kingston ahead, uh, almost by 10 to 1, uh, and uh, but again, a very tight margin for Sandra Husbands, 319 thus far against uh, Ronnie Yearwood's 262. Over in uh, St. Peter, Colin Jordan, so far with 454 votes against Alwyn Babb, polling 200 votes for the Dems. Lynn Royce Canterbury of uh, the new Barbados Kingdom Alliance, uh, that looks like uh, 19 votes. And uh, the Barbados Sovereign Party with Michael Thompson getting just two votes there in St. Peter. So 454 against 200, Colin Jordan, uh, the Labour Minister against uh, Alvin Babb, the challenger for the death. In St. John, uh, so far 1,308 votes have been tallied for Charles Griffith uh, and uh, 869 uh, votes for Andre World as uh, those boxes start to, to turn uh, more towards World. But is it enough for him to uh, surpass Griffith at this stage? Uh, looking very tight with about half uh, the total votes uh, that we expect to be uh, counted for that uh, seat to be for. Uh, Philippe Amy of the Alliance Party for Progress, 83 votes. So 1,308 for Griffith, 869 for World, uh, the Dems in St. John. Over in St. George North, 1,079 votes for Tony Moore thus far against uh, Herbert Hero's total tally of 438 votes. Fernand Nichols of the Alliance Party for Progress, 52 votes. And Melissa Tate, the independent candidate, only 18 votes. In St. George South, looking very comfortable for uh, Dwight Sutherland and looking very disappointing for Dom Marie Armstrong of the Democratic Labour Party, who so far has pulled in aggregate 179 votes uh, against 792 votes for uh, Dwight Sutherland and uh, 17 votes for the Solutions Barbados candidate, but Everton Holligan, the Alliance Party uh, for Progress candidate in St. George. So, so far, no score. No score so far for any of the constituencies in the uh, St. Philip quarter, but we hope to be getting uh, something soon, St. George in St. Philip's North, St. Philip's South, and in St. Philip's West. Everyone will be looking at uh, the challenge of uh, the Agriculture Minister, uh, the incumbent, in Darwin for the Barbados Labour Party, facing Neil Marshall of the Dems and uh, Ronald Lord of Solutions Barbados, Bruce Hennis of uh, the Alliance Party for Progress. In St. Philip North, we will be looking at whether Michael Lashley uh, will be able to regain that seat which he lost to Sonia Brown, uh, the physician, uh, the incumbent for the Barbados Labour Party of the Bat Venture, uh, when Beckles, the independent, along with uh, Omar Smith and then Jim Newton for the Alliance Party for Progress. And of course, the other big battleground, uh, the one in St. Philip, uh, would have to be the St. Philip West, where David Estwick of the Democratic Labour Party will be looking to regain the seat uh, with Kay McConney, the newcomer, uh, who was a senator in the last government, uh, and uh, will be hoping to win that back for the, the bees. Solutions Providence candidate, Karina Goodridge, and Lynette Eastman, uh, the former leader of the United Progressive Party, who's joined forces uh, with uh, the People's Party for Democracy to form the APP, 
the last part of the progress. She's also challenging. She's back in the West looking for that tool here. So that's the picture so far. Uh, if there are any further updates, I'll bring them to you. But uh, as a look at it, so far, the right quite in sync is the Michael Carter with just the Michael Northeast, the Michael North, the Michael Southeast uh, returns in. Uh, nothing yet from St. James Central, where Kerry Simmons uh, will Okay. All right. So um, here we here we have it. Is it going to be a thirty thirty again? Fa Favor King um, is saying that um, you know that Favor King has here um, VLP thirty thirty. Favor um, King, uh, would would that be healthy for the country? And um, if even if that happens, is that something that is healthy um, you know, for the country? You know, um, Sean, I was I was looking that at least we would have a healthy opposition at a minimum. Right. At a minimum. What, 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 what do you, what do you think is going to happen now? <laughs> um. So we, we're seeing a lot of support for the blp administration um i would still say it is it is early days yet um it'd be interesting to see what happened in the in st philip seats um i'm very interested to see what will happen in reverend athlete's seat as well uh, so there's still there's still a lot lot we, we're still a long way from from a final outcome in, in this election even though we are seeing mm -hmm. much support for the current BLP administration. Mm -hmm. um, I think it will be interesting to see what happens in St. James South as well, Ronnie Yearwood and Sandra Husbands. Um, that's the closest margin so far. So far, yeah. Um, yeah, so we, we'll see what happens there as well. Mm -hmm. But um, I, mm -hmm. I I don't believe there will be that 30 level mm -hmm. again. Don't think it's thirty third. Well, Favor King is says saying that it is going to be thirty thirty because the people they like the way the country is going and never let a good thing go. <laughs> BLP, whoa, whoa, you know. So um, that that's what um, Favor. I don't know if it's a male or female. Um, thank you for your comment, Favor King. Um, is saying that we like the way the country is going. You you believe that's what is happening here? Is this? Uh, Pastor Paul, do you think that what this is what is being reflected in these results that the people like the way the country is going? Absolutely not. Um, I don't. I don't even think that in 2018 that the people wanted a 30 love result. So um, I think to gauge it strictly on votes is 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 uh, is not enough uh, enough of a metric. Because uh, there are other factors that must be brought into play. We were talking earlier about financing the campaign. Mm. Uh, I, I don't want to song as though we're eating some grapes here because they have no fear as to what God can do in spite of whatever is done. Mm -hmm. Saul was anointed king, but David was the beloved of the Lord to rise to power. Mm -hmm. So, you know, uh, I am not, I'm not at all perturbed uh, mm -hmm. at, at what's mm -hmm. happening because I believe the God that we have prayed to. You, to answer your question more poignantly, no, I do not agree with the direction that our government has turned. Mm -hmm. There is too much, uh, there's too much capitulation to the modern world. There's too much uh, surrender of our sovereignty to, to forces that are beyond our borders. There's too much uh, gifting to the wealthy and taking from the poor. Mm -hmm. uh, for example, one of the first things this government did is give uh, a haircut, uh, economic haircut, to all those Barbadians who stepped forward under the last administration and bought bonds to help shore up the country. They didn't like the slides mm -hmm. that they were getting, the downgrades that was happening. And many people took up substantial sums of money and bought bonds because they're saying five years, this is going to give me my 5%, which the banks were giving you. Mm -hmm. If you're getting 1%, you're lucky, point something percent on your return on your monies. And they bought the government bonds. 
out of loyalty to the government. And of course, they were expecting a return. Mm -hmm. On the ground, you hear people who, 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 who were expecting that that money was going to give them the means to send their grandson to college or to take care of, fat, or, or, of various things. The people who, who when they closed their business, mm -hmm. they took their money and they invested it. Their, their companies that bought bonds, banks, credit unions, churches bought bonds, and the, this government did something unprecedented. It defaulted on government paper. It defaulted on the surest investment yeah. in a country. Mm -hmm. How do you tell an 85-year-old person we're deferring your payment 15 years? Mm -hmm. yeah. How do you tell pensioners that have given you their money? That's a loan. A bond is a debt that has to be paid when it matures. Mm -hmm. And you, without, without flinching, mm -hmm. this government unilaterally changed mm -hmm. the terms of the contract. A bond is a contract mm -hmm. that you don't, it is, it is unheard of that you don't pay a government bond. And this government, without any flinching, changed the terms. Not only did they defer the payment, but they cut the interest in some cases less than 50%. Mm -hmm. More than 50%. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. How, do you, how do you do that? That is that is that is wrong. At the same time, you reduce the taxes of corporations yeah. between five to one percent. How do you do that? All right? Mm -hmm. And and the OECD, the, the, this overseas company that protects all of its clientele so that when they have business in your country, they pay the least possible tax. Was able to convince Minister Donville Innes to sign an agreement to reduce the tax to 1%. Mm. And it was done. And then government turned around and did the same for the, the countries within the, 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 the country, the mm -hmm. companies within the country. Worse, they then turn around and raise taxes on water, on utilities, <laughs> on gas. <laughs> and I and was, and was felt proud that they raised 40 million in about three months from the gas tax when the gas tax was not even fair because the gas tax was to replace the road tax. Yeah. Right. When you put it on gas, you're paying road tax, and all you all you gassing up was your weed walker. Mm -hmm. <laughs> your jet ski. Mm -hmm. So it was disproportionately applied mm -hmm. again to people in the poor. Mm -hmm. Worse, this government forgave 10 years of VAT on corporations. Correct. Mm -hmm. That is ridiculous. <laughs> well, you know what? Yeah, but people are this is what they're saying. I mean, that oh the, well, this is what the people what the people want. You know, I don't think the people are aware of these things because I don't think there was any voices to articulate it in the public space. Mm -hmm. Joseph Atherley by himself could not articulate this, especially when government controls the major organs of media. Exactly. Uh -huh. how, how, how are you going to bring up the issue? Mm. At, on top of that, government has two to three PR firms. Mm -hmm. Yeah. To get out its message plus the gis mm -hmm. how in heaven's name uh, is the public going to be aware now if you say to the ordinary man in the street that a company like unicorma which mm -hmm. we know here as courts owed over 35 it is estimated 35 million dollars in VAT that was unpaid mm. and that was forgiven what's the average man going to tell you Oh, that's all right. The government doing a good job. Absolutely mm -hmm. not. 
-hmm. but were they made aware? Who was going to make them aware? Mm -hmm. And this is why I'm saying the church has to be educated because how are you mm -hmm. going to cry against injustice if you don't know that's happening? Right, right. Withholding that is fraud. Fraud. Mm -hmm. You cannot send a man to jail for writing a bad check and a company owes millions in VAT that the public paid mm -hmm. in taxes. The mm -hmm. company took it and used it for its own purposes, mm -hmm. depriving the public purse, mm -hmm. and then you forgive it. Tell me what, on what basis did you forgive the VAT? <laughs> and know, also the pandemic gave them stimulus packages. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And the hotel workers, many of them, have not been given severance. So how in heaven's name can you say this is justice that the uh, the the, the, the uh, government is doing a good job that's not a good job you have burdened the poor you have mm -hmm. deprived the poor and you have enriched those who mm -hmm. are already rich that is wrong mm -hmm. and let me say this sister marcia brother sean mm -hmm. i shudder i shudder when i think of the cries of <laughs> old people of this country who have been deprived of their monies that they invest in, in bonds and other i i don't want to be the one that they cry against and said god look what they do with my money <laughs> oh my god the tears tears of tears of you know um but, but you know sean you would have worked with um sean tudor and he mm -hmm. i mean for the short space of time you know i mean the, the snap election obviously was in her favor yeah um, the the uh you know the opposition had no money because she took the entire purse she right. took the entire subvention the whole three hundred thousand dollars were taken to run yeah. her campaign yeah. right plus the the money that came in from overseas and all and so these the, there's there was nothing no one there to, to they didn't have the resources um you know but they put up a good fight they yeah. did you know, someone like um, Sean Tudor, what's going in your mind right now? Uh, several things. <laughs> I, I I agree with Pastor Paul, firstly, that uh, the government hasn't done a good job. Um, no need to repeat what he was, what he said, fully agreed. Um, we see, I, I mean, for me, even as it relates to today, I have a major, major problem with about 6,000 people being disenfranchised, not being able to vote today. That's unprecedented in Barbados. Um, you you are talking about punching above your weight. I see some results coming again. 116 votes uh, for the APP. Let's head back to St. George North. St. George North looking very good for the Labour Party and for Tony Moore uh, to regain the seat that she won in the by-election with 1,079 votes. Herbert Harewood, the human resource specialist of, uh, and the, the uh, challenger for the Democratic Labour Party with just 438 votes. Ferdinand Nichols of the APP with 52 votes and uh, Melissa Tate, the independent candidate with 18. Uh, no further results just yet in St. George South, but again, very comfortable lead for Dwight Sutherland the Barbados Labour Party with 792 votes uh, as against Don Marie Armstrong, who was uh, a, a star on the stage, but doesn't seem to be a star in the polling booth with 179 votes thus far for her and the Dems and Alison Weeks of Solutions Barbados polling, 17 votes, no uh, score for Evelyn Hogan for the APP. In St. Philip North, 520 to 438, I gave you that result, uh, uh, return thus far. Uh, that is the uh, closest margin we have uh, for the, actually the lead for the Democratic Labour Party and the closest margin for a challenge, 438 votes. So that's going to be a very interesting uh, night for the Dems if they can hold on. Could that be uh, the, the very first seat to be declared for the Democratic Labour Party? We'll have to wait and see. That's the picture so far uh, at uh, just short of a quarter of midnight. 
with uh, no returns just yet for uh, Saint, uh, for the city of Bridgetown. I can give you some indication that William Duguid is uh, doing very well and pulling away comfortably for Christ Church West, for the Barbados Labour Party. Uh, that just coming in just a moment ago, about three minutes ago. So we'll have that on the big board in a moment. But uh, William Duguid with uh, looking like some votes uh, as opposed to Andrew Cave pulling roughly just short of 200 votes for uh, him in Christ Church West for the Democratic Labour Party. And we expect uh, a final count for St. Michael Southeast in just a moment and possibly a declaration there. Uh, I see uh, Kareem uh, is uh, with me now, looking like still at the Darrell Jordan Secondary School. Uh, Kareem, and uh, what's the picture there? Yeah, no longer at the Darrell Jordan Secondary School. We've traveled, uh, my my photographer, Kimar Holder, and I have traveled uh, across the, the highway to a to the Queen's College School, uh, where the votes at uh, St. James South are being tallied, and we have some some more results for you. Initially, you would have had uh, the results for FF1, uh, and so, well, just for FF1, but we've gotten two more boxes in, and at first, of course, there would have been quite a thin margin between Sandra Husband and Dr. Ronnie Yearwood of the Democratic Labour Party, but that margin has widened just a bit. So the result for FF2, A to G, Sandra Husbands has captured 196 votes, uh, whereas Ronnie Yearwood would have captured 103. FS2, H to B, Sandra Husbands has captured 238 to Dr. Yearwood, 127. Uh, moving on to FS3, A to J, Sandra Husbands has captured 152 votes uh, to Ronnie's 61, and the same with FS3, K to Z, Ronnie Yearwood has captured 90 votes to Sandra Husband's 106, and that is giving us a total for the BLP incumbent candidate, Sandra Husband, of 1,011 votes to Ronnie Yearwood's 643 votes, with a difference of 368. So there's still quite a few other boxes to be counted, but Certainly, Sandra Husband appears to have quite an edge. Uh, not certain if it's an unassailable lead just as yet, but she does have the edge. A few moments ago, just before these votes uh, came in, I spoke to Dr. Yearwood. I spoke to Dr. Yearwood, and he, in his usual fashion, quite calm, quite collected, uh, he said that he is waiting patiently. Of course, he has assured me that he's very excited. He was very excited at that point about the how close the race was, uh, but he has assured me that regardless of the outcome, um, he, he will be satisfied uh, that the people of St. James South will have spoken. All right. Uh, you see one secondary school in the background. You think you've seen them all. Thank you for that uh, update. You have uh, gathered pace and moved south from St. Lucie uh, to, as you heard uh, from uh, Kareem, at uh, Queen's College, where the count is on at St. James South, with uh, Sandra Husband uh, pulling away with 1,011 votes against one of, your, uh, one of the hopefuls for the round and for the three. And the Common Mayor School, where the Alliance Party for Progress, the incumbent leader of the opposition, if you want to put it that way, uh, Joseph Adderley, uh very much uh, polling thus far, and this is just the one box. So let's, you know, hold on to our seats, but just one box in St. Michael Central. Uh, my tally puts it at 826 votes for Joseph Adderley in that box, MA1, and uh, Arthur Holder, uh, 196 votes there. Mm -hmm. for St. Michael Central. Let me see if we've got a, 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 a bigger picture just yet for St. Michael Central. Should be coming in in a moment. And so, yes, 196 votes uh, in, in that box so far for Arthur Holder. Corey Cox of the DLP, 
68 votes and Joseph Adderley trailing with 26 votes to the Alliance Party for Progress. Uh, the picture in uh, St. Uh, Michael, St. So Michael, uh, just a moment, let me just uh, get uh, some more figures coming in. They're fast and furious as it were. So we've got uh, only St. Michael Northwest, St. Michael South, the city of Bridgetown, St. Michael West Central uh, to come. I'm trying to regain control of my machine, but when I do that, I will be able to get back to you right now. So I can tell you uh, that our first returns from St. Michael East, the former Environment Minister Trevor Prescott, 944 votes against Nicholas Allen's 474 votes for the Democratic Labour Party with Erskine Branch of the APP polling 15-9 votes. So uh, a very good lead for uh, St. Michael East for the Barbados Labour Party with Trevor Prescott, uh, who has polled 1,112 votes in aggregate, uh, doubling uh, the returns thus far for Nicholas Ali of the Democratic Labour Party. Uh, the Back to St. Michael's uh, Central, uh, the Arthur Holder, uh, 408 votes. So the Speaker of the House is uh, looking very comfortable right now against the challenger Corey Cox, 123, and the erstwhile uh, leader of the opposition, Joseph Adler of the APP, with 41 votes. Uh, we've gone St. James, no change there, but still uh, Sandra Hudson's pulling away. Sandra. So that's a BLP lead for uh, St. James South. In St. George, BLP lead for St. George North, BLP lead for St. George South. For St. Philip, uh, DLP lead for, with 520 votes uh, against uh, 438 votes. 520 to Michael Lashley, 438 to Sonia Brown of the, uh, Dr. Sonia Brown of the Barbados Labour Party. And uh, let's just go back to, to Christchurch. Uh, again, Ryan Strawn, Wilfred Abrams is now polling uh, uh, and polling very well against uh, Dennis Lowe in Christchurch East. 759 votes three. thus far for Wilfred three. Abrams. Three. Amy, GSC three. This is St. John. Philip Amy, two. Charles Griffith, 108. Andrea Warren, 37. A total of 147 votes. JC, four. A to Z. Philip Amy, 11. Charles Griffith, 219. Andrea Worrell, 57, total of 287. JD1, let us see. Philip Amy, 14. Charles Griffith, 187. Andrea Worrell, 106. Mm -hmm. A total of 307 votes. And JD2, A to Z. Philip Amy, 6. Charles Griffith, 61. Andrea Worrell, 49. All right, so that's the picture in uh, St. John with uh, 1,883 for Charles Griffith. Uh, the incumbent for the Labour Party, and uh, 1,118 votes for Andre Worrell, and 116 votes thus far for Philippe Amy of the APP. We're getting word that uh, the first declaration of the, the night has uh, occurred, just occurred, and that is in St. Michael Northeast with the incumbent, the leader of the Barbados Labour Party, and uh, the Prime Minister, uh, for now. So that's uh, our winner there for uh, the Barbados Labour Party. We can uh, 
declare that for St. Michael Northeast. She has been speaking to party supporters uh, just now, and we hope to bring that to, to you in just a moment, uh, those pictures coming from uh, that the constituency, St. Michael Northeast. Uh, we will also get uh, returns coming in uh, in a moment for St. Michael East, but we just uh, gave you, uh, no no change there, Trevor Prescott, well ahead of Nicholas Ali, the Labour Party candidate, head of the Democratic Labour Party challenger there in St. Michael East. And uh, again, the story of the night thus far, the Democratic Labour Party managing to hold uh, a, a, a lead, albeit slender right now, uh, the only so far, uh, and the only likely uh, turn of events for the Labour Party, as uh, Michael Lashley, the former uh, former housing minister, uh, erstwhile attorney general for the Democratic Labour Party, is seeking to regain the seat he lost to Sonia, Dr. Sonia Brown in the last general election. 520 votes for Lashley, 438 votes for Dr. Brown. That's the position right now. As soon as we get uh, some more uh, coming in, let me just make sure, refreshing the screen all the time. Nothing yet from uh, the city of Bridgetown, the Michael Northwest, or some Michael West, or some Michael Cent West Central. Hope to get that to you as soon as it comes in. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Thank you so much, Dave. Um, so quite a bit of. Thank you, Dave. Yeah. Um, you know, I, I'm seeing, I saw, uh, I can see people are, you know, think, rejoicing. They want a 30-30 and, and acting as though it's sports day. Guys, you're talking about democracy here. You're talking about democracy. And that is, that is what is at stake. And that what, it's not about whether, you know, uh, you know, this is my party and this has been the party that I've been, you know, my parents have always voted this way. It's all about the red, the red color, and we want red. It's not sports day. You talk about people's lives. You talk about democracy. You talk about the soul of the nation. And so um, there's nothing, there's nothing great. Even if you're a BLP supporter, you should be concerned. You should be concerned. And but that is just, that is just the state of of, of the, the the minds of the people, yeah. That's yeah, people. Hmm. Uh, Wayne Hoyt is saying the same people will be impacted with whatever decisions will be made. So um, it's not, and that's always this has always been it been it for me. Um, it's about democracy and not having, you know, um, giving somebody free reign to do what it is that they want to do. You know, yeah, it's very, very dangerous. Um, you you will figure from having the twenty nine to one, well, thirty love initially, then twenty nine to one, that um, Barbadians would have been a little wiser um, because you, there is a need for for an oppos opposition. So it's very interesting to see what is happening. But you know, the 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 prime minister did ask the people not to vote in an opposition mm -hmm. so we again we wait and see if it will be a 30 30 to 0 or 29 to 1 um based on the results so far we see that michael ashley is now leading in that saint philip um saint philip seat mm -hmm. so we see what happened in those other saint philip constituencies um as well mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. i think yeah. i think going back to what what you were saying before you went to those last set of results um and even what pastor paul was saying earlier the i'm, I'm of the firm belief that there's there's no government that will gain power without the vote of the church so from okay. the results that we are seeing it's clear that the church has has been voting for the the blp administration mm -hmm. um are they making informed decisions is the question that we can ask. And as far as Paul was saying before, probably not. Okay. And again, the, again, the last bit before we went to those results, we were talking about the media and the control of the media. And we know that the BLP has a well-oiled um, media machine. Any, any format of media that you can mention, they pretty much have it locked down. They have the resources, they have the resource people 
um, the the amount of money that has been spent in this campaign, I think, even superseded what we saw in 2018. Wow. Um, and it is we're seeing the results of that. We're seeing that if you can push a particular narrative, whether it's propaganda or truth, whoever has the power to push that narrative seems to be swaying the people mm -hmm. in, in their direction. Uh, media is very powerful. Music is very powerful. All three of us here on this call know the power of music mm -hmm. and the power of media, how effective it is. And I think that's what we're seeing, one of the things we're seeing being resulting here. So I think going forward, apart from the church praying and fasting, one of the things we need to do, as Pastor Paul was saying earlier, we need to educate the church. The church mm -hmm. needs to be informed so that they can make informed decisions and not just um, making decisions based on surface stuff and what is being put out there. Um, what, what I found interesting was that there are so apart from the well oil machine that the blp has um i can tell you for a fact especially especially in my capacity and leading the the uh, media team in app there were several ads that try to get going on uh, barbados today that were all rejected every one of them were rejected yeah we we asked for um a reason why the first one was rejected um, we, we didn't get an answer to that. We had it edited, we resubmitted it to them, and they still rejected it. So you, on one hand, you have, like I said, a well oil machine, lots of resources, yeah. lots of money to push this media campaign. Then you have APP who have a whole set of ads. We to, we, we're not asking them to, to run our ads for free. You know, we, we, we book slots. We, we, we send the ads to them and they refuse to run our ads. So anything that, and it goes back to what you were saying there, Jess and Marcia, the danger of, of, of democracy being challenged. All right. we, we, yeah. we, we, we need democracy. Um, persons can say that under the last administration that um, Frandel, you know, they, they used to talk much. But at least there was still democracy. There was still freedom of speech. There was still freedom of expression um even though he he may not have been doing it himself there was still that freedom for the people democracy was still alive on the this current administration i questioned it and i questioned it on, on several occasions because there anything anyone that opposes the prime minister seems to to get shut down seems to get muzzled um seem to get a gag order on them or they they receive a hefty um salary to come on to her team we, we've mm -hmm. seen it uh, with the majority of um, starcom network vob moderators from from down to brass stacks you you call a name from from one of the original brass stack moderators and i tell you where they are in government right now they've all been given positions and, and hefty salaries from from the prime right. minister that's not good for democracy again it's controlling mm -hmm. the media and therefore controlling the the narrative so those who are not informed um, will make decisions that they're doing now. They're mm -hmm. making uninformed decisions because, because the media is being controlled. Mm -hmm. That's why we need to get Christians also in, in the media space. We need to get Christians over there speaking. And again, going back to the point that, that Pastor Paul made, when you just have Reverend Athley and persons are seeing him as a defector from, from the BLP administration, and then they push that narrative oh he's a traitor mm -hmm. you know they have the machinery to push that narrative and people are constantly hearing it over and over and over um so they tend to believe it after a while so his voice doesn't have that lone voice doesn't have the weight even mm -hmm. though he's speaking truth it doesn't have the weight and the impact that, that it should have mm -hmm. so you you're correct with it with the lack of um a lot of opposition you know democracy democracy is, is being challenged i see some other results are coming again mm -hmm. so 819 votes for the democratic labor party challenge votes for the Beijing free uh candidate uh jeanette eiffel and sean tudor of the app with 102 votes so barbara today calls it for christ church east central for the bees but the dramatic development now is in st michael north where it is very, very tight and a very, very narrow lead for the Dems in St. Michael North. 
with the totals thus far, and I'm giving you aggregate totals, 561 votes for Burtnell Harrison of the Democratic Labour Party against Davis and Ishmael, who had very uh, strong showing in, early in the evening, but now it's fallen back to 551. Still very much within the margin of error, if you would like, uh, if, you, if you'd like uh, to, to put it. But Mar Maria Phillips of the APP getting 85 votes. So that's the picture in St. Michael North, a very, very slim uh, lead for the Dems in St. Michael North, uh, as there are two newcomers in Burton Harrison and Davis and Ishmael uh, for the Barbados Labour Party. Now, let's uh, go back to St. Philip North. Still no change with uh, the situation there. 520 votes for Michael Lashley, 438 votes for Dr. Sonia Brown. The other development, though, in St. Michael is in St. Michael South Central with Marsha Cattle uh, holding a slender lead, a reasonable lead of 320 votes, as opposed to Richard Seeley's 136. But that's a very large constituency and lots more votes to count, but still encouraging numbers for the incumbent in uh, the person of Marsha Cattle. Not unencouraging or discouraging uh, figures for Richard Seeley thus far. Just got an update, and the picture is looking a lot brighter for Marsha Cattle with 541 votes for the Labour Party incumbent, as opposed to 286 votes for which is here's the result coming in so far from the Marshall Cattle, one. David Gill, 11. Seeley, 41. One spot for it. That's it. That's it, says uh, Leanne Butcher there for St. Michael South Central, the returning officer there. And the figures in aggregate terms means that uh, Marsha Cattle is leading by a two to one margin, 1,044 votes thus far for Cattle and Richard Seeley, 499 for the DLP. Richard David Gill, the Carrington Village uh, hometown boy, getting 139 uh, votes for the APP. So 1,044 for Marsha Cattle, 499 for Richard Seeley, 139 for David Gill, as Marsha Cattle holds her own in St. Michael South Central against a challenge from the former tourism minister, Richard Seeley. So Philip North, uh, we're keeping an eye on that, no change there, but uh, uh, a lead still for the Dems in St. Philip uh, North. It, no uh, results yet for St. Philip South or St. Philip West just yet. Over in St. George South, Dwight Sutherland, uh, very far ahead of Don Marie Armstrong, Barbados Labour Party leading in the parish of St. George, both in St. George North and St. George South. Tony Moore, the uh, General Secretary of the, Bar of the Barbados Workers Union and a member of Parliament for St. George. Uh, North, the incumbent, 
is likely to be returned uh, there against uh, Herbert Herwood of the Democratic Labour Party. In St. Peter, Colin Jordan, comfortably ahead. Marvelous Labour Party, uh, looks like a Labour Party hole there in uh, St. Peter. In uh, St. John, picture not yet uh, updated. So 1,883 votes for Charles Griffith of the Barbados Labour Party, 1,118 votes. So we can comfortably say that Charles Griffith has held the uh, St. John seat for the, the bees, and this is the second time in recent electoral history uh, that uh, the Barbados Labour Party uh, has held on to St. John and Andre Worrell uh, being uh, defeated in his challenge against Charles Griffith, uh, the Water Resources Minister and Labour Party incumbent. In St. Lucie, the picture very grim for Brother Pisa, very bright for Peter Phillips to be able uh, to hold on uh, to the seat as a rookie uh, for the Barbados Labour Party, getting 788 uh, votes, not a rookie in this election, rookie in the last one. And uh, he is at 788 as opposed to 342 for Brother Pisa. No change there. We're hoping to get further results uh, from those constituencies. As well as in James South, Sandra Hudson's pulling away with just less than a, a two to one margin over Dr. Ronnie Yearwood. In St. James North, uh, I think we can call it for Edna Hinkson there in St. James North. And uh, that is projected, Barbados, that is projected winner there for St. James North with Edna Hinkson thus far pulled 1,887 1, votes. That's 1,000. 887. Charles Rowe, 427 for the Democratic Labour Party. Uh, sound victory there, we project, for St. James North. Not an official declaration by the Electoral and Boundaries Commission, but we're calling it here for Barbados today for St. James uh, North for the BLP. Let's head back over to... I was about to say, uh, let's head back over to the St. Michael Corridor. And this is the picture though, thus far, with the Barbados Labour Party uh, leading in uh, all but one of the constituencies thus far. No reports just yet, and strangely so, for the city of Bridgetown. I'm looking to see uh, if we're getting any early information for the city of Bridgetown. But uh, that's a victory, though, in St. Michael uh, North East. For, sorry, I beg your pardon, St. Michael uh, Northeast, yes, that was declared for the Prime Minister, the incumbent. But uh, the big story of the night so far has been in St. Michael North, where Bertnell Harrison, the challenger uh, for, the, for the incumbency of the Labour Party, but the newcomer in Davidson Ishmael, 567 to Bertnell Harrison, 5. 51 for Davison Ishmael, 85 to Maria Phillips of the APP. But just now you saw Sandia Bradshaw comfortably winning. And St. Michael Southeast has uh, been a close run thing uh, for the victor over the many election cycles, but not this time around. With 2,325 votes for uh, the education minister in the last government, 2,325 compared to 575 for the newcomer and challenger, uh, Pedro Shepard for the Democratic Labour Party. 154 votes for the APP's candidate, Patrick Tannis. Uh, you might have heard earlier that uh, Arthur Holder was the Speaker of uh, the House in the last Parliament, uh, comfortably ahead of uh, the challengers. Corey Cox, the closest challenger, 201 votes. Uh, Joseph Avery, though, the incumbent as leader of the opposition, uh, looking for defeat. And that picture hasn't improved with the just refreshing of this screen. 860 votes now for Arthur Holder, 290 votes aggregate for Corey Cox, 98 votes 
for Joseph Atherley with Robert Toussaint of uh, Solutions Barbados getting six votes. So that's the picture for Arthur Holder looking to run away with victory in St. Michael Central. <laughs> in St. Michael East, Trevor Prestel, we said earlier, Marsha Cattle, 1,044, Richard Seeley, 499. Uh, that hasn't changed uh, thus far, as you heard just now from the returning officer, uh, Ms. Butcher, but uh, it's not looking uh, very good for the Dems, uh, hoping to recover St. Michael South Central, but uh, Marsha Cattle should be very uh, happy with uh, uh, the returns thus far in St. Michael South Central, coming up against uh, 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 a smear campaign of uh, whisper campaign uh, in the last uh, two or three days of uh, the campaign. But so far, that's not seen to have affected her uh, returns as far as the electorate of St. Michael South Central uh, is concerned. In There we have it, uh, Adrian Medic Ford uh, pulling away with 2,673 votes. Renette Dimmitt of the Democrat Labour Party, 695 votes, 184 votes for Belfield Belgrave of the APP. Solutions Barbados candidate Kenneth Lewis, 64, and there were whopping 27 spot votes uh, in Christchurch uh, West Central. But victory uh, from Barbados today for Adrian medic for. In Christchurch West, the housing minister, William Dugan, 737 votes against uh, Andrew Cave, the challenger for the Democrat Labour Party, 192 votes. Over in Christchurch East, Wilfred Abrams, 759 votes, well ahead of Dennis Lowe of the Democratic Labour Party, with 247 votes, 22 votes to Solutions Barbados' candidate uh, Pauline Corbin, Victor Knight of the APP, 24 votes, and the surfer Brian Tama uh, up against quite a bit of a head wind with 10 votes there, uh, but he's called for uh, that constituency of Christchurch. In Christchurch South, Ralph Thorne, 1,712 votes, and that's uh, looking for victory there for Ralph Thorne, opposed by Mark Laurent of the Democrat Labour Party with 564 votes, Buddy Laria with 70 votes, and uh, the other independent candidate, Donald Leacock, with 116 votes. Uh, let me just uh, get back to the St. Michael uh, Porter. Again, uh, we're winning uh, St. Michael Northwest, the keenly uh, watched battle between Ryan Walters and uh, Neil Rowe. We're also looking at St. Michael West with candidates Christopher Gibbs, Ricardo Williams, Victorine Wilson, and Patsy Nurse. In St. Michael South, Irvin Belgrave, uh, Patricia Cox, Kevin Miller, and Alex Mitchell, all seeking to unseat Kirk Humphrey. And uh, in uh, the city of Bridgetown, uh, Corey Lane uh, will be seeking uh, to regain uh, the seat uh, they created by the uh, Minister, Lieutenant Colonel Jeffrey Bostick, with uh, nothing yet we've got so far for the city of Bridgetown. And Kimar Stewart, uh, the head of uh, the Barbados Alliance uh, Against uh, Homelessness, uh, that's his uh, situation. Nothing there for Kimar Stewart, Marvel Ashley Todd, Fallon Bester, Corey Lane. Very unusual that the city of Bridgetown uh, is this late at uh, 18 minutes past 12. And I'm not using the 2018 uh, yardstick, but uh, generally speaking, that has been the picture. So the Barbados Labour Party at uh, 18 minutes past midnight, well ahead, romping to victory. Uh, it was not in dispute given the projections that we've seen so far for anything but a Labour Party return to power. The question is, which seats will they give up as uh, they return to Parliament? Uh,
Ah, we 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 are we are here, and we we had intended to be finished by midnight. <laughs> <laughs> I suspect we go up until um, another um, till twelve thirty. Um, okay. You know, we could refresh ourselves and so on, and and we we you know, but our viewers are still with us. And John Pilgrim is saying, "Lord, let your will be done for Christ's sake." Keep praying, saints. And I, I just want to say that sometimes we are looking for deliverance to come in one way, and we, you know, this this is not this is the first part of that. You know, it's yeah. the first part of it. It's a it's a beginning stages. I think that mm -hmm. our our candidates, they, you know, um, they, you know, it it was tough. It was tough in terms of money, etc. But they fought hard, and more importantly, they stepped up and said, "I will do it. Yeah, I will do it." Yeah. And that alone, I mean, is victory. That we had so many from the church stepping up and saying, "I will do it." Um, that in itself, mm -hmm. and it is, it is not a sprint, guys. You know, we this is where we are at, at this time, and we keep at it. We keep moving. You know, keep going. Um, you have something to say. Um, I, I'm looking at this, right? And I'm trying to understand the Bajan psyche, the mind of the Bajan. Trying to understand it. And I'm coming to some conclusions. When I look at what happened in 2018, and then I look at what's happening now, I can understand, I can rationalize, not 30 to 0, I can, I can rationalize the DLP not winning the election i cannot rationalize 30 to zero though but when you come here and look and see after three years of obvious ridiculousness if that's a word um from this administration and to see that it hasn't really changed i'm led to one conclusion that barbadians do not think very deeply when i look at to see what dr Ronnie yield is struggling Against Sandra Husbands. When I look to see Reverend Adderley is struggling, having heard from Lynette Eastman, Spark, St. Philip West, yeah, I'm curious, I'm very curious to see what happens there with Lynette Eastman. Um, when I see um, Reverend Lynn Rice Scandalbury um, really making a mark, when I see Verla de Pisa struggling against Peter Phillips, it tells me that. And these are names that are quality names. Forget the party now. Forget what party they're from. These are names that have content. Ronnie Yearwood, Reverend Atherley. You hear Reverend I mean, most Barbians would have heard Reverend Atherley um, deliver himself. Whether they agree or not, they, they heard the quality and the caliber of the individual. Um, a, lone, a lone opposition person against 39 other people, and he went up against them very strong very strong and I, I thought uh, my I, from my biased perspective we won but assuming you're not a christian and assuming you're you're just a person in society you have to admire i think you'd have to admire him um um reverend scandalbury who who went up against um some tough times during the covid season and and has come out strong and has come out in such a state that he will he, he's running and this is his third time and then there's a relative Pisa, um, who is a leader of a political party. A leader. So to be a leader of a political party who staved off, um, who staved off um, two challenges at the presidency, it means that this is a can. This is a person of, of of some caliber, of some worth and value. And to see that these people don't stand are not standing a chance. When you see the numbers, I feel it was a case where they were like ten. 10 votes apart or 15 20 votes or 100 votes apart you could say well the people were really considering they're really thinking hard about which one to go with and because of x y z did but no is this they seem to be there's still a very big gap so it seemed to me to be saying that the people are voting for the blp for the red color and then when you look at the comments of of the the the, the blp advocate that was on this on um, the favor favor king and when you look at the type of comments that person was making, they were not substantive. They were they were more party comments. Go BLP, go BLP, and thirty love, like as you said, like in a, like it's a in a stadium. 
so to me there sports is a, there's a, a sports day to me there's a spirit mm. of revelry there's a spirit of it feels like a mother crop over it feels that way and that's it seems as though the more color you can have the bigger posters you can have the more money you can spend barbadians seem to like that as opposed to looking and analyzing i don't think we analyze i don't think we analyze what people are saying and what people are doing the things that you think i mean the case with the nurses marching and and to me there's so much obvious thing the whole issue with covid people not being able to vote during covid none of that seemed to be reflected here none of the issues that are to me are so blatant and obvious not being able to give an, a referendum on the republic being surprised at the republic being surprised at the at the, at the at the at the election being called in 1921 days and no preparation and you know and so much money being spent on elections when people are hungry and poor and in the middle of a covid i mean there are so many issues that should at least at least cause barbadians to 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 to, to think more or to put more favor on one of the uh, one of any of the other contending parties but they seem to be this wholehearted um i i, I don't know thoughtless um kind of a just a march a, a dead march in one direction that is appealing appalling you know it just is just unbelievable that um that and, and i'm not talking about 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 the vlp winning but the the, the vastness of it seems though if the DLP gets two seats, it'll be great, two or three seats or or what. But the vastness not of the that's not, not just of the amount of red there is at this early stage, but also the differentiate the differential between the vote count. There's a serious differential in the vote count. You know? So th it says that people are not looking at the individual candidate and evaluating the individual candidate merits. Of each candidate, it seems as though they're just voting for red. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, the, the, quite, quite interesting. Um, yeah, Sean, go ahead. I was going to say the, the power of media again. There again, from from twenty eighteen. <clears throat> excuse me. There was a narrative that was leading into twenty eighteen, leading into the twenty eighteen elections. There was a narrative that was again created, and the and the full marketing machinery was was pushed pushed behind that. So there, there's a couple of things. There is the, the snap election being called. So you, the, the party's not having um, enough time to, to fully prepare for this election. Um, we, we saw the election was called the, the night time and by the next day, William Duguid had, had posters up on the poll. Mm -hmm. um, we saw a video with Sanchez Baishaw wearing her shirt ready for, for election. So obviously they were more prepared than than the other parties i think that if the other parties including the app if because when you, when you look at it the, the app is a, is a it's a brand new party you you know have to build the brand you know have to establish the brand and you're coming up against two two already established brands and that's from the the marketing perspective of it what i was saying there is that there was a narrative that was created going into the 2018 elections um, there were several things uh, for, for me, I, I, I don't, it doesn't matter if people like my opinion or don't like it, I, I speak from, from conviction and from a position of integrity and facts. And one of my issues was that you, many of the things that the machinery, the marketing machinery of the BLP highlighted going into the 2018 elections, it, one of the things they used was that the Democratic Liberal Party administration would have gone to the M IMF. The first thing they did when they came into office was to go to the IMF. Mm -hmm. If you if you followed any of the political platforms, or, or even if you didn't, but you you read the newspaper mm -hmm. and you saw what was being reported from the political mm -hmm. platforms, um, several persons in the DLP were receiving licks from the BLP for their association with Mark Maloney. And then again, when the BLP came into power, one of the things that you saw was that same association with the same Mark Maloney that even led to the to the vaccine scandal. So there, there were, like, you know, everything that the machinery was behind that pushed that narrative, it's clear to see 
that the Barbadian public bought into the narrative and have not forgiven the Democratic Labour Party. Um, as it relates to, to the, the newer parties, again, it's, it's like I said before, it's an uphill battle to have new candidates in a new party. Um, one of the first things that I said, I said to Sean when we sat down to strategize is that people vote, there, there's three things that we need to bear in mind. One, people vote for people that they know. The first thing we need to do is get known. We did not have enough time to get known as a party or even for the candidates to get known. Mm -hmm. The second thing is, so the first thing is people, people vote for people who they know, who they like, and who they trust. If, if, if I don't know you, I can't determine whether I like you or not. So I, I don't think that the APP actually got past the first stage of, of being known and getting known. And it, mm -hmm. part of that, as I mentioned before, goes back to that strong um, BLP marketing machinery. And not only that, but the weight and the money that was thrown around um, to, to silence the opposition parties, to silence the newer parties, mm -hmm. um, even on social media. We, we, we were successful in, in breaking through on, on IG. We had, we had thousands of views for our ads on IG, but like I said, we weren't permitted to, to do the same thing on Barbados today. And, and those are the, that's the area now that for this election, for the next one and going forward, you, you need, really need that heavy uh, machinery. So again, for, for election being mm -hmm. called, yeah, with a snap election, it doesn't give you time as a new party even to to um, to pool those resources to yeah. find persons to finance the campaign and stuff like that. So I think that at a basic level or a natural level, let me put it that way, at a natural level, um, the the APP as a party and then many of the candidates really did not have an opportunity to be known. And to get known with, with three weeks it's impossible to effectively touch every community that is within your constituency mm -hmm. and um it, you, you know sometimes we have to do drive throughs to me nothing beats that personal one-on-one -on -one interaction um with people it's something that is is missing from from this uh, blp administration where we see top-down decisions being made um, decisions are made by the pm and everybody runs with it. Everybody flows with it. Even the, even the party, um, you know. So we, the, that that level of engagement that that is needed, people have. I think even as it relates to the state of emergency that we are still in, you know, it it, it has become normal. We mm -hmm. we are we are on still under curfew. There's still many directives and restrictions that we are under, but we've been under these restrictions for so long that it has become normal. And I think that the Barbadian public now are somewhat accustomed to decisions being made and, and before consultation, before engagement, before very referendum, um, as you listen to some of the things that, that they've mentioned, it is very dangerous. So it's not only that democracy is being threatened, but the, the the thinking of these people is, is a little warped mm -hmm. yeah and, and, and i say that without apology uh may may i may i may i, may I add um, here um, just just before um pastor comes in so this would be our our, our final comment oh, uh, because okay. it's now 12 12 33 right so we're going to close off um because we had said that we would be here until 12 o'clock and we've gone gone a whole 30 yeah. something minutes over so our final comment and then we will close go ahead um, well I, I i would say let's not be premature not because we feel that there's going to be somehow a tidal wave or whatever even though that could be um because there is no analysis yet of who voted how they voted why they voted Mm -hmm. So we can't be premature, and I don't think we should make a final judgment as to what caused the Barbadian public, because we're speaking generally to the public that they voted, they, they may vote this party back in. People make decisions based on lots of factors. One of those factors can be a perception of necessity. I got vote for this party because my job depends on it or whatever mm -hmm. depends on it. 
or Good point. you know Fear. Uh, look at look at look at a lot of the young men on the side of the street that have been cleaning up the ash that has long been cleaned up and now we've turned it into a beautification program uh their fear could be if i don't vote for the government and a new government comes in and think that i'm uh being overpaid for seven of us cleaning up one um one one street uh so i better keep voting so i can keep this money flowing and then i'm out of a job i can't pay for my I pay my rent or take care of whatever responsibilities uh i think that we need to and here and here again is where the church needs to be able to be astute mm -hmm. we have the resources in our congregations that mm -hmm. we can do analysis of the electorate we can go back and get the stats to show what demographic voted what is the psycho profile of those who voted why what motivated them to vote we can commission that study and we can get that done so we can have a clear understanding that's one number two i need I, one of the reasons i'm not discouraged right now is because i know that this is not a wrestle against flesh and blood all right. I don't spiritualize things. I'm not yeah. that same man, the devil or the demon. I don't look for demon of every bush, and I don't deal with the devil. I follow the shepherd. I ain't interested in the world. <laughs> okay. However, mm -hmm. we need to be able to think through this through a spiritual lens. When we prayed, we did not pray for a change of government. Mm -hmm. What we prayed for is that the principalities and the powers and the rulers of the darkness, the, the spiritual wickedness in high places be removed or prevented from exercising their will in this country. So the same people can go into government and do a completely different thing because they are not moved by the same powers moved by the same energies moved by the same forces that have motivated the changes that we think are wrong you know the heart of the king is still in the hand of the lord and he turns it whichever way he choose mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. so my, my my thing is not looking at which candidate gets in look at of course uh, in the flesh in as a human being you want to see certain results mm -hmm. i would hate to see uh, Bishop Adderley lose his seat um, uh, or, or any other person that we think would be make a major difference in the first place. However, all through this period, both persons here in Barbados and in the Caribbean have framed the need for change of this government in a spiritual context. Correct. Correct. We, we 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 saw sometime I think it's January six on this same show, mm -hmm. a Muslim cleric from Trinidad mm -hmm. begging Barbados, saying there are spiritual entities that will upend this country if we do not make a change. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That's a Muslim cleric. Mm -hmm. Okay, mm -hmm. you don't normally hear people from Islam speaking about supernatural forces behind the scenes. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. We've heard how many of us have heard prophecy after prophecy after prophecy mm -hmm. set in your mm -hmm. inbox from mm -hmm. 10 years ago, five years ago, all mm -hmm. kinds of stuff. Mm -hmm. Our prayers are not for the physical changes, but the mm -hmm. supernatural yes. changes. Yes. yes. And that's what we're praying mm -hmm. against. Mm -hmm. So uh, I am, my eyes is not only, now I say only now on the physical persons that are supposed to give us representation but my eyes are on what god is doing in the heavenlies that will effect change in this country when daniel prayed and the angel came and explained what's going to happen he was able to know what was good daniel lived through three different regimes of countries that don't happen three he was babylon he was in media persia and he was uh he, he lived through three different regimes and he was a jew 
God preserved him and preserved his people. So let us also know we cannot see with the natural eye what God has done in the heavenlies. We cannot see with the natural eye what supernatural forces have been prevented from exercising their will. And we cannot see what change of heart those who have gone through this period will say, I cannot go back to Parliament and be the same minister. The same way Sean is saying, I can't go back and be the same type of man looking at people. We do not know yet. Mm -hmm. right and I think that we have to remain spiritual here because mm -hmm. unless God makes a spiritual change, so correct. True. So have true. but I believe God and I'm trusting Me, God. Yes, yes, a yes, significant change, not yes, because yes. my representative was voted out or in, but mm -hmm. because God has said no mm -hmm. to certain things mm -hmm. happening in this mm -hmm. country, mm -hmm. and we can only we're only gonna see it when it is supernaturally when it's manifested from the supernatural natural realm. Yes, well said. Yeah. Wow, that's a great a great note um, to end on, and um, we have been, you know, at, at this uh, from from um, wow, it's been a week, about a week, and a week and some every single evening. The election express and been on as a place for our younger parties. You know, this is their home, and they can come here and they can share with with um, with the audience. So I want to thank you all for joining us. Uh, Mr. Wayne Hoyt has been um, here for the entire time. Um, thank you, Elizabeth Joel King, everybody who's joined. Mm -hmm. And I know some of you are back and forth um, to CBC Barbados today. Uh, we're going to go off and continue listening. And as Pastor Paul says, you know, the battle, if we already know that, it's a spiritual one. It's a mm -hmm. spiritual one. We've prayed, we fasted, we believed, we worked hard. The candidates have worked really hard. And I want to say to all the candidates, great job. You stepped in. You said, mm. I will go. Uh, who will I send? You said, I will go. You know, so um, you can hold your head up high. You decided to step in the ring on behalf of your country to serve. Marcy, Mar yes? Marcy before, before, just before you close, I just, I just want to reinforce what um pastor paul said um about the spiritual warfare and uh, i want to encourage all the prayer warriors who have been praying that uh, that it's obvious that we need to continue what we're doing that we need to continue to pray and trust as as as, as he said so well the battle is already won so we're not looking at these results you know, to determine victory or non-victory. But the point is that the battle is won in the spirit realm and it's a matter of time before it's manifested. So our, our job, our mandate is is to continue to, to pray and to hunker down in prayer and to continue to seek God to reveal and to save this country. Um, I know, I know that um, the tendency, the tendency would be to throw your hands up in the air, but I, I firmly believe, I think everyone on this panel believes that the answer is in prayer, the answer is coming from the spirit realm, and that once we continue what we've been doing, that we will see, and, and as, as we said before, God God has his own way of, of showing up his victories, and he doesn't do it the same way or the way we expect. As we said when we started this program, that our ways are not his ways and his ways are not our ways. So what we expect is not what necessarily what he's doing. But the victory will come. You don't know when, but the victory will come. That's one thing we know for That's sure. That's right. That's one thing we know for sure. We we win. And it's not by the numbers. Okay. Remember we we've been we've been pointing to Gideon all through this. Gideon has been our template. It's not the numbers, right? But those who God has chosen and those who will keep the feet to the pedal. In prayer, Amen. keep keep doing it. Keep praying and just keep trusting God. And there's nothing, there's no way Satan can't win. He can't. Mm -hmm. So we we won. So we we agree. You, Pastor Paul, we locking arms, Amen. locking shoulders, locking teeth, locking toes, eyes, ears, everything. We lock it in, and we continue to push on. All right now. Amen. Yeah, and you know that's how we started the show. We talked about what um, was happening within Correct. the church and the praying and the unity. 
and we mm -hmm. talked about how to sustain that after yes. Yes. after this election. Correct. This is just one thing. Mm -hmm. Okay, this is one thing. It's the start. It's the beginning. You know, we've never the unity that we've seen, the praying that we've seen, the fasting, the coming together, the connections that have been made. It's not all lost at all. No, not at all. No, correct. So we, no, no. we either believe that we wrestle not against flesh and blood. Mm -hmm. But against spiritual um, uh, forces, we either believe yeah. that or we don't. Amen. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yes. And we understand that, and that's why we we we're not waiting. The victory is here. It, yeah. It's already mm -hmm. here. The victory yes. is here. In our prayer time, God said victory, and yes, it, it didn't manifest in the natural. But does it mean that 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 the, the, the that it's not the, there? It that is. the word of God hasn't gone forth, and does it Correct. mean? That the will of God doesn't mean it doesn't mean that God has that He has lost. He's never lost. Nah, the he's never lost the battle. Never Amen. lost the battle. Never Amen. Lost. So God bless you all. God bless you all. Thanks, and Pastor. Bless you. God bless you all. Thanks for having God me. Bless. Pleasure. Thank, Thank you for you. having Thank me. God so bless you. Thank, Thank you. you. God bless. Bye bye. Bye bye. Amen.